Yeah. <laughs> Some of those things like doing these recordings, and I'm like, um, may, may, maybe I could do this in a more orderly way. Oh, okay. Uh, start over. What, what, what do I want to talk about in this uh, recording? What I want to talk about in this recording is goodness. Um, let's say us as so-called black people. Things we could do or choices we could make to better our situation, biblically, let's say. Now, it seems like sometimes there's this whole thing where there's those of us that's into, like, you say, history and culture and Afrocentricity and these type of things. And then there's those of us that's into, like, religion, you know. And then there's those of us that's into, like, money, money, money. And sometimes it seems like somewhere in between those three things, it's kind of like people having their own thing that they subscribe to and they ain't really trying to deal with the other thing. And that seems to be like, sometimes that's the issue, basically. So, say for example, those of our people are more concerned with money. They're not, they don't necessarily consider it relevant to think about culture, as in the past and history and tradition. From their point of view, it's not relevant. Some, some people like that. And then, on another hand, they might think also that religion's not relevant, because what's it got to do with anything? It, everyone's arguably entitled to their own opinion, you know, and then those of us that's into religion might not care too much about money, and might not care too much about culture, because those of us that's into that might think that the only thing that matters is religion, in a certain form that we've become familiar with at some point in time, and then on the other hand, there's those of us that's into culture, might think, you know, it's not about money, it's not about religion, it's really about culture, and I'm kind of like, if if I was going to associate my own with, one, with myself with one of these three groups, I'd probably fit in, um, that's kind of the most accurate one for me, you know what I mean? Um, I just say my predisposition. I ain't saying that money ain't important because in a society that's money driven, it is kind of important, you know. But the point being, when there's different people that have different perspectives, a thing a thing that could be beneficial is if we find like a common denominator. It could be a basis for us to work together. So sometimes people will be saying this, like, you know, why why is it so hard for black people to work together? Why is it other groups of people, you know, they they have unity and they have this and they have that and it's like we don't. The thing about it is. You know, if you want the real answer, then I'll just go straight to the answer. The real answer as to why is because it's not necessarily about religion, culture, or money. It's about applicable information. That's the real reason, okay? In my, I'd say in my opinion, because I guess some people could argue that there's people that don't have in- applicable information, but they still identify themselves together. I guess there's that too, but for the sake, by the end of the day, for what I'm saying, it's about having applicable information. If some people's applicable information is saying, you know, end of the day, we're all part of the same family, so we work together, that's their applicable information, isn't it? But what I'm saying in our context is there's a different factors. Sometimes there's this thing where one person thinks their way is right, and they're not necessarily trying to accommodate or respect other people's perspective, and this is actually something that's one of the biggest problems, you know, so to speak, if you want to call it a problem. It's factors like that. So... When you're going to talk about something like, let's say, uh, if you're going to talk about something like culture, for example, there's different people that have different things that they subscribe to, you know, different things that they perceive to be right or better, so to speak. So when someone says, you know what, okay, if if you like, like, to use an example, if somebody says, you know what, if you like painting, then you paint. That's your thing. If you like painting, paint. That's your thing. If somebody says, you know what, um, end of the day, if you like sports, you know, that's your thing, do sports. If somebody says, you know what, if you like reading, that's your thing, do reading. If somebody um, says stuff like that, then, um, I'm not trying to be the chat, just other people talking, I'm trying to, like, I don't necessarily want other people talking on the garden, like, you know what I mean, sound was in it. But if you're talking about different people that like different things, respect, okay, people like using the word respect a lot, Respect. What does respect even mean? If you want to start doing etymology, you say, well, re, re is like saying again, inspect is to like look at something. If you want to do that, that's cool. If you're into that, because I like doing things, I like etymology. Some people don't necessarily concern with things, like they, don't, they don't necessarily care. And that's cool, cause different people are different, isn't it? Different people have different things that they're concerned with, so to speak, or that's their thing. You know, mentioning thing, I can talk about astronomy and say, there's a science called astronomy. If you look at the way planets and constellations line up, just going to explain something about why different people have different characteristics, you know, just to mention that, just to just drop that quickly, so to speak, or just scratch it, throw that in there, so to speak, or scratch it, just, <laughs> you know what I mean, if you, know that, you know how people do that, pause, pause, like, ain't that deep, but, you know what I mean, just to, like, mention that, 
Because again, those of us that do a religion, those of us that subs- what if you say subscribe to or that deal with, let's just say those of us that deal with the Bible, you know, you see it in Genesis, God put lights in the heavens for the telling of times and for seasons and for signs. So basically, if you're talking about looking at lights in the heavens, which lights are we talking about here? You know what I mean? We ain't, we ain't talking about no Batman spotlight. <laughs> we ain't talking about no Batman spotlights and all that. We're talking about the sun, we're talking about the moon, we're talking about the stars. It specifically says, you know what I mean, he created the stars also. I think it specifies the sun, the moon, and the stars. And those of us that know, know there's also planets, you know, there's asteroids, there's comets, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, that we can see in the so-called heavens as we're talking, as we might be calling it. You know, there's the sky in terms of the atmosphere within the planet, or within the planet's orb, so to speak, and then there's the sky as in outside the planet's atmosphere. In this day and age of the internet, we have all this information accessible, you know. Now, those of us that are into culture... We say we love our ancestors so much. Cool. I ain't saying you don't, and I ain't, I ain't being funny or nothing, but it's like, if we love our ancestors so much, we should also take the time to appreciate. One of the best ways we can honor our ancestors is make the very best use of the things that we have access to now. You know, not just because, but it's respectful in the context of knowing that a lot of our ancestors, at certain points in history at least, when we talk about recent history, we sort of talk about certain negative political... Without naming that cliché name, because we keep saying, this thing that happened, this thing that... Don't, without, I ain't trying to give power to none of that, because I ain't trying to be on like, some victim stuff like that. Yeah, this happened, and this destroyed our people. I don't subscribe to that. You know, what happened, happened. And the fact of the matter is, it happened because of choices that we collectively made. Facts. We were in control. We're in control now. This is the thing to address. We're the ones in control of everything. It's about the choices we make. It's important that we consider the fact that we're the ones with the power. You know, you're dealing with the Bible, Genesis 1, 26, 27. God said, let us make man in our own image and like and our own likeness. Our, uh, us, our, our, plural, God's plural, male and female created he them. So God's a plural who made male and female, which implies that God's plural included male, male and female, perhaps one male and one female, or maybe a group that had at least one of each. You know, based on what it says in the so-called King James Version Bible, this Bible was authored in 1601, so they say. The Bible's been around for 400 years. People all over the world are a certain amount familiar with this Bible. Because of a political situation, yes. Those of us that, you know, are into history say, yeah, you know, and this, all these atrocities, that's something to address because there were atrocities. And the fact of the matter is, an element of the Bible was used to support the atrocities. That's a fact whether we like it or not. That doesn't mean that everything in the Bible is somehow wrong. Not necessarily. So when so many people deal with a book, whether me or anybody else personally agrees with it or disagrees with it or anything in between, let's notice the parts about it that are relevant, topical, and useful and important to know. We're talking about the person called Jesus. Revelations 1, 13 to 15 states that he had dark skin and woolly hair, you know? The words are in a mother's that his feet like unto fire and brass that burn in the furnace, and his head and hairs were, uh, was it white like wool, white as snow? You know what I mean? But the fact that he mentions wool shows you it's woolly hair because it's not the only thing that's white. And then we can compare other things in the Bible. Like, for example, when we're talking about, like, some people might talk about this topic, where does whiteness come from as the skin, as a so-called race, but as a skin uh, appearance? According to the Bible, Exodus 4, 6, Numbers 12, 10. Well, Exodus 4, 6, talking about Moses. God telling Moses to put his hand in his cloak, and he takes his hand out of his cloak, and then his hand turned white, and then God tells him to put his hand back in his cloak, and it turned back like his other flesh. Obviously, if it turned white and then turned back to something else, then it weren't white. It was something else naturally, but it could turn white. Numbers 12, 10, um, you know, Miriam and Aaron talking against Moses for marrying the Ethiopian woman, for, for whatever that bothered them for. But then think about it. I'm just saying that, like, just for context, notice how some people, black, some black people go on that. Like, some black people think, because they're so-called Caribbean. Like, my parents are Caribbean. But to me, like, I don't think the way that certain people think. But I hear people talking some funny talk. And they'd be like, some people go on, like, say, if if we're Caribbean, someone else is African, like, say, like, like we're better and all this, like, all this weird talk. Like, what are you talking about? Like, in the day, African, Caribbean, we're the same. Like, we're family. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? This divisive craziness. That certain I ain't saying it's only Caribbean people there, so I can see that there's African people like not not to group African like every African is the same. Because obviously Africa is a very big place, it's a big continent. There's a whole bunch of different people there. There's so many hundreds of different groups of people there. You know, there's a, a good amount of countries there, but in all them countries, not everybody's the same. It's all different, different, different groups of people there. There's a lot of different people. 
you know, and as the so-called race of people as black people, we have a lot of variations. This is a known scientific fact. You know, people talk about this. We have more genetic diversity in our race than every other race combined. You know, and then on top of that, let's address this. Uh, science has stated, I think in relatively recent years, I think this is since after 2010, maybe 2014 or something. It's, it's out there. It's articles up about this. I'm going to look it up again, actually, because I know I've read it before. I'm going to look it up again and put it on my blog. Because, <laughs> you know, because certain times people might think that people are making things up or something. It, it ain't made up. Um, this thing about, basically, um, this thing about, according to science, according to genetic science, that the only true homo sapiens are found within the negroid race, as they call it, or the black race. If you, that's what you prefer, Africans, however you want to word it. And every other race has part Neanderthal DNA. And it's just like, really? And it's just like, well, hold on a minute, because what, what about all this stuff where, like, people were saying about black people being inferior and animals and all this rubbish? And it's just like, turn to find out that science has confirmed that the opposite was true. Am I, am I trying to make it a race thing? Am I trying to racially hate people? No. I'm just saying that's kind of ironic, isn't it? You know what I mean? Certain times people were killing other races of people, saying that they're just animals, they're just flora and fauna, it don't matter. You know what I mean? And it's just like, in reality, that was a complete and utter lie. Then what kind of people would do something like that? What kind of people go and kill other people, invade their land, so-called colonize them, and all this craziness, and say all these wicked and evil things to psychologically try and break them down into almost believing that they deserve to be abused like that? What kind of people do that? And then we're talking about religion, and some of us have the audacity. I ain't necessarily criticizing them, let's keep it real. Some of us have the audacity to be talking about Jesus, and Jesus died for our sins, and some white man was straight ahead. It's like, you serious? Look at what people that look like him. Now, just going to keep it real. Look at what people that look like him have done to some of our people and to all different types of people all over the world. That's really, that's really abhorrent. That's an abomination to say that this is some perfect, wonderful person because that image was given to you by the same people doing all these evil things. And the, that's not the guy in the Bible. The guy in the Bible has dark skin and woody hair, so that's obviously not him. So that's like someone, to use the term, no offense, you know, some people are sensitive, but like, that's taking the piss. You know what I'm saying? Somebody going around being the, the, the distinct contradiction of Jesus, being behaving themselves like literally the Antichrist, and then putting their face on Christ, chatting about he died for people's sins. And the fact of the matter is, them same people are the ones committing the sins and other people are dead. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, and I ain't saying this to like make no Christians feel uncomfortable now. Because I ain't, I ain't saying this necessarily ways against Christianity. I'm not saying that. Christianity is one thing. But Christianity that tells you that some white guy is Jesus, that's not Christianity. I'm just telling you straight, that's not Christianity. You know, the white, the so-called white man's version of Christianity, that's not Christianity. That's the, some thing that he uses for his political and racial agenda. Facts. You know, there's things we can address, like this so-called, you know, this, this, this beef, or people want to go as far as say a war, this conflict, this perceived conflict between black men and black women. That whole craziness is part of the problem. Anyone can see that. Whether people want to acknowledge it or not, that's part of the problem. And I ain't saying this to sound like some cliche, it's a fact. It's a fact, like, certain times. There's going to be black women that seem... To, not saying this even... I'm not saying this even the majority. Not necessarily. Because you mean that if you, if, you ain't, if, you ain't, if you ain't done some survey to see how much people is, it's kind of... It's a bit funny. To, it's a bit facetious, to use that term. It's a bit... Not phony, but it's a bit weird to say, like, oh, it's the majority. It might not be. It might just seem like it in your experience. But, like, at the end of the day, when there's certain black women that's doing all this stuff, like, I love Jesus so much, Jesus, Jesus, and their perception of Jesus is some white man, it's just like, well, hold on. It's like, if you want to love Jesus so much, I ain't saying that that's wrong. It's just that, can you please attribute that love, <laughs> can you please attribute that love to the Jesus who just happens to be black? Can you stop attributing it to some white man? Because, I, like, I don't, I, don't, I'm, like, I don't agree with that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm offended. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just keep it real. Because certain times, I've noticed this. There's certain black women, they're happy to say how much they love Jesus and how wonderful they think Jesus is. They don't necessarily extend that attitude to black men in real life, but Jesus himself is a black man anyway. And maybe if they knew that, maybe they would feel more inclined to recognize good things in black men when it's actually there. Because some of them seem to do this thing. Like, not to sound like bitter and they ain't even that deep, just talking in its reality. Certain time I've noticed, when there's those of us who are men who happen to be black, to use that term, or, you know, we've got dark skin, woolly hair, negro, to use that term. Whether we consider ourselves to be mortals, you know, or gods incarnate, some of us, you know, got all these things that we talk about. When, when that kind of thing is a situation, it's kind of weird when it's like some of us are kind of like trying very hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of being a little bit funny, but some of us are trying to like be 
positive, so to speak, to be like responsible and stuff. You know, within within reason, like you know, what what we can do. Like everybody's got their own type of responsible. You know what I mean? I ain't saying we all do the same things, but you know what I mean. We're trying to like be right, so to speak, and it's like more time. It seems to be a thing to try and necessarily have any positive acknowledgement from our own women. Like, what is that about? That's that's just weird. You know what I mean? That that is weird. You know, um, let's say like black women don't necessarily see it that way. They don't necessarily see it that way. If you ask them, they might say it's not like that. Or they might think it's not that deep. But it is that deep. Because this is the thing about the subconscious mind. So, like, it might sound cliche, but this is reality. I know for a fact that the subconscious mind is a thing. It really is. You know, there's a lot of things that we see that can shape our mind. And I'll say, just to mention it, it's a touchy subject, but let's do a reality now. You know, I'm, I'm 27 now. When I was a teenager, there's certain things that I've seen. Like, in this society, you know, people talk about so-called... Uh, I'm, I'm going to use euphemisms because you never know who might be listening to this. You know what I mean? Let's try, try and make it uh, something that, you know, everyone can feel relatively comfortable, so to speak, but certain indecent images we can see on the internet. You know what I mean? When I was a teenager, I looked at things like that. Maybe even before I was a teenager. But then again, not, well, yeah, because 1995 is when the internet came out. Maybe before then. And I ain't the only one. I mean, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? I ain't the only one. Like, when, when you're a boy, and like, you don't even go out to play or whatever. You talk of other guys what other boys when you're a child, when you're that age. It's, you know what I mean? People look at these things. You know what I mean? For obvious reasons. You know what I mean? Like, when when we're, uh, I guess, depends, doesn't it? Especially when we're, like, developing into adolescence and then we might start having certain feelings. Then there's certain things that we feel, we feel certain impulses, so to speak. And I say this is, might, might seem non-PC, and I say, you know, well, for, for us, for where we come from, you know, we, we, we like women. You know what I'm saying? That might be non-PC, but to keep it real, we like, we like women. You know what I mean? Our men like women, generally. You know what I'm saying? You look at certain other cultures, they seem to be on some different stuff. And am I saying this to be on some racial thing? Not necessarily in a bad way, it's a little bit of banter, but it's a reality. There's something that needs to be addressed. We're talking about church. We should be aware, though some of us might not know, we should be aware. Certain people who happen to be white, when they're talking about church and dealing with church, they're, they're like doing all weird things like abusing children, molesting children, sexually interfering with children. What is that about? I ain't saying there's no black people nowhere doing it. It's just that when it's white people, it seems to be a thing that happens very frequently for some reason. Don't talk about Jesus, God. No one, like, come on now. We know that. Don't talk about none of that with Jesus. There was things that he was angry with the Pharisees about. It didn't seem to mention him doing things to little children, little boys, and all like that. You know what I mean? So it may or may not be a so-called racial thing. These are things we should think about. Because certain times people would have us believe it's wrong to think in terms of race. Why would it be wrong? Reality is reality. If you look at an apple, an apple is an apple. If you look at a pear, a pear is a pear. They're not the same. You know what I mean? They're similar in some ways. They're not the same. We're talking about the Bible. Genesis 1, 26, 27 says, God said, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. Male and female created them. Let us give them dominion over the whole earth and the other living creatures. This is in there. There's a slight, let's say a slight implication. If God says man in our image and likeness, it kind of implies that there's another man that ain't in the image and likeness of God. In a way. But then someone might say, no, it just means that man in general, people, human, um, don't do that. Because the fact is, in real life, there's people that we call man, humans. We, we've been taught to say we're humans and they're humans, but we don't look the same. There's differences. I think I'd, I'd mentioned this, didn't I, about the thing about the Neanderthal thing. Science has confirmed that it's only, only within the Negroid race can you find people who are true homo sapiens. Now, when we do some research... Now I say, like, which people are they talking about? Pretty possibly, like, people like the San people, um, who seem to tend to live in, like, South Africa. And you look at the way they are, and their beautiful hair texture, their beautiful hair. Their hair is so nice. You know what I mean? And I hear some black people, like, in this part of the world, like, in Britain, some black people talk about this craziness about nappy hair and all this weird, weird talk they be talking. Like, it's, like it's something shameful. Because like, um, we clearly, those of us that talk this craziness, we clearly don't know. That's God's hair texture. How can you how can you say it's anything but beautiful? That's good. if it's God, it has to be the best thing there is. We're, we're saying, saying it's to put down other people. No, it don't have to be to put down. Any, even though, when it's them, they love to try and put down us for some reason. Yeah, you know I mean, something else to mention actually, because I'm kind of on the run, I'm kind of zoning, so to speak. Uh, we're going to talk about the Bible when we talk about things like uh, when you're talking about the so-called Old Testament. You're talking about Moses getting a law from a God that he saw face to face. And then people saying, well, you know, end of the day, um, God is this all present, all powerful, all knowing force. I ain't saying he ain't. I ain't saying God ain't that. For some reason, then we say he. You know what I mean? Funny enough. 
But I ain't saying that it ain't true. But the fact is, there's an element of God being a physical person, okay? Something to mention, actually. I'm going to mention this right now. There's a teacher called Dr. York. Dr. York taught about religion, okay? Taught about Islam, taught about Judaism, taught about Christianity. And he's taught it comprehensively, dealing with the religious scripture, teaching it by the book, and teaching people how we apply this in real life. He's black. We're black. He's gone out into communities in America, gone to places like certain time. From what I hear, because I wasn't there, obviously, because I wasn't even born yet. You know what I mean? From, like, the 70s. And I wasn't even born. I was born in 99. But, um, and I've been over here. I went over there. Would have been nice, I think, to, to have been there. But, you, you know, just to stick to the point anyway, certain time when you're talking about, like, a ghetto, where you've got things going on, like, my people dealing drugs, people prostituting, people killing each other. Like, you know what I mean? The stereotypical bad things that happens in, like, ghettos. And he's teaching and... Between teaching and working with the people, not just say he, him one doing it, but teaching the people like how we live together and have a healthy community and then fixing the community. This is stuff people talk about. There's a lot of people talk about all the good things that he's done. We should, I think it's worth mentioning him at least. People should know that someone like this exists. Some of us like talking about Martin Luther King, and I ain't saying that we shouldn't. Some of us are talking about Malcolm X, I ain't saying that we shouldn't. Some of us are talking about certain people that we thought heroes, uh, like Marcus Garvey, and some of us, you know, who do of like Islam, some of us who just know about it, talk about the nation of Islam, uh, Elijah Muhammad, or the prophet Elijah Muhammad. Because they ain't trying to offend no one, and be like, why do you say prophet? They ain't trying to offend no one. You know, because Dr. Tiot mentioned, like, just to mention as well, because Dr. Tiot acknowledges that Elijah Muhammad is a prophet, okay, according to what Dr. Tiot says. And I ain't saying, I'm just saying he says that, because he deals with the scripture. You know what I mean? Dr. Tiot has a lot of profound information. He'll talk about things that the scripture said and, and the context of how it relates to the here and now and prophecies and how we can see this. Dr. Tiot's really a teacher for real about these subjects. To me, it makes sense to mention it because I've learned some very profound things from like some books that I've read that were offered by him. Sometimes, you know, things that he said, classes he's given that people have recorded and I've listened to it like YouTube and stuff. I think other people might benefit from it too. So it's worth mentioning it. Somebody who's a really good example, especially when we're talking about black men, black women, all this. So, somebody that's a really good example of a black man, you know, being responsible and doing something positive, not only in his community, but like for black people everywhere. Because I've, you know I mean, never met him face to face in this lifetime at least, you know, um, not being in the same country as where he was living for that time. You know what I'm saying? But I've learned things, and I feel like it's benefited me and inspired me, empowered me, made me know who and what I am and the worth that's in me when there's other people sometimes with the things that they say and do. And I ain't talking about white people, because they try that. Me, personally, being the kind of person I am, like, that don't bother me too much. It's stuff that people of my own so-called people do. It seems worse, because if a so-called white person expresses some hatred to me, I'll just be like, well, no, it is what it is. I ain't, it ain't, it ain't going to hurt me too much, because they're, they're them, I'm me. When it's like my own people, even my own family expressing hatred, it's easier for that to be hurtful. I ain't saying I'm letting it hurt me, I'm just saying context. You know, it's good to have the kind of information that Dr. Tio is teaching. And plus, for those of us that are into religion, the good thing about the way he teaches is because it's all from the actual scriptures. It's not like he's just giving his opinion. It's like he, the things that he say, he shows what the things in the scriptures mean. So, for example, when we're going to talk about something like this story about with Adam and Eve, and this fruit that they were told not to touch. And he's like, look, that's the opium poppy that you're talking about. So they say it's an apple, because if you look at an apple and you look at um, like the pomegranate plant, and then you look at the opium poppy, you see it's like it's the same kind of looking thing. So it's to do with the opium. It's drugs. It's drugs that the devil was using against, uh, let's say, black people in the sense of Adam and Eve, mortals, so to speak, as opposed to the gods themselves. Not to say the devil will try and use it against them. I'm just saying, in the context, because um, there's gods as a race, and then there's men, so to speak, as a race, you're talking about Adam and Eve, those are the people that are made in the image and likeness of God. There was other people before, on the planet before them. Dr. Tio addresses this in his book. I recommend this book if you're remotely interested in the subject, The Holy Tablets, by Dr. Malachi. Said, you can put The Holy Tablets into Google and it will come up. Okay? You can, there's an online website version. There's e-books and stuff. Like, I, I know because I've got e You know what I mean? There's e-books out there. If you're anything like me, e-books, you start, you know what I mean, hunting for e-books. <laughs> but seriously, um, before I forget the point, like, he's showing that, look, it's drugs. That's the thing the devil uses to try and get black people. Drugs. From the Adam and Eve situation, it was drugs. Up to now, it's the same thing. People talk about all these stuff that certain people show. You know, certain them people show us on TV about, oh, look at all this girl and people shooting each other. Like, they like to promote the negatives. Yeah, and these are things they address. Dr. Tiot mentions these things. And I ain't just saying it just because he said it, but, you know, I guess call it common perspective, so to speak. Um, but... 
I think some of it, he might have put, it might be like after hearing him say it, I might have thought about it more. So I ain't trying to take no credit. End of the day, if some if someone if someone is teaching and they inspire you, they inspire you. It's worth mentioning. I'm just saying to, for context. But like when you look at certain things, people are gonna say that yeah, when there's a girl and there's people selling drugs and shooting each other, it's wrong. But the fact of the matter is, when did those of our people doing it? When did they start doing it in the context of that society? When did they start doing it? When there's movies like Scarface and The Godfather and all this nonsense, you know, it's white people in these movies. It's white people making these movies. They're the ones putting this stuff on TV. You can easily say they're glorifying it because if they're not glorifying it, why are they even showing it? You know what I mean? They ain't going to act like the moral of the story is that it's wrong. They do glorify it the same way they glorify James Bond and all this foolishness, Batman, Superman, all this fictitious white man hero stuff. But in real life, that controversy, if it sounds racist or whatever you want to call it, I don't really care because it's the truth. End of the day, they like to represent themselves as being some type of hero to somebody. And more time, when they interact with other people, it's for the sake of trying to exploit and even destroy and hurt people. That's what they do in real life. When they go and involve themselves in other people's countries because they want something and they act like they're trying to help somebody and they use their fake white Jesus thing to go alongside with that. And if people don't like it, it's the truth anyway. It's the truth, it's the truth. Certain of their people, so to speak, as so-called white people, acknowledge this themselves. So it ain't like it's just like I'm just saying it because I'm black or something or whatever you want to call it. It's the truth. You know what I mean? People like glorifying themselves and then um, trying to let's say anti glorify or try and make they like try and make themselves look good and try and make other people look bad. You know what I mean? And then when they do the same things other people do, when they do it they pretend that it's good and other people do it's bad. You know what I mean? And like all this type of stuff and it's like what's that about? These are things that should be addressed. You know, this is important. We're gonna talk about our state of mind as a people. It's important to address these type of things. This is relevant to us. Those of us that grow up around our own people, under our own precepts and our own culture, that's different. Those of us that grow up around people that are different than us and they're the ones that's trying to so-called feed us all this strange information, it's important to address these things because we might not realize it, but certain things can be effect, can be so-called influencing or affecting us subconsciously. However, there's another thing to address. Not everything is about culture. Not everything is about media. Not everything is about, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, astronomy. Now, I say, like, I have all the information that's out there. I've been researching for years from I was very young. I've always liked knowing things. I ask questions about things. I like learning. You know, for what it's worth, we can mention that Jesus was that way too. I ain't saying I'm Jesus, none of that. <laughs> I ain't saying that. I mean, he's, we're related. Okay, if you're talking about spirituality, different topic. But um, the fact, as you know, that, that that's that's a whole weird thing. Isn't it? But no, when you're talking about um, why people are the way they are, astronomy. Some people be talking about genetics, this genetics, that race, this. I talk about race to an extent, you know, and race is a factor to an extent. Genetics is a factor to an extent. It really is. And it seems to be the case in astronomy it's a factor as well. Because this is something um, Dr. Yostok, at least people have said Dr. Yostok. I'm, I'm not sure if I've read it personally, these people have said it. This thing that he said that um, some people say astrology and then people say, well, no, with his information um, we talk about what he calls solar biology and I say me, I just say straight, astro- astronomy. You know, everyone can have their own term. But I'm saying when I'm talking, I'm, talk- I'm talking about scientifically it's astronomy. And then how I interpret it, and I say it's applied astronomy. But basically, this thing of saying that, yeah, a person's a third themselves, a third their mother, and a third their father. And there's something, talking about the book that he did, the Holy Tablets, there's a part in there that talks about willpower and how willpower works. It might be in Chapter 7. I think Chapter 7 is the living soul. Again, people be talking about spirit and soul. Dr. York writes a book that explains it in a scientific presentation. He'll tell you exactly what the spirit and the soul is and how you can look after it. You know, talks about the spiritual centers in the body. A lot of people like chatting about chakras, this, that, and the third. You know, and they say, look, the spiritual seeds, the spiritual centers, this is what they correspond to. And I say, most importantly, the crown seat or the, the highest seat, the seventh out of the seven systems. Some people say, there's nine and all this. End of the day, out of the system, the highest, the one that's at the crown in the head, coincidentally, as they call it, um, he says that's union with El Elo, the source, or El Elo, just because it's correctly pronounced. So we look in the Bible, people talk about God. When we look at something like the Strongest Concordance, I'm quite certain, the only reason I know about the Strongest Concordance is because Dr. Yoke talks about it. You know, there's reasons for me to mention him, because he's a great teacher. I've learned a lot from him, or because of him and the information he's put out. I didn't know this stuff. I knew about the Bible. I didn't know about no Strongest Concordance. I didn't know about none of that. And it's important because the Bible was not written in English. If you want to see what the scriptures, as people call it, or the books of the Bible really said, it's important 
to at least have access to the language it was written in. Because there are, for a fact, some things in there where the translation doesn't quite make sense when you look at the original language. And I'll say, point of reference, you know, ideally, one day, when I have my own school, once I can provide something, because I, I do agree that men should provide. I ain't trying to say that, like, I ain't trying to make excuses for nobody to say that, yeah, because, you know, the so-called work men try to make things difficult, blah, blah, blah. I ain't trying to make no stupid excuses, because at the end of the day, you don't necessarily need money to have a school. If somebody got a yard somewhere, somebody got a tent, you know what I'm saying? Some, 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 somebody got a bus shelter <laughs> that they like cut you know, we can make that into a school. We don't need to make excuses. We could just make solutions, make things happen. You know what I mean? If you've got a gang, yeah, as people call it, a gang doesn't have to be bad. It's a group of people. Just because white people say gang and it's always bad because it's black people that do it, that's our culture. We orientate ourselves into groups. That's our culture. Don't let these people keep attacking our culture and slandering us. And I ain't saying this to, like, being blamed. I'm saying, like, we should do this. We should defend ourselves. We should defend our honor as a people. We should defend our right to do things the way we do things and be who we are. Right? What makes us, any other people think they have a right to keep attack, trying to attack everything about us? They're trying to attack the way we look. They're trying to attack the way we talk. They're trying to attack the way we think. They're trying to attack the way we live. They're trying to attack the music we like, the food we eat. They're trying to attack everything. I ain't saying it's all white people. It's not all white people. It's not about all white people. The fact is, it's certain people who do it, and the people that do it, it's wrong. What makes them think they've got a right to do it? But then they say, like, you know, certain times, there's different ways of doing things. People want to try and attack us or our stuff, then it might be appropriate to point out the negatives about their stuff, you know, because it is what it is, isn't it? Like, bullies, for example, this is a reality. Certain people, it's just how they are, like, they don't necessarily think about what they're doing the way we perceive it, if you see what I'm saying. Like, certain bullies, because I know, because from when I got uni, like, I was never necessarily planning to go uni as such, but eventually it happened, it was a solution, because from my trying to get my own place, because it's like, you know, just be diplomatic, certain difficulties that can happen within the family sometimes in this society, you know, without going into too much details about certain type of issues that families can happen, whatever. But end of the day, um, by the time I got uni, it's like one guy, that I talked to at uni, he happens to be black as well, for what difference it makes. Because I ain't trying to say that all evil comes from white people. I don't know that craziness. I ain't saying that. Because the fact is, if we're going to talk about that, just for the record, the devil was originally a black man. Not, like, the fact is, according to what Dr. York seems to be teaching, I ain't saying to put words in his mouth. It seems to be the case that, yeah, the devil as a person, because the devil actually happens to be, the devil Satan himself has actually incarnated in the form of a person. Dr. York pointed this out in his information. You know, when we're talking about astronomy, this is important because this is case study. June 6, 1966, midnight, New York City, New York, born to a Jacqueline Onassis Kennedy. Yeah, that child born at that time. According to Dr. York, people say, where's the proof? It seems to be a conspiracy whereby, don't think you can just go and ask white people or the government in America, wherever, and they're going to tell you that, yeah, this person exists. Because, I mean, common sense, they're not going to admit to you the devil exists, especially if he's the person controlling their thing, because this tactic is to try and pretend he don't exist, so he can do the evil without people recognizing it for what it is. But, you know, the devil's cunning. Genesis 3.15 I think, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And then we say, what does this beast of the field refer to? Look at Jacinius' uh, Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. Just go on blueletterbible.org. You know, it's easy. Blueletterbible.org. You go to a part of the scripture, you put something into the search box, put Genesis into the search box. There's a little box, little tiny box, says, and it's got strings next to it. You click it. And then it puts all these little numbers next to certain words. And you click the, the numbers, and then you can see it will show you the word it was translated from, according to the strongest concordance, at least. Because some of us are super skeptical. We say, How do we know any of this is true? You know, when people are skeptical beyond reason, it's just like, whoa. It's like, end of the day, it's just within a degree of information, and according to that and according to this, this is what this and that says. Whether you believe it or not, it's your business. You know, and then you've also got this, the strongest concordance. Uh, and then when you click the reference number, when it's Old Testament, it's H numbers for Hebrew. When it's New Testament, it's G numbers for Greek. When you click those things, it will show you words. And then this is the important thing about this information. We now have access to the Internet. You know, let's just keep it real. We don't have an excuse no more to not know what we're talking about when it comes to things like this. It's important. You know, when we say that what Jesus said, the Satan tempted Jesus and told him to bow down to him and he'd give him all that his eyes can see in terms of some city or whatever. And Jesus is like, get away from me because end of the day, it's written, you know, um, the Lord, the, the Lord thy God alone shall ye serve and so on and so forth, whether bow to and serve. So if people say that Jesus said this, it's kind of important because if 
the Bible says that the devil tried to tempt Jesus to bow down to him and worship him to give him stuff. He's trying to persuade Jesus to worship him for the sake of material gain. And Jesus says, no, because that's not how it goes. Worship the Lord. Whoever precisely you interpret the Lord thy God to be, we say the most high. And I ain't got a problem saying the most high. That's the easiest thing to say. As long as you say the most high, you're not talking about the ultimate God. Because there's a whole bunch of different gods. We say the most high. I'm happy. I ain't arguing with nobody about that. The most high God, the real God, the creator, the king of the universe, as people call him in some doctrine, when you're dealing with like Mesopotamia, because they, they know that when you're talking about the most high God, he's a person. He's not a mysterious force. He, you can say there's an element of him that's the mysterious force, but he's actually a person. He's a real person. There's a point in time when he was on the planet. This is important to know. This is very important. He has a face. But now, the devil tempted Jesus for the sake of material gain. Bad eye to me. Jesus said, no. Yeah, whether Jesus said only bow to God or he just said only serve God, same difference. If he said bow instead of uh, service, he said serve instead of bow, then that itself is implying that service can be perceived as bowing down to somebody and worshipping them. So now, simple question. If Jesus says only serve God, how can some of us, who say we subscribe to Christianity, be so comfortable with serving the white man. He ain't our God. We know he ain't our God, because Jesus, Revelations 1, 13, 15, is described as having woolly hair and dark skin. Genesis 1, 26, 27 makes it clear that God made man in his image and likeness, and the image is something you can look at. So God has to look. If, if, if you're saying that God, plural, male and female, created he them, so this must be a male and female God, at least one male and one female. If they made people in their image and likeness, and the people they made in their image and likeness must look like them. Because image is something you can look at. And of course, you know, them certain white people, being the kind of people they are, or, you know, talking about English or whatever, these people go around doing all these aggressive and atrocious things to other people, including some of our people. I say some. Not all of us fell victim to that. Just a slightly different topic. But then we should know this as well, because some of us get to talk about so-called, I don't want to I don't want to use the term, but some of us talk about atrocities like, say, all of us was a victim. No, they weren't like that, you know. It really weren't like that. That doctrine is very dangerous, because... That doctrine can teach some of us who believe in it to fear other people, and then the fear that you're fearing is giving them power, like literally. Because I can say, when you're talking about astronomy, when you're talking about the devil, you can actually look at some of the alignments of the devil, and it seems to imply that he does actually draw power from the, the thoughts that you think towards him. That's something I can present in another time. Ideally, ideally, I'd like to have a group, you know, on the internet, it's the easiest thing to do. Wherever people are at on the internet, we can look at this information together. Because I've been aware of certain of this information for years. And I'm trying to tell people. And it's like, at a certain time, it's like people listen, but they're, they're not really like, like, they're not really getting on board. And I'm like, cool. But then, this time, I'm like, put all this together. Because this is, this is the kind of thought pattern at the moment. You know, put all these things together. Do a recording that makes sense and put it out there. Say to people, look, let's do this. Because it don't cost nothing. I ain't telling nobody take money out your pocket and do this and do this. I ain't telling nobody take money out your pocket and do this and do this. These things are all free. You want to know about astronomy? It's free. You want to look at the strongest concordance? If you use blueletterbible.org, it's free. It's there. You know what I mean? It's there. It's on the internet. It's accessible. You know, arguably there's better ways, even easier ways that certain things can be presented, but it's a point of reference. It's something we could use. I know certain people be talking stuff about solutions in the community, wherever they be talking. But a lot of the things that's just, and I ain't saying the things that's just ain't valid in its own way, but a lot of these things are not necessarily accessible to all of us. Like certain time people be talking about certain solutions that cost money that certain of us like don't have at the moment. You know what I mean? So end of the day, it's like let's deal with things that's accessible, things that's free. You know, there's all different things. Like certain time, they're not they're nice jumping topics, but like certain time people be talking about nutrition, and I'm like, look, I did research on the internet. There's the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA. Yeah, if, if you listen to rap music, you might be thinking of some group. And I know, because I used to listen to that rap music, but it's just ironic, isn't it? Because there's a USDA in that. Some guys talking about, you know, negative, arguably negative things. But then there's a USDA that has information that we can use to know a bit more about the foods that we eat and the nutrition in the foods that we eat and what foods we can eat to get the nutrition that our body seemingly needs or at least can use to nourish us and for us to be more healthy physically and seemingly that can also help us to be in a more healthy state of mind. It's good for us to know about these things. There are certain people talking about health and nutrition, different people are saying different things. When it comes to the so-called Afrocentric community, I know of certain people that have been teaching certain things and not to necessarily say that wait, their teaching ain't valid, but me personally, I like the nutrient database because it's data. I like data. 
You know, when it comes to opinions, I want opinions. I have my own opinions. You know what I mean? I can talk opinions all day. Anyone can probably notice that. But I like to base my opinions on facts or something that can be rendered as a fact in that it's, like, quantified in a certain way. That's part of why I like Dr. York's work so much because of the way he presents things. It's very fact-orientated. You know, there's no monopoly on facts. Facts is talking about a method of presentation. Like he talks about right knowledge, information validated by evidence, experience, and or reason. That's one of the best things I can say I've learned from him. That one thing, talking about right knowledge, is a reasoning methodology. Like someone says, end of the day, like, you know, if, you, if, 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 you're, trying, if you're trying to curl a football, you know, or people say soccer ball, if you, if you come from one of them countries where people say soccer, this is how you kick the ball. Like, I remember when I was younger, like, you know, because I was never peculiarly concerned with playing on football, but that's what the other boys was doing. So it's like, I like books, isn't it? So... <laughs> When I was younger, I like books and talking to women. That's what I like. You know what I mean? Like, just maybe it's strange by some people's standards. That's how I am. I like talking to the girls. Not necessarily like in in that way as such, but you know, I, I like I like I've always been like that. I like being around women. I just like being around women. Not necessarily to say, oh, that particular girl, I feel such and such a way. I just like the company of women. That, that's I've just always been like that. You know, my family, my household, my household is women. My mom, my sister, that those they they who I live with. Well, you know, at the time, they who I grew up with, so to speak. You know, it's one of them things. Maybe it's because of what I was familiar with, but I think that's just how I am anyway. Some guys seem to like being around other guys. I like being around women. Everybody's different. I can be around other guys. I just prefer to be around, around women. If, 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 I ain't trying to be funny, but like if tomorrow all the men disappeared and there's only women, I wouldn't be complaining. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm mean, being kind of funny. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, not, not trying to seem like too funny or but, um, before I forget what I was saying, because I talked about a lot of different things. Someone say, yeah, this is how you call a football like this. They, they say, look, look at where you want the ball to go. Don't look at the ball. Look at where you want the ball to go and then kick it. Now, can I explain how that works or why that works? Um, I could theorize. I could, I could, I could try and I could, I could guesstimate, so to speak. But the fact is it did work. I'm like, why is it? I look at the ball and kick the ball. The ball don't want to go where I'm trying to kick it. And then when I look where, following the instructions, so to speak, you know, or scratch it, trying it out, let's say, and look where I'm trying to want the ball to go, and then kick, and then it goes there. It's just like, how does that work? Now, that's strange. But it's one of them things, isn't it? Now, again, I know I've talked about a lot of different things in jump subjects. I want to focus on the astronomy needs because this is the most important thing. In my, no, not in my opinion. Facts. It's the most important thing. Or at least I'd say from my point of view, it's the most important thing. Some people say religion is important. Some people say money is important. Some people say culture is important. The fact of the matter is if you're talking about astronomy, money can tie in with astronomy because you're talking about asteroids like Taiki, uh, you're talking about Telesto, which is a moon of Saturn. You're talking about, or you can be talking about Abundantia, another asteroid. You can be talking about, I think there's a, quite a few of them, to be honest. That's just some of the main ones. There's, just so you know, like, when you're talking about NASA, like, ain't trying to be funny or nothing, but, like, certain people be talking stuff. When I be talking stuff, I have points of reference. Again, nutrition, I'm talking about United States Department of Agriculture. You know, if you're going to say that, why people this, why people that, why people the other... I'd probably be one of the main people saying, you know, certain things. Not necessarily in an ignorant way, but just reality. But at the same time, certain of them have organizations where there's information. And it's not them alone in the organization doing the research. We know that people talk this, like, yeah, you know, in NASA there's all these important, you know, these vital black scientists in NASA. If we know that we've got black scientists in NASA that are so important with all the calculations they're doing, there's even more reason for us to see what data NASA has. Like, come on now. Some of the stuff we say don't make sense because like, we say stuff and we don't use it. Some of us. And that's it. Like, I've done a bit of that myself. Don't get it twisted. Do you know what I mean? I ain't just trying to talk that. Like, really, like, I criticize myself as well as I criticize other people. Arguably, I criticize myself more than I criticize other people. You know, because I actually want to be perfect. Perfectly me. I want to be the best me I can be. So criticism is the way that it works. And if I say, like, if I do something like this don't look good, then try and do it better. You know what I mean? Or do something that I can do better. <laughs> You know what I mean? But seriously, they're talking about astronomy. Uh, dealing with NASA's JPL horizon system. You're talking about they got like around 750,000, literally around 750,000 asteroids in their database. And it's like, I'm like, well, you know what I mean? That, not scratch it. It's like a thing where you mean to tell me like maybe each one of them asteroids means something like important in terms of people. It's very possible. And you think like, man, man how, how am I going to figure that out? Now, this is the thing about it. Certain time we talk about this as black people, we're great. We're gods. And some of us, you know, 
and that's that's facts. If you do of Christianity, where God's Jesus said so, at least we believe Jesus. Jesus did say, "Ye are gods." So we're gods. You know what I mean? You don't need to argue about it. It's, it's, it's in the Bible. You know what I mean? We're children of the Most High. It's in the Bible. That's the most important thing. But just to make the point, there's gods, and then there's children of the Most High. Not all the gods are children of the Most High, because the Most High is a man. He's a person. He has, uh, well, he has several wives technically. Because I mean. I mean, it's to be expected, isn't it? Like, if you're the king of the universe, surely you'd have more than just one wife. Like, you know what I mean? You're in a position to... <laughs> not being funny, like, different people think in different ways, isn't it? Some people, some so-called men... I'm not being funny, but, like, some men I don't consider to be men based on the way they behave. I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't consider it manly, from my point of view. You know, some men seem to just want to involve themselves intimately with any woman they can. And I, me, personally, I don't respect that. You know what I mean? I, I think that's wrong, from my point of view. From my point of view, and from what Dr. Yoss says, coincidentally, the Heavenly Father seems to have a similar perspective. I ain't trying, I ain't trying to glorify myself, and it's just coincidence, isn't it? Like I said, some of the stuff in religious talk, like, I agree with or think in a similar way, because it just happens to be the case. But anyways, get to the point. Um, different people think in different ways, isn't it? From my point of view, I think the idea of saying that, you know, a man can have more than one wife, I think that's a good thing. In context, like, for me, I like the idea of having a big family. So for me, that would be good. If I, if I could have, like, ten wives, I would be happy. Like, I would be very happy because I know, like, end of the day, people, different people have different reasons, isn't it? Because to me, it's like it's options. And I can say, well, you know, end of the day, I have all these so much ideas. And it's like if I have one wife that's really good at one thing, another wife that's really good at another thing, another wife that's really good at another thing, and it's like we could all work together and then have some amazing, like, enterprise empire kind of thing. And then have, like, strategic. Because, again, this is, the, this is part of the reason why I study these kind of things anyway, like astronomy. Because I want to know how to make a perfect family. So I'm not being funny, but like I can see like certain issues with my family. Like just keeping it real, because certain issues with my family. And I'm like, cool, how do I make it more better than that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I can see, like, whether it's my immediate family or, like, the rest of the family, so to speak, and, like, issues with people that don't get along. Is that like, how can I create a family where everybody gets along and everyone's happy? How can I create that? Might as well figure it out. So at a point in time, I did a bit of research into Chinese astrology, as they call it, astrology. But the thing is, with their astrology, their astrology is evidently, there's evidently something to it. Because I've, I've investigated and I can see it actually matches up with reality. So then this is the point of knowing about some of that right knowledge. Things like stuff called close, close cutting days. Because allegedly there's a thing where they forecast certain days that are good to do different types of activities. Certain days is good to tailor, like cut clothes, you know. And this is something that, from my look at that, I investigate it and I can see it matches up with reality. I talk to other people that don't necessarily tell people what it, what it is, but like sometimes I talk to other people and they say, yeah, you know, this today, ah, oh, today was a hard day at the workplace. This, all this happened, that happened. And it's like, really? And that from years ago. And it's like, wow, this is funny because this matches up because in the clothes cutting days, it says that this, that, that day was a day of danger. And they say it's a, it's a bad day to, um, they say it's a good day to drink wine and be merry because all else is of little use. Based on a book called The Chinese Historical Bible by Derek Waters. You know what I mean? Because that keeps it real. At like, the end of the day, I like what in Dr. Yu. Maybe I'm biased because Dr. Yu happens to be black. I'm glad that he's black because that makes me feel good. Because there's nothing wrong with that. If I'm so called black, I'm happy to know that there's a black man that's so amazing. You know, like, in terms of his knowledge, in terms of the things he's done, the good he's done in other people's lives, I'm happy to know that. You know, it does matter. Again, people when they talk about Christianity, I think it's important to address that Jesus was actually black. Because some black people don't care what he looked like, it's just about his character. Some of us, it would mean something to us to know he's black, and we'll be able to relate to the idea that we can actually be like him. We're not worshipping someone else. We're saying we can be like him. That's the... I'd say that's the most... It is the most important thing, you know. It is. Because when we talk about the story in the speaking of intelligence disciples, you'll do greater works than that. What's the point of us accepting an image of him being some different type of people that looks nothing like us, and that's not even true? How are we going to relate to it? Because clearly, no matter what people say, people say, it don't matter how he looks, it does matter how he looks. Most, it clearly seems to be the case that most of our people that say they believe in Jesus and all of this, they don't go out and say, let's be like Jesus. They don't do that. They don't go out and say, yeah, let's go and heal people and feed people and teach people and guide people. They don't do that. You know, ain't, ain't trying to, like, go off on one, but, like, let's just keep it real. Stop the nonsense. Say it don't matter. Of course it matters. Of course it matters. Because if we saw it in the way that it is, we would say we can do this. When we talk about the, a world where there's so much bad stuff happening, we have the power to make bad stuff turn good. That's the whole point. Jesus is so great. He's so amazing. 
you have Jesus in you. You have the power to be like him in you. And if that's not what you're talking about, then what are you talking about it for? That's the thing. That needs to be addressed. There's no if, but, maybe about it. That's the reality. And when we're talking about black men and black women, this needs to be a reality too. Because I ain't to say only black men can be like Jesus. Black, women, black men, black women, same difference. You know, same difference. We are children of God together. Male and female. Created an image and likeness of God. Male and female. So people are talking all this crap, you know. And call, if you want to say it's biased, call it what you want to call it. But at the end of the day, from what I see, it seems to be more women, more black women talking about this independent woman, all this chat that they don't need no black man. It's more black women talking this than it seems to be black men. Because, I mean, like, how many black men saying they don't need a woman? Like, honest, like, are you serious? Like, let's just keep it real. There's some black men that talk reckless, you know, and they maybe shouldn't be called black men. They, talk, they say negative things about women in their rap videos and all this crap. But they don't claim to not need them. They just talk in a... In a this, oh, yeah, it's disrespectful. Oh, yeah, I ain't saying it ain't. They talk in a disrespectful way, but they don't pretend they don't need women. They don't need women. Like, every video, there's women. Every, every, every time they open their mouth, they're talking about women. They didn't say they don't need them. They're just not very articulate saying positive and respectful things about them. I ain't saying it's acceptable. I, I disagree with it. You know, because I, I can rap. You know what I mean? Don't, don't bother saying, oh, rap, rap, rap. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> but, um, I mean, in, in due time, in due time, I wanted to do my music for years, in due time, you know, but that's my thing. I'm like, end of the day, from I listen to rap music, and certain times I'm like, this man ain't got no lyrics, they ain't got no bars. Like, I can write, and then I start writing. I'm like, I'm like, because just to mention this, just, I, I'm kind of talking about myself. I wasn't necessarily trying to talk about myself, but why not? And it's like one of them things. It's like people be talking about, listen to rap music, they talk about 32 bars. And I'm like, 32 bars is nothing. I can write 96 straight. I can do that all day, so to speak. Well, maybe not all, depending on the mood. Do you know what I mean? And this is the thing, astronomy, forte. There's an asteroid called forte. Now, someone says a forte, something that somebody's good at doing. A talent, forte. There's an asteroid called forte. This is important. There's an asteroid, F-O-R-T-E, forte, and it seems to correspond to the idea of a forte. Why does it correspond to it? Who did this? I mean, obviously, the Heavenly Father did it. You know, it seems weird, but this is the thing. Like, sometimes the things that I've learned, some things are weird. Like, you say... It's like, you know, sometimes it's like, is, is this a reality TV show or something? The Heavenly Father's like, got us down here, like, you know what I mean? Like, one of them TV shows where people watch people doing things. Like, maybe, I don't know, like, I yeah, don't know. I mean, th- there's a story to that. People deal with different relig- different Abrahamic stories. You talk about the Quran, and they tell you the whole story about the Heavenly Father creating Adam spiritually before he created him physically. Some There's some people that call themselves Christian. I've seen it. Some people call themselves Christian. They're like, yeah, you know, Islam. It's Muslim and, like, they think it's some different thing. It's all part of the same thing. Like, stop that nonsense. Like, really? It's all this divisiveness. It's the same thing. If you just read it, you'd see it's based on the same story. It's still talking about the same Abraham situation. It's still dealing with the same thing. You know, people would just read it. Like, that mentality. Some people are very close-minded. And then again, people are who they are. But this is an importance about... Excuse me. This is an importance about being able to negotiate things. Okay, because from my mention that uh, astronomy is only responsible to acknowledge this. The fact is, I know because I've seen it happen. Certain times, um, you can have two people, there can be two people talking about the same thing. But just because they talk in a different way, it seems like they're not saying the same thing. And then they turn into an argument. I've seen it happen. And that's weird. Or like certain times, I might be telling someone about something and they ain't trying to hear what I'm saying. But then there's, like, another person in the same place, and I told them, and they're, like, kind of like, oh, okay. And then the one that weren't trying to hear what I was saying is trying to hear what they're saying. I'm just like, huh? I'm like, where is this? I'm like, what? You know what I mean? I'm like, you for real? I just, like, how come when I said it, you didn't want to hear what I'm saying? And then, But it is what it is, isn't it? Because I might not, let's say, for example, scratch that, not I might not, but in this situation, maybe it didn't make sense at the time. This was a long time ago. But then knowing what I know about astronomy now, I think it's, it can be explained. You know, it can be explained because there's different types of ways that people think. So if you're talking about the planet Mercury and people say, well, you know, that's other people's gods. Like, at the end of the day, I've, you know what I mean? I've, I've taught some of that stuff myself. And it's like, at the end of the day, Dr. said himself, all races, deities are based on the same family of gods except for the Hindu deities where they show them having, like, all multiple arms and stuff. That happened, that's a different family, okay? That's a separate family of gods. So seemingly, based on what he said, there's two families, okay? We're talking about Norse, Greek, Roman... I can see it by doing research on the internet. It does all seem to be based on the same thing. You know, however, one thing to mention is 
between looking at those pantheons, so to speak, you might be looking at a combination of the family of gods and the family of the so-called Hindu deities, whether you call them devas, azuras, or whatever you call them. Because there seems to be this kind of thing about it. Because, like, there's certain... We should know that the gods are people. We should know this. We don't, if we don't know, we should know there's information to it. So a certain time you're talking about of these two families, it seems a certain time people intermarried. Okay, this is important information because this explains a lot of context. You know, there's different species of creatures. People talk about reptilians. This is in the Bible. Like, the, the devil's a serpent. It's, it's actually in the Bible. You know, but some of us, I mean, like, with me personally, when I did some research, people talk about reptilians and conspiracies and all this stuff and so-called, I ain't about trying to name them or nothing, but these, because don't want to give it energy, so to speak, but, like, people talking about these secret families that control the world, as they put it. And I say, no. We control the world. You understand me? If you're going to tell me, or if you're going to, not tell me, but first say, but like, especially, if you're going to say that certain families control the world, the fact of the matter is, we're the people with the power spiritually. If we're giving power over to other people, we're still the ones with the power. That's just how we're using it. That's why it's important to address these things. If you're going to be talking about Christianity, it's important that we we're entitled to be Christians because those of us that deal with culture, you can say, yeah, you know, when you look at Egypt, and Jesus, it's like Horus, where they correspond. I ain't disputing that. You know, if you're going to say they're the same person, no, they're not the same person. They're different incarnations of a similar or the same spirit. They're not the same person. They both exist in their own time and space. You know, they're not the same person per se. You know, the, f the fact of the matter is, when you, when you look into it, you'll see that. You know, this is evident. Talk about the, the Holy Tablets by Dr. Malachi Zidjo, who show you, in that book, if you look in there, you see a depiction of what Jesus looks like. You see a depiction, a depiction of what Horus looks like. You can see that they're two different people. They don't look that much similar. However, however, and then people say, you know, because from years ago when I first saw some of these pictures, people were like, certain people were like, oh, the pictures aren't real. And it's like, end of the day, forget what they said, because I can see with astronomy the pictures are real, because the astronomical influences by the alignments show the pictures are real. You know, so for, for example, there's an asteroid called Adonis, and based on what I saw, it seems to be the case that the asteroid Adonis corresponds to the Jesus that people are talking about in the Bible, okay, because it's the same kind of face. And arguably, when you're talking about the deity Tammuz, not the same, same face, a, a very similar face, okay, because not being funny enough, but like, there's Dr. Yopi himself, like people saying that this thing about where it says in the scripture about him having a face that was um, void without form, that none should desire him, as they put it. And those these ideas, you know, he's tall, dark, but not handsome. handsome. And I ain't trying to, like, ain't trying to, because I ain't saying he meant it in a disrespectful way, and like, I, ain't trying to, I ain't trying to say it in a disrespectful way, but it's one of them things. I guess everybody's got their own per perception of, of handsome, innit? But, like, yeah, everybody's got their own perception of hands handsome, basically. Just leave it at that. Don't need to, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, he's handsome in the things he did. It's just, that's, that's, I mean, you don't have to be funny on that end. Everybody's got their own perception, innit? So, end of the day, you can see things like that. You know, and then we should be aware of these things. If we're aware of Jesus, then that's cool. You know, but it's good, from my point of view, to have a comprehensive comprehension to be aware of the rest of the family of gods. Because they do exist. The Bible makes it clear there's more than one God. Why not know the whole story? Why stop at that? We can still be Christians. Those of us that want to be Christians, we can still be Christians and still know the rest of the story. We can still know there's a whole family of gods. If those of us who are Christians subscribe to a particular God, and we call him Jesus, we prefer, if we like the name Jesus and we don't want to say Tammuz or Horus, that's people's business, isn't it? Don't, people ain't obliged to do that. And I'll say that because, you know, there was a time when I was first, you know, maybe introduced to some information. I was a bit like that. And it's like, yeah, we should use, you shouldn't say Jesus, you should say Yeshua. So at the end of the day, it's a Latinization. If we talk English, what difference does it make to say Yeshua when you ain't talking Hebrew anyway? So if you're going to talk Hebrew in general, then talk Hebrew in general. Otherwise, what difference does it make? It's kind of facetious. It's like, what's the point? Certain people be doing this, like with nutrition, people be doing this. At the end of the day, oh, don't eat this specific thing. You know what I mean? Certain people be saying, I ain't trying to this nobody, and I ain't, ain't, ain't that deep. But certain information don't really make sense. You know, I know because I've dabbled in some of it myself, so to speak. People say certain fruits and vegetables ain't natural. So at the end of the day, what is natural nowadays? You know what I mean? Who's to blame for that? The so called white man say, well, no. At the end of the day, a certain type of so called white man who just happens to be a devil or a type of devil. You know what I mean? Because just to mention, it would be somewhat irrational to suggest all white people are the same. It seems to be quite evident that they're not. You know, it does seem to be some people that are being classified as white people who are of the same family of Adam and Eve, and there's some of some people are being classified as white people who are not. They're a whole different species of beings. This should be addressed. This really should be addressed because it's important for people to know this. It's important for them to know it. You know what I mean? Because some some of them 
even. Not to say that it's trying to be all like to help other, or like, not to say we can't help other people. Not to be like all about other people. So as I'm concerned, we should be more concerned with ourselves and each other. You know, ourselves. Just care about ourselves, look after ourselves, secure ourselves, and then think about if we want to help other people, or whatever. But it's worth mentioning certain so-called white people are being seduced by the devil, you know, into some of the negative things that they believe or do. Not to make excuses for them, it is what it is. If the, de- if the devil's more subtle, cunning in a negative way, if you look at the Strong's Concordance, um, Blue Letter Bible, the Og, Strong's Concordance, I did mention it, didn't I? And if you look at that, and you see that, yeah, at the end of the day, the so-called serpent, the so-called devil, is very cunning, sneaky, you know, devious. He's a trickster, you could say, in a bad way. Not just, not just funny tricks, bad tricks. You know, subtle and cunning. He plays people up against each other. It's worth knowing this. Because that can explain something. People say, why are bad people bad and why are good people good? When you look at astronomy, you can see it. You see some people that do seem to do devilish things, and you can see it. That's the word Dionysus. Dr. you pointing this out. Dionysus is the name that the Greeks referred to Satan by. Well, that's the name they used to talk about him, so and so forth. Depending how you want to word it. You can look at the internet. Anybody can look at the internet and research Greek mythology. And I guess some people have studied this stuff at university, which, if you've studied it, then that might help. You know, it's on the internet. At the end of the day, how is it accessible to everybody is the thing. You can look up on the internet and read about that so-called deity and see his ways. He's very evil, very he's despicable. Certain of the things that he did, it talks about even him, um, you know, raping two of the other deities and, like, boasting about it to them. He's a disgusting person, disgusting, you know. And it also explains context, because the story, there's a, a deity called Aura or Aura. He was an A-U-R-A, and there's an asteroid named after her, seemingly, because it's the same name. And it talks about how, um, seemingly, because of something she said, seemingly she might have said something a bit disrespectful about another deity, Artemis. And then Artemis was offended, and she sent Dionysus to go and rape Aura. Because I think it was Aura um, questioned Artemis' chastity or something like that. She said something about it, or something about she looks mannish, or so, something, some type of something like that. And then, out of spite, Artemis sent Dionysus to um, rape Aura and take away her chastity. Like, some of these stories sound crazy, but it's like certain times people be going on with certain things that you say, that's, like, a bit crazy, like, why why you, is what isn't it, people, people being people, sometimes people have emotions and they do things that seem incredibly evil and wrong, but it is what it is, isn't it, it is what it is, when we look at some of these stories, and we look at astronomy, some of these things can be explained, the way that people interact with each other, and you see these characteristics in the asteroids and planets, and how people seem to interact, and it matches up, we should know about this astronomy stuff, People be, some people be saying astrology is of the devil. Maybe astrology is, you know, as a form of deception. When people say there's 12 signs and people born in this 30-day period, it's this sign. That's not based on facts. That is of the devil. That is a deception. If you, if you accept or if you agree with Jesus saying that, well, you know, the devil's a liar, then of course it's of the devil because a lie is of the devil in general. You know, based on Jesus' perception or his perspective, his doctrine. And I ain't saying I disagree. You know, it is what it is, isn't it? It's a characteristic. You can, you can look at things like that and see that. But when you're talking about astronomy, astronomy is a science, and anybody that says they doubt it, so to speak, can investigate it for themselves. And I say it's an easy thing to do. I'm going to wrap this up, because I've been talking for a long time, but as long as I, I feel like this has been good and addressed a lot of things. But, like, say, for example, when you're talking about um, astronomy, there's, there's things you can do. If you're talking about the face of a person, it seems to be the case that the Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, those four astronomical bodies as people call it seem to correspond to the face in like slightly different ways excuse me in slightly different ways so depending on how you want to say well, which part I just say they correspond in different ways it seems like Mars seems to correspond to more like the outline of the head uh, Mercury seems to be more like the interior central part of the face uh, Venus seems to correspond more to like the mouth or like let's say like the, the lower jaw area so to speak and you're talking about the sun the sun seems a little bit more difficult to explain in, in that kind of context to be, to be perfectly honest, it seems to correspond to it somehow, but I'm not sure at the moment. Just just being honest. You know, just being really, really honest. This is the good thing about having a lot of people investigating information together because a lot of people say enough hands make light work. Well, like, you know, some of us have these type of sayings. So from one place, we might word it that particular way. Once a lot of people are investigating information together, it's easy for everybody to learn. Or at least those of us that learn well in that kind of capacity. But what I'm saying now, when you look at all of that, 
and you look at a time when those four, if you can find all four of them closely aligning, then that should be very conclusive in terms of how the face looks. And then if you can find that the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mercury, Mars, you should probably be able to find it. And if not, you should at least be able to find the Sun and Mercury closely aligned. At least those two, because Mercury, you know, Mercury is close to the Sun. So in terms of orbits and stuff, Mercury moves quickly. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's proportions are based in different planets and the time they take to orbit. Because we're all talking about, from our perspective on this planet, things lining up. So it's all to do with orbits and the way it looks from where we are, if you, if you see what I'm saying. Just to mention this on a slightly different tangent, people talk about this, like we talk about a five-pointed star, and people say, yeah, you know, if you watch the way Venus appears to move in the sky, it forms a five-pointed star. Like, these these kind of information is things that is worth knowing if people want to know the truth, so to speak. We talk about symbolism, we talk about universal knowledge. This is what it is, okay? People are talking about religion. The fact is, I say from my point of view at least, Maybe you might have different opinions. From my point of view, there's nothing wrong with knowing the science of how the Most High created the universe. Why would it be a problem? Why would he want anybody to not know? I'm not saying that he doesn't want some people. To, I mean, arguably, there's some people who shouldn't know some things because they might try and do bad things with the information. You know what I mean? In that context. But it's nothing wrong with knowing. If people say that, you know, the Most High created everybody for a purpose, and you say, well, yeah. The same way in Genesis says that, God put the lights in the sky for the telling of time, or in the heavens for the telling of time. And then, you know, you do the math, so to speak, two and two is four. It's like, oh, lights in the heavens, sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, etc. You know, signs for telling of times. And you say, well, okay, when these things align, that's a time for such and such person to be born. These are the celestial characteristics that people inherit. So when people are talking about spirit, it seems to be the case that a certain extent of spirit and spirituality can be quantified by astronomical uh, events and celestial bodies. That makes sense. Me being me, I like knowing things in a way that makes sense to me. Like, if you tell me, you know, an apple in the hand, a banana in the hand, you put these in the blender, you get banana and apple smoothie. That makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? That makes sense to me. Like, certain times people say, you come out deep stuff. Like, in the day, may, maybe it might seem deep to people. I ain't saying it ain't deep, but it's like, certain times, like, the way I think, it's actually quite straightforward stuff. You know? And that might be um, astronomy explaining that. Astronomy seems to explain everything. Because it's like there's a Taurus, Mars aligned with Taurus, Psyche aligned with Taurus, with my alignments. And I think it's Coeli. I think it's an asteroid called Coeli. C O E L I. Also aligned with Taurus. And then when you look at mythology, there seems to be a Coel, Coel something, who was one of the Titans. In, in, according to Greek, the Greek, the Greek inter interpretation of this mythology stuff, one of the Titans was associated with intelligence. And to an extent, astronomy, I think, but intelligence, key point. And then even if you want to, depending on how you want to interpret it, it might say that, well, that's showing you that astronomy and intelligence is combined. Maybe, depends how you want to look at it. You know, that's the, that's the thing about astronomy. A lot of it is like you can interpret it in different ways. And that's the thing about information. The same way when you look at the Bible, when you look at the Hebrew letters, or the, yeah, the Hebrew words, and then look at the Hebrew letters, then there's interpretation. Each of the Hebrew letters seems to mean something. As I mentioned, like, you know, there's there's a teacher, another teacher in America, Brother Polite. You know what I mean? Even recently, there's like, a video of him I'm talking on Facebook. And it's like one of them things. It's nice when there's someone who's inspirational. Whether or not, like, you maybe think, like, you, maybe, whether or not you relate to everything they say. But it's nice when someone can be inspirational. And they can talk and talk sense, talk wisdom. And it's like it can be inspiring, like, make, you know what I mean? Make someone think. You know, because he did a class years ago called Solar Numerology. We talked about... Um, how astronomical alignments correspond to characteristics in a person. I think he, maybe he said astrology, but, you know, it's similar. You know, because he talked about, well, the way he was doing it was, was using the 12 signs. He, he did say that, yeah, you know, technically there's 13, but it seems to be the thing where that at the time, deal with that degree of information at the time, which is, that's a sensible thing to do. Deal with what information you have and then work your way up. And then me being me, from I saw that, I'm like, wow, I want to know. I want to know what my alignments are and how that corresponds to my name and all this. And when I saw, like, the price it cost for the readings on the website, I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn how to do this myself. You know what I mean? Because I ain't saying the price was too expensive. It's just me being me. Dep different people have different perspectives and things like that. Me being me, I like to make things for myself. That's how I am. So arguably, I have a, I have a wealthy mentality. Because it's like, if I can pay someone else or something, I'd rather make, like, if I can make it myself. It's like anything. like, this, like I, li I, like, I like quite simple things about life. I like enjoying life, like the basics. 
I like eating good food and having good company and, you know, stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but seriously, it's like, from when I was younger, like, I, like, I like, okay, if I like biscuits, how can I make my own biscuits? Like, <laughs> it's like that type of thing. Um, but seriously, though, like, this is all relevant, though, because even when you talk about astronomy, you can see, like, Venus and Ceres, and that might perceivably tie in with cooking, because I can cook, you know what I mean? Some people like to stereotype and say that men can't. Like, different people have different opinions, isn't it? Because I say, well, in the culture that pertains to my heredity, men can cook, like, you know what I mean? So, people, some, different people have different opinions, isn't it? Like, men, it's not impossible for men to cook. Talk about culture, it's important to have gender roles, but then again, when you're talking about astronomy, it's important to factor in astronomy because not every man is the same kind of man. So, when we're talking about gender roles and culture and all this, astronomy is more important information, even when it comes to things that some people are really touchy and sensitive about. Like, some people say, um, you know, men that I mean, it's one of them subjects, isn't it? Like, some people might get all in their feelings about it. People say, well, men that are into men instead of into women, it's this, it's wrong, it's this, it's that, it's the third. But the facts are, the facts actually are, when you look at even astronomy, astronomy seems to be able to explain things like that. Because there's certain feminine personalities that some men have a dominant um, influence by feminine personalities. And that might explain if and when you see that certain of them men, even at the very least, they seem feminine in the way they are. Some men have a feminine vibe. And you say, this is strange, why do they have that vibe? Like Prince, for example, and I ain't saying that, I ain't saying that in a bad way. Because Prince is a, str- like a strange creature. Like, no, no, but Prince had like cool music, innit? But that's the thing with Prince. It's like he seems like he's like masculine and feminine at the same time almost. He's just like, what is that? You know, I think with him that may or may not have been an Aino thing. There's an asterisk called Aino after the Greek deity. Oh, sorry. Technically, Aino was, I think she was a mortal or a queen. And then she was transfigured, so to speak, into Luca Dio. Like these are things out there. And I can say, me personally, I can see that there's, like, then we talk about why people are attracted to certain people. Me, personally, I can see, like, in my alignments, it seems to explain there's a certain emotional rapport, you could say. And then you even see, like, when you look at Luca Dio, and if you research, you see, like, they talk about another one of the names being Bine, B-Y-N-E, and they say that that means um, malt, and I like malt, so there might be something to all of that. So you see, like, when you talk about relationships, and, like, it depends, isn't it? Because there's good things and bad things. Like I say, like, I've had some encounters. Not, like, not in that kind, not in a promiscuous way, but, I mean, I've had tried different relationships with different people. You know what I mean? It's me being me. Like, now this is life story moment, isn't it? Me being me. Like, when I was younger, I used to believe, so to speak, in this idea of, like, meeting the one, people call it. One of them things, isn't it? Or the perfect person and get married and all this. And, you know, I did meet someone um, who turned out to not be the perfect person. And I kind of regret that things went to a certain a level, a, a level that it didn't need to bother going to. You know what I mean? But I didn't realize what kind of person they were. So it's like, when we're talking about black men and black women, I can appreciate, so to speak, I can comprehend that certain black women feel like, you know, um, certain black men have betrayed them. But I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? There's some people that are devils. You know what I mean? Straight. There's some people that, like, they might say one thing and they seem good, they talk good, but then it's like they change up. But the fact is, when you know about astronomy, you know about that story, Dionysus, and then you look, you interpret that, so to speak, you look at the June 6, 1966, midnight New York City, New York alignments, then that will show you that the so-called devil does actually exist. And that's just one particular personality, which is malevolent. There's plenty of other malevolent personalities besides that one. That's just one of them. So Dr. Yacht talks about this. He's talking about the deities. There's agreeable deities, as, as it's referred to. Those who have a compromising nature, and there's disagreeable deities, those who have an uncompromising nature. You know, the type of people that say, okay, um, I've got a cake. Do you want some cake? Let's cut the cake in half. Now, come listen, give me all the cake now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's, it's one of them things, isn't it? These, this is information worth knowing. Rather than just running around thinking everybody's the same, which they're not, and thinking the only reason why different people behave in different ways is because of their experiences. Some of us, some, some, some people believe and it's not. That's a it's a factor in different extents with different people. And you know, there's some of some people I even want to say our people, there's some people that say, uh, you know, the only reason why certain black people do bad stuff is because of this this a particular incident that happened in, in relatively recent history, a racial political incident and that's complete BS. It's nothing to do with that. Really and truly it's nothing to do with that. There might be a factor in some areas, but more than that it's to do with personal character. That's what it's really to do with. You know? 
But it's something to be careful of because when you see that there's certain people that are aspected by Dionysus, some people that are influenced celestially by the so-called devil, you will see that they're the kind of people making excuses for bad things and they themselves do bad things and try and make ridiculous excuses for their own behavior when simply they're doing wrong. Because it's their spiritual nature. Whether they know that's what they are or not, their spiritual nature is inclined to do that. These are things that we ought to know because we're talking about solutions. There's certain so-called black men that are devils that go out trying to do evil, you know, whether they know it consciously or not. And they're causing, on as far as the things that men are doing, they're causing the negative situation in terms of how certain black women feel towards black men because that's how the devil works. He does it on purpose. And his spiritual nature shows that. Like if you look at things, like let's say, for example, if you look at his um, Leo-Pluto alignment, I think not, actually not just Leo Pluto, there's two of them, because there's the Leo Pluto alignment that's around 165. Coincidentally, I noticed my son and Mercury is about Leo 164, and then there's like the 140 Serpentia alignment, and then my Venus is like 144. And then this is another strange thing, but I might as well mention it, because it's not like some big secret. Because it, it just turns out to be the case. Because um, I, I, I found out about this back in 2011, I didn't really mention it too much. But like this thing about being an incarnated deity called Nin Gijida, as they use the name in Sumer, or Sumeria, however you want to word it, and they, they associate, this deity is associated with life. You know, they say like the lord of the artifact of life, some people would say. Then it's kind of weird, because like the more I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm like am, I, am I some prototype for, for life or something? Like, where is this? You know, it seems strange, but then this is the thing about it. Knowing what I know, it's like, it is what it is, isn't it? Because why should it seem weird to me? that I might be some, you know, or not that I might be, but that, you know, I can be a prototype or, like, a basis for how life works. Why should it be weird? Because this is the thing. It depends on the information that we're taught. I'm not saying that's exactly how it works. I'm just saying, why should it be weird? You know what I mean? There's there's a capacity to it. There's a context to it. Okay? Like, the same way people say Jesus, well, some people imply, at least, that Jesus is the light that lights every man that comes into the world. You know, and then there's this thing with Sumer, like, this, this symbol they show with um, two of these, like, lion, dragon kind of things. And then people say, yeah, you know, that's Tamils and Ningijita. They're two guardians of um, Anu, the Most High God's gate, his palace. They guard his gate. You know, depending on how you want to interpret that, the implication would be that they're, like, bodyguards, you could say. And Dr. did say this, like, certain things that Jesus said, no man gets to the Father but by him. I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father but by me is the term. And Jesus, and um, Dr. was saying that, yeah, you know, because Jesus is, like, the Most High's bodyguard. So, like, say, for example, you can discern between people that should and shouldn't get into the presence of the Most High. Like, these type of information is worth addressing. Um, but, I mean, actually, on that subject, to mention these things, it should be content, it should be a point of reference. Nutrition, United States Department of Agriculture, um, nutrient database is there. Astronomy, the International Astronomical Union, NASA's JPL Horizon System is there. Uh, now, when you're talking about this, when you're talking about Mesopotamian stuff, uh... There's the ETCSL, you know, the electro, is it Electronic Text Corpus of Sumerian Literature, I think. That's on the internet. So, again, point of reference. At the end of the day, it might sound a bit strange someone to say, oh, yeah, I'm a deity. It might sound strange when people have um, been familiarized with a perception of reality that doesn't accommodate that. Because in our culture, it's not that strange. It is what it is. And, like, there's certain Hindu people that they, it's just standard to them that, yeah, you know, there's certain people that are avatars, you know what I mean, to them it's standard, like, yeah, you know, there's certain little children, you see, like, they're incarnations of deities, because they know, they're raised with that information, a lot of us are so-called black people, we used to know, but we don't know now, and sometimes we can look at certain things that's happened in recent history and see how that's happened, so again, we're going to talk about Christian, it's important to know, you can quantify, we're talking about Christ, the asteroid Adonis, so then we'll know, we'll see someone walking down the street, that person looks like Jesus, because we know what his face looks like. Birth of the Holy Tablets by Dr. Malachi said, you other books by Dr. Malachi said, you that shows the depictions. People say the depictions ain't real. I can see they match up to, us, to celestial alignment, so how can it not be real? Um, but now on the topic, you're talking about ETCSL. You can go in there, you can read stories about the different deities, and these explain the context. So like we talk about the Bible, we talk about um, Moses going up into a mountain to get a law, tablets. Now I mentioned this earlier, I think I didn't finish the point. You know, we're talking about tablets. There's a culture where people write on tablets. You know what I mean? In Mesopotamia, people write on tablets. In Sumo, they write on tablets. That's where the and Dottio talked about this. When the gods, uh, at least at a, point, at a certain point in history anyway, when the gods came to the planet, that's where they established their culture. 
the gods. The Bible does say that they're approval gods. It does say that. Yeah, their god, their king, is Anu, the Most High. And in the Bible, it might say El Elion, as they put it in English. But that's what you talking about. That's God Most High. That's the God of the gods. He's on the same way a god is greater than a mortal. He's a god to the gods. That's how high he is up in, let's say, in his greatness. And we can see that he's a person. Now, page two of the Holy Tablet shows you his face. The Landesbusch Museum in Germany. Because I, I did research trying to figure out, because I've seen this picture before, trying to figure out where it's at. It's the Landesbusch Museum, however, that, however it's pronounced, in Germany. We just put Landes, like L A N D, uh, I think it's E S U C H E, I think. I think, and then space, museum. If you put it in, like, even if it's not how it's spelled, if you put that into Google, it'll probably correctly spell it anyway. You know what I mean? But the fact is, you can look up the website. I'm just saying that. The fact is, when I looked on the website, they didn't seem to have a picture of it on the website. But if you really, really wanted to know, if you live in Germany, you can probably go there and look for yourself. Or if you know someone in Germany, you could ask them to look. Or you could probably ring them. You know, cause you could try, try ringing them, emailing them, asking them about it. You know, and you see there's an artifact. Um, basically, it looks like a like a piece of armor like someone would wear on, on their wrist or something. And it's got, it's like a cast metal, like, looks like uh, bronze. Bronze or brass. Bronze or brass. One or the other, I reckon. It's kind of yellowy, kind of. It, it looks nice. I'll just say that much. It looks really nice. Um, and it's got, it's very intricate detail. And it shows the person clearly is Anu, clearly. This, this magnificent, you know, amazing, or inspiring I say it literally, because that, that's, he's amazing. You know, the way he looks is amazing. Like, people talk about in the Bible, like, strength, wisdom, and beauty. Uh, and they're describing how the most high looks. Um, it's tall, you know what I mean? Strapping, as people call it. You can see the strength in his body. And he's standing on a bull. And he's holding some things in his hand. I'm not, I'm not sure precisely what they are. It looks like a certain type of plant. I want to, I want to look, like, know what it is. I'll, I want to find out. I'll look it up, investigate it. But the point I'm making is this is there. This is an artifact from hundreds of years ago, if not thousands of years ago. I think it might be a thousand and so many hundred. Then again, I'm not sure, you know. don't remember right now. It's a good few hundreds of years at the very least. This might be some point in B.C., you know. Uh, that might sound silly. I'm pretty certain it's in B.C. And this is a culture called Uratu, which is U-R-A-R-T-U. You can look this up. Apparently it's in modern-day Armenia. Why, what's the point of mentioning this? Because somebody's going to say the pictures in, in the Holy Tablets aren't real. Then why does that picture on page two of the Holy Tablets clearly match up with that artifact from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago if it's not real? It's real enough, you know? And then the planet Uranus is the planet that corresponds to Anu clearly in astronomy, clearly. So Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars. If you can find a time when Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars closely aligned and Uranus or because you know some people are silly, who like the silly humor, the planet Uranus, okay, and then you'll see a certain type of look, certain type of face. Just to mention, there's a rapper called Young Buck. He looks a bit, you know, resembles a bit that depiction of Anu, a bit. And it's coincidental because it's like, I ain't saying that he's Anu or nothing, you know. But then again, not, well, I'm going to say you never know. It's, I think it's very unlikely, you know what I mean? But then again, you might think it's unlikely who looks. Now, I ain't trying to be funny. As far as I'm aware, I knew he's not on the planet at the moment. As far as I'm aware. But I'm just saying, like, at the end of the day, you might see characteristics, the point, you might see characteristics in people that reflect certain of the deities, even the Most High God himself. So, like, um, Dr. Yot talks about in some of the, the literature, how the Most High hates a traitor more than he hates a thief. And then, you know, any of us that know anything about Young Buck and this whole thing, Young Buck and 50 Cent, and this whole loyalty thing, you say, coincidence? I might... I, Mentioning that, I might look at the alignments of Young Buck, like, and do, like, a case study about it and make a presentation, kind of. Because the thing is, like, with me personally, with that presentations like that, I'm not necessarily too heavy in that kind of stuff as such. Like, talking is my thing. Forte, Venus, mouth, talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Different people do different things, isn't it? So, again, I think to wrap it up, because uh, I think I've addressed pretty much everything in this, and I think this has been really good. Give thanks. You know what I mean? Because I've been wanting to do a recording. I feel like it's really good. And I think this has gone really good. So give thanks to Moses. Um Why? Because not to sound funny about it. And I think some people say pious and whatever. Like, there's nothing wrong with being pious, I guess, if, if you're keeping it real. Because I think it's important, like, those of us who know information, it's important that we circulate the information. It's important. And it's important, like, the same way people talk about in the Bible about having a congregation, that is important. 
you know, if you want to use the term congregation and say temple, church, however you want to word it, me personally, I think I relate more with the idea of like same way as a child, you know, group of friends, the way the same way some youths have their gang, they got their squad. I think that's good enough. We don't necessarily need to, in my opinion, I think we don't necessarily need to have a church or a temple, me personally, but some of us might feel it's more important, you know, for each of us, to each of us to our own, you know. Because me, I'm very, I'm quite with, na- I'm quite a nature-orientated person. I like being outside. The same way I'm recording, I'm outside right now. And connecting, you no, know, you could say connecting with nature, and it feels peaceful, it feels nice, you know, because nature was... If you want to look at it that way, if you want to really do with the scriptures like that, nature was created for us. If we want to interpret it like that, this was this is the most highest creation. This is our home. You know, why do we need to put ourselves in buildings? Why is it necessary? Adam and Eve didn't live in buildings. If we t- if we take it so literally, even the ducks like like the ducks are green. It's like yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> and like now keeping it real, certain times I've noticed things happen like energy, spirituality. I've noticed certain times like even when I'll be recording this, what certain time. There's some done some other recordings. I feel I feel like this is the best one. I'm I'm happy. You know, I'm really happy. Um, certain time, certain time I've been recording. I see like stand out of the water. And it's like they look, they're all these little ducks, and it's like they come like like like, like they're swimming towards me, even like starting to walk up onto the uh, onto the ground. I'm like, but I've seen things like that happen before. That's the thing about it. And even Dr. Yotz talked about this about like the importance of like spirituality. Because remember, he teaches religion, but he's like saying like. When we're dealing with religion, we need to be sincere with what we're talking about. We need to really be sincere with it. We need to be connecting with the Heavenly Father, not just saying that, you know what I mean, religious. I'm paraphrasing what he said, but like that type of thing, because when we, like, purify ourselves spiritually, then nature can, like, some of the negative things, people talking about storms and all, earthquakes, I mean, some of that stuff's natural, some of it's people doing it, but, like, certain things in nature, it's like Mother Nature is a conscious living thing. You know, that's another thing to address. We talk about Gaia. There's an asteroid named Gaia, G-A-E-A. You know what I mean? All, all that's real, too. And those of us as people, you know, whether we identify as being mortals, you know, made in the image of God, whether we identify as being gods ourselves, children of the Most High, or maybe some gods who are not directly children of the Most High, which, whatever it is precisely that we, you know, profess that we perceive ourselves to be, if we purify ourselves spiritually, our emotional state, the things we think, the things we do, because realistically, the things we think need to be sorted out, and then the things we do will naturally adjust itself. If we're thinking the wrong way, whatever the wrong way means, then chances are we're going to do the wrong things. Again, all of these things are important. Talking about all astronomy, ETC, or so it's like actually to mention that Mount Sinai, because the key thing to address Mount Sinai, there's a deity known as Sin, Nana. Okay. Nana, there's an asteroid, N-A-N-N-A, I think that might correspond to Nana, you know, just to mention that as well, so then we get context when we're looking at religions, which God are people talking about, there's a lot of different names in the Bible, in the Hebrew, a lot of them have just been translated as God, which God is being talked about, it talks about Job, and it talks about uh, constellations, and you see like, when you're dealing with, to mention these things as well, it's important points of reference, or things to look into, talking about, uh, sorry, talking about, Sorry, sorry. You know what I mean? Talking about Mesopotamian uh, information literature. Some people might say Babylon specifically, which is in the Mesopotamia anyway. So, you know, some people say Babylon and they make it like this negative thing. I ain't saying it negative, but some people don't know the story. So, don't teach the story. When you're talking about Babylon, that you look at the name Babylon saying the gates of heaven, like Babel, gate. I think, pre- pretty sure Babel is meant to mean gate, or maybe someone might interpret it as tower. Someone might even say it means confusion, and then on is like saying an, heaven, and new, the heavenly one, that's one of the titles of the Most High. Like when you look in Sumerian literature, a lot of the time they call him An. Yeah, a lot of the time they call him An. And then you see in the Holy Tablets, An Nu. And the doctor will tell you that, like, yeah, when, you, when people talk about Allah, that's one of the best names that people have for him because Allah is, the, the name of Allah is saying the breath of life, Allah. And, like, again, this is one of the great, this is one of the things I like the most about Dr. teachings, is the way he teaches. To show you, look, look at these different words, look at God. And even when people use titles like Baal, and all that type of stuff. We say that when you look at the word Allah, that's a word where you breathe in and out to say it. That's how you know what the word means. It's the breath of life itself. Like again, like Dr. Tio, like when it comes to information, Dr. Tio, like he puts in the work, like le- legit, legit. Like when someone talks about a rapper, like they got lyrics, and then Dr. Tio, like Dr. Tio's like that times ten times a hundred. But when it comes to teaching, so anybody who don't know about Dr. Tio, I would suggest like again. 
check out his work because a lot of his material is shared on the internet. You know, certain time there was a point in time we you know people had to go and find the books to buy the books. These times a lot of things are on the internet. You know what I mean? So it's there. Like me be me, being the generation I'm of, like you know, certain time we like the internet to you know what I mean find stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, there's so much things on the internet. We're talking about Mesopotamia, all this on the internet. Excuse me, a lot of our ancestors didn't necessarily remember to talk about Mesopotamia, Sumer, even though arguably all of us, depending on which families you're talking about, or a lot of us might be able to see that we actually trace back in our heredity to that culture, you know, where we knew precisely who God is, the gods is, our ancestors, our creators and our ancestors, because your ancestor is your creator, technically. You know, when you think about it, that's the irony of the thing. And certain of us, again, as people, because some of us don't remember, we're talking about creators thinking our creator looks like someone else. You know what I mean? And then we're talking about things like, again, call me bias. No, scratch not call me bias. But it may, maybe it's bias from my point of view. But I think at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm male, in it? So sometimes males see things the way we see things. Sometimes females see things the way they see things. But it's one of them things. To me, to look at a black woman and see a black woman feel, for whatever reason, to straighten her hair or, or even put a weave on her hair or bleep, put this weird chemical stuff in their hair. And certain times people do that, and it's like it makes it, like, they might work past, and it's like they, there's this smell, like this poison smell, like people putting this poison in their head. You know what I mean? Like, how, do, how, how does that happen unless subconsciously, at least, they don't feel satisfied with their own image? They clearly don't know their image and likeness of God. So this information is clearly important, because why would they want to straighten their hair? You know what I mean? Because not to necessarily seem like too funny, funny or nothing, but it's reality. You look at animals, most animals have straight, the people say that, that is what it is. Most animals have straight hair, fur. You know what I mean? It is what it is. We're the only people that have the type of hair we have. So we should know that it's special. We should be proud to have it. It's nothing wrong with it. It's not dirty. It's not bad. It's not ugly. It's beautiful. It's God's hair. That's the same type of hair that God has. You, someone can't be proud of being like God. What can you be proud of? You know what I mean? You can't be proud... If you can't be proud to be like the creator, who can you be proud? Like, come on now. Because some of us say stuff, but, you know what I mean? Some of us say stuff and we don't really mean it. You know what I mean? Like, legit, we as people, as black people, we're made in the image and of God. Although, it's worth noting, when you say that, remember, there's good and evil in the family of God. Don't think that all the gods are good. You know what I mean? That's, we have to, that's something to be careful of. Don't be thinking, like, just say every black person is good. It's not, not that simple. You know what I mean? The fact of the matter is, when you, again, look at the information, you'll see it's good gods and bad gods. And ultimately, seems to be the case anyway, ultimately, a lot of the life forms on the planet are created by different gods. So even when people are talking about certain, the negative type of white people, it seems to be the case, very simply, that they were, well, then again, at least, depends. When you're talking about certain type of Asiatic people, however you want to word it, and you see that Asiatic people, uh, whether you're talking about Indians or whatever, whatever you want to call it, and you see that certain white people are basically them, but like albino, um, certain types of people are actually created by certain of the negative gods for a certain reason. You know what I mean? Depending on how you want to interpret it. Because when you look in the Bible story, you can see certain time, uh, certain gods in the Bible seem to use certain groups of people like a weapon. So we're talking about the Israelites specifically. If they don't do what they're told, then certain people are used to attack them as punishment. These are things that are in there. These are things that ought to be addressed because it's a context of the story that... Um, for those for those of us who are not aware, we ought to be aware of it. This is worth knowing, isn't it? Because it's context. And then we can start differentiating. You know, those of us that want to walk that path, so to speak, we can start differentiating and saying, wait a minute, do I want to subscribe to this particular God looking at the methods that they use? You know, that's another thing to address. It might seem a bit controversial, but it's something to address. Because not to assume, like just say in the Bible it says God, not to assume it's really talking about the Most High all the time. Because it seems to be the, clear, the case that it's not. It's not always talking about the Most High God. There's other gods. So a person might want to differentiate between whether they want to worship a specific God or just say, you know what, I just worship the Most High himself straight. Because someone's going to say, well, you're not allowed to do... At the end of the day, from my point of view, knowing that I am a God, then I don't feel the need to say that we have to go through Jesus. Not as a, it depends, isn't it? Each, to each their own, isn't it? To each their own. Everybody should know what's right for them. But it's like, again, things like that to address. And I'm going on a little bit, but just to make sure I say all this other stuff is relevant. Uh, another thing to talk about, people talk about the devil. The devil has a family the same way God has a family. The devil's father, Tarnush. 
um, you know, there was a war. Doxy explains sort all of this. There was two wars that it talks about. There was a war in heaven um, between, well, a conflict, let's say, between Tarnush and Murdoch, who's also known as the angel Michael. There was a conflict between these two. Um, basically, call it jealousy and envy, because the Most High gave a level of authority to Murdoch, and Tarnush was in disagreement to that. And for the sake of his disagreement, he, he did, being the kind of person he is, clearly, he then went as far as to bomb their planet with a plutonium bomb. This is this is all in the Holy Tablets, you know. Context. It's talking about a war in heaven in the Bible. The Holy Tablets will tell you the, the, the full details, or at least fuller details of the story. You know, and then there was this kind of thing where, um, you know, Michael was then sent by the Most High to destroy Tarnush. Um, there's that. So then you get context again. We're talking about the Most High. We might well be concerned to know that sometimes the Most High actually, even though we might see this in the Bible, we say we think that the God they're talking about in the Bible is the Most High, we might be concerned to know that the Most High sends certain of his children to do certain things, sends them on a mission. Now, just notice this. I ain't saying it's equal. I ain't saying it is. But notice this. Certain time in gangs, because like those of us that live in certain areas and we know terminology, I ain't saying I was involved in a gang. I know some people seem like they were. I mean, it's saying too much. You know what I mean? It's saying too much. That's just, you know, certain people seem to live a certain lifestyle. Um, and then people talk about the olders and the youngers. Certain times you have the older, as people call it, the leader, if you want to look at it that way. Not necessarily just the leader, but the older that everybody else orientates around. And the older might send the younger to do something. That's our culture. God himself has that. Yeah, this is important to know this. So those of us who don't know better, like me included, certain times, and I didn't, know, I didn't always know this. I know now. You know, we might think that, oh, why are these youth in gangs? They should be in gangs because that's our culture. They're doing the right thing. They're reviving the culture. They're living our culture now. They're not reading about culture and talking about culture. They're putting it into practice. The thing to do with that is say, you should have morals in how you have that. You should have morals. Not necessarily go around doing all crazy stuff. You should have morals because those of them that perceive, let's say those of you, depending on who's listening, those, and I can say me included, like those of us that have the capacity to be on some type of militant type of military stuff, because I could have gone and joined the military, I'm glad I didn't, knowing the context of society, seeing how like sometimes the military in certain society go and do wars that, you know, ain't even justified. You know what I mean? Like, all, all of that's a whole other tangent, a whole other story. You know what I mean? As you see, certain times the wars are based on material gain, not on any form of justice, regardless of what people actually say. But um, context, those of us that are kind of military inclined, our role, our natural role, is to be protectors, well, in certain extent. Some of us to be protectors, some of us to be police, which is slightly different, depending on the context. Some of us to be protectors of the community and those who are not necessarily with the same kind of strength and power and, like, you know, a, let's say militant abilities to defend themselves. Like, that, that's how things work. You know, it's context. It's different people have different purposes. There's people that are born for different reasons. There's people that are good to be teachers. There are people that are good to be, you know, agriculturalists. There's people that are good to be police, even. Different people are born for different purposes. Now, when people are going to talk about Tarnush, um, there, was, there seems... Stories should be investigated. There seems to be two incidents. Because there was a point where Murdo attacked him with a certain weapon. You know, it's mentioned. Um... And there's also a point on the planet, which seems to me like, I think, again, this thing's worth investigating because it's like different contexts of the story. But certain time when he was on the planet, and then there was another incident, seemingly after the first incident, however that works, um, or maybe these were two different people that had the same title, there was another incident where basically um, in this conspiracy, in this power struggle, this might sound a bit strange, but in the power struggle between um, two sons of the Most High, Inki and Enlil, there had been this thing where Inky had sort of um, originally be, or initially been given authority over this whole planet, you know, because he was child of the Most High, who was the king of the gods, and the king of the universe, you should be aware. And then on this planet, at the, that, that time at least, there was a species of, of creatures called Draconians, who are reptilian humanoid people. You know, because if we, this is the thing, if we looked at them, we'll think they're people, this is the thing. I'm not saying they ain't people, but technically they're reptilian people. Now, depending on, like, say, different groups of us as, as so-called black people, some of us are reptilians, we don't know. You know, not to say that all reptilians are bad and all that, because it's not. You know, Dr. makes it clear, there's different groups of them. You know, the group that Inky and his mother Id comes from, 
they're more benevolent. They don't mean necessarily any harm to people. But then there's a different group that does. You know what I mean? And you can see, when you look at like, the Holy Tablets explains this, and people might, that, whether people believe it or not, the fact is it's all provable and you really investigate things thoroughly, you can see that that's actually the reality. There's different groups of people on the planet at the moment, um, different groups of species of beings on the planet at the moment that have different agendas. You know, and the Holy Tablets explain this, that you're going to talk about so-called Maldekians. It seems to be the case that certain of them got here with an incident of, um, it's my, like, Ideally, this is a thing to read because it might not make so much sense just talking about it. But um, this thing of the gods having a planet called, or a, a spacecraft that looks like a planet, or shaped like a planet, called Nibiru. And when that came into the solar system at a point in time, it kind of like some things happened basically. One planet got smashed up. Some uh, spacecraft from that planet was chasing Nibiru to try and attack it because they thought it was a uh, an act of war or whatever. And then um, there was a point where one of those spacecraft got trapped by Nibiru and it got smashed into this planet. This planet used to be bigger. You know, these are things to mention, because people might say, like, why is there a moon? There used to be a planet with no moon, called Tia, the planet's called Tiamat, and then um, with this incident, with this spacecraft clash, crashing into the planet, it broke the planet into two pieces. The bigger part is the planet that we're on now, and the smaller part is what then became the moon. These are things to know, because it's like some people seem to think that Dr. Oz makes up the stories. If people, if people actually look at these texts that are in, um, some of them in clay tablets, some of them engraved into stone, these stories have been around for, for thousands of years. You know, just to make that point, some people think it's making up. We've got resources, okay? There's the ETCSL that's got around 400 or so texts. There's the CDLI, the Cuneiform Data... Actually, I'm not sure if that's what that stands for. It may or may not be the Cuneiform Data... No, I'm not sure, actually. I don't remember. The C is probably cuneiform. The rest of it, I'm not sure. Like right now, database, data, something like that. Um, yeah. Because me being me, I want to know. So is it library? Is it language institute? Something like that. If you just put CDLI into Google, it'll come up. And they got low. they got so much stuff on that website. Seriously, like so much stuff. All these pictures, photographs of the tablets. So you can see it. This ain't believing. You can see it for yourself. So those of us that are concerned with knowing these things, we can look at it, we can look at the translations that other people suggest, and then we can use our own reasoning to see if we agree with it. Because I'm saying, for the sake of being able to learn it, those of us that have access to certain books might use the books. Those of us that don't, we can use right knowledge, as you call it, you know, as Dr. Teo call it, correction, and see, well, you know, if that's what they're saying it means, does it seem, does it make sense when you compare and contrast evidence, experience, and reason? We can investigate these things for ourselves as a people because we should know this because this is our story. Whether we are gods directly or those created in the image and likeness of gods, either way, this is our story. So we'll know who our gods really are, who our ancestors really are. We can see these things. Because, again, I, I know I did mention Nana. I may, I may not finish the point. Um, the same thing we see. If you research mythology, you can see that Nana is a very prominent deity and he's very prominently involved with law. So you can see a cross-cultural correspondence. I like term, term, terminology sound cool sometimes. Cross, <laughs> I mean, cross-cultural correspondence. I, I, I like I, I like using that. I want to use that as a catchphrase. It's, well, it's cool. No, it's a catchphrase I use. Context is key. Is one catchphrase. That's another catchphrase. Because it's a cool teaching style. Because it, it just sounds cool, don't it? <laughs> Some other people use stuff like that. Um, and you can see, like, basically, not to say for sure that the God that Moses saw was Nana, but he very well may have been. Because it would make sense. Mount Sinai, Nana, Sin. And notice how that law was given to Moses at that time. So then we can say, you know, is that the same God or not? Even if people say it is, is it really or is it not? And, you know, just say, because it may be the Most High. You know, it may be the Most High himself who was just there at the time. Or maybe it was Nana. Maybe Nana is the one who is the God of, of Abraham in the first place. Maybe, who knows? It's, it's something to investigate. Because I'll say, as far as I know, the Dr. Yacht tells the story. Abraham was in the worship of the Most High God. And he was taught that by Melchizedek. So if the God that um, Moses met in Mount Sinai said he's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, then that would imply that that was the Most High. So maybe he did see the Most High face to face. And maybe the Most High was just there at the time. But then you can see the context of the situation. And actually, technically speaking, because it does say the angel of the Lord, it does actually say that when you look at it, at least the first time he met him. Because um, again, I was looking at this earlier today, because I was looking at the quotes. But like, it talks about this Horeb, and then people say, well, you know, Mount Horeb is the same thing. 
But just to mention again, like not to like could be confusing or nothing. It's just this information is out there basically. So those of us that say believe, those of us that want to know, we can research these things, investigate these things. And I'm saying that me personally, I kind of did this thing of like, I'm gonna try and figure everything out for myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then like uh, present everything. But like, I'm not saying it's not possible. I've, I've, I think I've made a bit, of, quite a bit of progress, a significant amount of progress. But realistically, this is something that can be done very, very quickly if a lot of people get on board. You know, very quickly, because I know from experience that time when I was at college and stuff, I'm not saying I'm necessarily the kind of person that would have gone there with my own accord, but, you know, because my mum pushed me to go to college, which is a good thing. It's a good experience to have, even if I don't personally believe in formal education, but it was still useful, you know, just mentioning that, because there's some things with families and parents and all this, there's some things that we might agree with and disagree with. I can say, you know, I acknowledge the positive things, even if there's negative things that I, that I, that I dislike, you know, that's responsible, you know, point to make responsibility, duty of care, appreciation and value. These are important things. If we make it a thing as a people to treat each other with appreciation and value all the time as a standard, as a, you want to talk about religion? Nah, if you're talking about Christianity, it's actually in there. Jesus, what's, what, what do I have to do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? I might have said this earlier. I'm just to say it again. You know, and he talks about, you know, the, the abide by the law and the commandments. And he said, what's the most important ones? And it's like, well, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your brother or neighbor as you love yourself. Now, again, depending on how we want to interpret it, some people say, we say, neighbor, the, the end of the day, I say, like, from my point of view, it's very easy to use that and interpret that in, in the sense of, as black people, let's love each other as we love ourselves. And first, let's, know, let's learn what it really means to love ourselves. Because we can look in tribes in Africa, because, you know, stereotypically, so many tribes in Africa, but I know because I've seen the documentary, I don't remember the name of the tribe. But it's the same thing when they're talking and like talking about their culture and things they're taught growing up, you know. First thing you teach a child to love themselves and then they learn, you know, then it's easy for them to have compassion and love for everybody else in the community. So we know this is our culture, it's the point I'm making. This ain't just something that some bunch of white people came along and taught us. It weren't nothing to do with them. This is our culture. If we say that, you know, we believe in the Bible that Adam and Eve was the people of everybody, so to speak then we should know that includes our own ancestors. What am I saying? That we should throw the Bible on the floor and stamp on it? <laughs> Not necessarily. I'm just saying we don't necessarily need to, to base our reality around this book in English by some King James Version authorized, whatever, whatever. You know, our ancestral knowledge is just as valid, realistically more valid. You know, talking about Brother Palak, because I know I've seen him do some of this stuff that's showing languages, and he's talking about um, Igbo, you know, um, so I think he identified his own heredity as being something seventy something seventy odd percent Igbo. I think it was. And say funny because you know, like I said, I, c I can look and see that there's um, Igbo in my heredity. I can see it and look at like family members and stuff, and other people like Jamaicans in general. You can see it, and you see a shanty, you see different certain looks, Congo uh, Congolese, which is realistically not the name of tribe. I don't know the name of tribe to be honest. Is it, is it Bantu? I don't, no, maybe not. I don't want to. I want to get the names wrong and seem like I'm being disrespectful. They, they ain't that idea. Because I, I, I value that. To me, that's valuable. I want to know these things. That to know how we can look at our people in different parts of the world and know who's who. Because those of us that say we we value the scriptures, whether we subscribe to the religion or not, I don't subscribe to religion, but I value the scripture. Just keeping it real. You know what I mean? Because I don't feel that religion is the thing for me. Because I'm a god. Gods don't need to live by religion. We li we live by right knowledge. You know, doesn't mean it's not right for somebody else. Doesn't mean I have to disagree with it as such. It's just one of them things. I make choices as opposed to say, well, going by religious doctrine. But still, just to make the point, though, it's valuable because if we say that, yeah, in the Quran it says that Allah made us into tribes that we may know each other, then we should know that. We should know who our tribes are. The reason I'm saying this is because there might be a lot of black people who call themselves Muslim and they ain't trying to know nothing about no tribes. And that's kind of contradictory because if you say that you... Your soul for the Quran and your soul for Allah. If Allah said He made us into tribes that we may know each other, then shouldn't we take the time to know the tribes? So what's the point of talking this stuff? When I say that we like semi believe it, we pseudo believe it, we kind of little bit believe it. Let's learn about uh, each other, because we know this. People talk this in catchphrases. It's important to know someone, to value someone, to know about someone's culture, to know about someone's history, to know about someone's language, to know about their cuisine, to know about their way of life, their music, everything. Are we going to be certain of us putting our children to school to be learning about English, uh, French, German, all this? Like, I ain't saying that necessarily we shouldn't learn it, but can't we learn about our own language? 
Can we learn about our own languages? Those will say we know this is this is a shanty. And chances are there might there might be like different variations as well when you're talking about one tribe's language. There might be like one tribe might have multiple languages. You know how black people are like even when we talk English in different places we talk English in a different way. And to be honest, that's one of the beauties of our of our character. We're expressive people, we're creative people. Okay? But this is the thing. Dr. York's like, look, the teacher's guide to the new Wabian language. You know, some people are saying, yeah, you know, the language has changed. Some people like calling themselves Wabians. I'm just saying because that's a whole other tangent, you know what I mean? There's certain people that subscribe to the information and they might be referred to as Wabians. I ain't trying to really go into it because that's a whole different tangent. There's certain people saying that, you know, the holy tablets are outdated. There's people that do this. Same way in religion, there's people that say they've got their own perspective in terms of the religion and they believe this version of it and that version of it. There's people doing things like that. I'm just saying, I've read the book, e-book, well, I not read it back front to back yet, you know. It's one of them things that certain people, yeah, you ain't read the Bible front to back yet, why not? It is what it is, isn't it? I ain't saying it's right, it just is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Sometimes there's more motivation to study when there's other people to study with. I'll say that, I know that to be a fact. You know, for me personally at least. Now, factually speaking now, when we're talking about the teacher's guide to the Nuwabian, the Nuwabian language, and you see Dr. Yotz explained it, the context, you're talking about this whole thing, the story of the Bible, about how everybody used to have the one language, and then, you know, with Nimrod, particularly with what Nimrod was doing, and then a particular god, I'm saying whoever precisely, that, whichever god that was precisely, you know, certain gods came down to confuse, or to so-called confound the tongue, as they put it, but then it's like we're saying, when well, the here and now, we have the language back. You know, in the here and now, we have the language back. Now, from my point of view, that's something worth at least looking at. Because if we're talking about having so many groups of people, so many different languages, it might be worth learning that language and seeing how that language relates to us and if it could be valuable. If we, maybe even all over the world, learn that language and then we can have, we can say we have a common language that we can all speak and, you know, communicate with each other, that could be valuable. You know, that could really be valuable. Since it's there, let's use it. You know, because certain time we be saying things, yeah, we should have a lang- of one language. For certain, some of us be saying stuff like this. You know what I mean? But the provision has been made. There's a teacher who's actually put that together. Some of us don't even know this teacher exists, because I didn't know until I knew. You know what I mean? I mean, the first time I heard of him, based on some of the people um, that say they subscribe to his information, like, I thought it seemed a bit strange the way some people talk about him, but then it's like, by the time I researched his information uh, for myself, then I can say, okay, yeah, yeah, he's cool. You know, and this is the importance of having direct points of reference. When somebody has direct points of reference, it's easier for people to get better perspectives. It's one of those things. Like, there are some people, for example, in real life, there are some people that call themselves atheists because they say they don't believe in Christianity. And that's their prerogative. But they say that based on somebody else's presentation of it. Not because they've read it, not because they've read any scripture themselves and they say, well, I don't agree with this. It's just they've seen what some people are doing, some, the way some people are representing information, and arguably, certain time, the way some people are negatively representing information or using information. And based on that, they, they, don't, want, they, don't, want, they don't want nothing to do with it. And, like, I mean, who, who would blame them? But then, because of something like that, somebody might be losing out from something they might actually benefit from knowing. It might actually, there might actually be something that they could gain from being familiarized with that information. It might be beneficial to them. And it's the thing, it should be balanced. We can talk about history, culture, religion, and then money. I didn't even really talk about money too much. Just, we can do that quickly. At the end of the day, we're all, we're all good at something. I mean, like you say, well, maybe some people are good at nothing. Maybe even the people that seem to be good at nothing are actually good at something so obscure that we just didn't know. Like, just, just try, if you want to be optimistic about things, there might be someone who's good at something that's so obscure they, w- they will never present with the opportunity to find out they're good at it. Like, seriously, you never know. Somebody might live in an uh, 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 environment, you know, especially when we've got, when certain time there's those of our people living in so-called ghettos or disenfranchised environments, and then, you know, there's sometimes there's negative family situations. It ain't necessary to play the blame game with anybody. The fact of the matter is sometimes there's just really bad situations that certain of our people find ourselves in because there's such a lack of information. Because some, not to play blame game again, but like sometimes certain other people, whoever it was, whether it was people of our own so-called kind or other people, certain time other people interfered with stuff and then uh, information was lost or removed. That's why some of these problems occur. So, that being the case, when someone can say, we know what, there's certain times, there's, there's those situations. If information was available, then it might be very easy to solve the problems or what people perceive to be problems. The situations might be correctable. And I say astronomy. 
you know, because that's the thing. I've I've done research and I've done talking to people and a certain amount of debates or argument. I mean, me personally, a certain amount of facetiness, you know what I mean? <laughs> like Facebook. Here's what, here's what it is, isn't it? So, like, me personally, just sometimes I, 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 I like, uh, I, did, did I need to mention it? Sometimes like, I like uh, pushing boundaries, so to speak, you could say. Like, that's, that's just, um, that's how I am. You know what I mean? I've always been that way. Like, from a child, like, a cert- naughty in a certain type of way. Like, you're not meant to do this and then doing it. <laughs> but, like, in, in a way that I, I would like to think it's not really, like, hurting nobody. You know what I mean? Just, like, being, like, you, could, you know what I mean? Taboo or controversial. You're not meant to talk about something like that and then talking about it. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> like, it, it is what it is, isn't it? But um, every everyone's got their own thing, in it, so to speak. Um, or, like, having having a, a certain type of sense of humor. You know what I mean? <laughs> Laughing at things that people might say, you shouldn't laugh at something like that. But, like, making a joke out of something that's kind of, like, not funny. But, you know what I mean? Like, if, if you don't know what I mean, then never mind. But, anyway, <laughs> just saying, like, controversial type of stuff. But, anyways, um, before I forget what I was talking about, which I'm kind of trying to remember what I was talking about. So I'm going to wrap it up soon, anyway. Oh, that's it. Sorry. Those of us that might be in, like, a so-called ghetto, and then it's like, look, it's like, end of the day, you might have, like, a youth, a child, so to speak, Say you, youth, you know different ways we express ourselves, isn't it? Or those from different backgrounds, so to you, you know. Anyway, there might be a child who is like some genius sculptor, you know. And a certain time, you know, those of us that you know, as not Brother Polite put it, and then Dr. Yot said it, and I think he quoted Dr. Yot saying it anyway. Just I like referencing a certain time, um, this thing about people meaning well but not knowing stuff. So a certain time we might have those of the, the parents. He was sending the children to school to study this and study that. Or, like, even, like I say, in my experience, this whole thing about studying Shakespeare, and I didn't want no, I had no, I had zero percent interest in Shakespeare. I didn't want none of that. You know what I mean? I guess parents, they mean well, but I'm like, really, this is the thing about it. me being me. You know what I mean? Me being me. If someone said, look, this is, this is a shanty poetry, then I would have been like, yeah, okay, I want to read that. What's Shakespeare what's got to do with me? You know what I mean? And that that's how that's how I am. That's how I've been. Like from when I was younger, I identify with like me and where I'm coming from. That's how I am. I'm naturally like that. Now we talk about astronomy, that might be like having the Sun, Mercury, Venus aligned with Leo. Because it might be a lion principle if you want to interpret it that way. Or it might be the, the Virgo, Clotho, Erda, the past, Erda, Clotho, they say is a deity, one of the deities of fate who spins the cord of destiny and says she makes traces, Erda, the past choices that's probably how you explain it when you use astronomy this that's how real this information is this is why i'm talking about it because i mean i, I just say just keeping it like just keeping it real the thing is me personally living <sighs> trying to figure out how to put it, living in this society and some of the challenges that can happen in society when it comes to like money and all this me personally money is n- not really a thing that i'm concerned with me personally i'm more concerned with like having the people and working together and having information, having skills. I'm more concerned with that. But then it's like, when when it's a thing of, like, feeling like, well, I'm by myself, and it's like, there ain't necessarily people, like, supporting me or such or any of that, then it's like me thinking, like, well, what do I do with this? Because I would rather just share this stuff freely, but then I'm like, do I want to share it freely or, like, try and sort of, like, monetize it to an extent so I can support myself? You know what I mean? It's like there's that type of thing. And arguably, this is a thing that ought to be addressed as far as we go as a people. Because there's some of us that are very money oriented, and there's some of us that are very not money oriented, and there's people in between. Like, provided we can work together, generally, those of us that are trying to work together in a positive way, not because you know, like I said, some some of us, some of our people are devils, so to speak, and their whole agenda is to disrupt the state of our family. That's just the facts. You know, we might not like that, but it's the truth. You know, and we have to be careful of that. So to do, well, not just be careful, but we should be aware. So if we have to be around people like that, ideally we should have a formula in how to so-called negotiate the situation to try and reduce the amount of damage or nullify the amount of damage people like that can do. Because it might be the case you might find people that have devilish aspects of their their character, but if you can focus them on doing certain things, it won't give that a chance to express itself. There's different there's different methods. There's different things. All this should be considered, so to speak. But before we can realistically consider these things, we ought to know these things. Because how are you going to consider them you don't know? You know what I mean? So it's the point I'm talking about. Because I know this stuff, and I'm like, look. Okay, at this point, I'm like, look, let's just let's just put this around. You know what I mean? Let's use this. If people are talking about, like, just keep it real. Like, now I have things are awesome. If people are talking about, like, people, like, say people want me to come and, like, 
make the solution for everybody else. I'm like, look, I'm, t- I'm telling you, this is where the information is at. If we if we kind of look at it together, we might be able to fix that and that. But don't like, don't actually try and push all the like, responsibility because I know how that is. Like, not being funny, but certain people seem to be like that. And even like I know from like being at college and stuff, and that when it's group work, and certain time that thing of like nobody wants to be leader, and I know how that goes because if 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 it's like whoever's the leader, then it's like an opportunity for other people to blame them. So I'm like, I ain't necessarily trying to, you know what I mean? I mean, if somebody has to be some type of leader, then if it has to be done, I'll, my thing is like. I'll make I'll I'll do what I can do to make sure that I can do it, so that it gets done properly. Just that I ain't necessarily volunteering for the responsibility and all that, because like me being me, I ain't trying to create responsibility that I ain't trying to deal with. You know what I mean? Not being funny, but even people talking about parenting and all that. If I know that, like I want to have children, I want to have lots of children. You know what I mean? Well, I guess within reason. Like I do, I want to have a, a, a fair amount of wives. <laughs> you know, just keep it real. Like just you know, every, every, everybody has their dream, so to speak. I like to have like maybe. Maybe ten wives, maybe nine wives, and like maybe twenty six children. You know what I mean? Like that that would be calm because I think about things in reason. Like, how many wives can I realistically have a relationship with, and then like adequately cater to them? Not just in that way you might think when I say okay, but that too, because nature, you know, it's nature. You want to talk about the scriptures? The fact is, the scripture does tell you that men and women are meant to interact in a certain way, and men are meant to perform their duties of marriage. It does tell you that in the scripture. Like, I don't know where people be getting this other information from. Now you're gonna talk like in the day Jesus had two wives. Like you think, you think you think Jesus wasn't performing marriage duties, whether you, however you interpret that statement. Like of course he was. People talk about Jesus had children. Yeah. Prob- well, I say like, do I know personally? It makes sense that he would have children. So why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he have children? Do you know what I mean? One of them things. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. If you didn't know, now you know. You can research and you see stuff about it. It's about Knights Templar and all these things. Um, but that being said. Like, what, what, what was I going with this? I think the point being, anyway, responsibility, I was just mentioning, um, yeah, I kind of went a little bit of tangent, just mentioning the thing about responsibility, that from my point of view, with something like that, I see the blessing of having a family, to me, is valuable. To some people, based on their perspective of reality and based on their nature, let's say, their designated skills, you know, they might see responsibilities of parenting as, you know, as a distraction to the things they want to do. And I can see that some people are like that because they express it outright. You know what I mean? And It's like they're not necessarily wrong per se. That's who they are. I might disagree with it, but that's who they are. You know what I mean? That's who they are. That's who they are. Then we talk about solutions. There are certain people that are very nurturing and maternal as women and then paternal as men. There's men and women that will be really good. You know, a lot of people talk about youth workers, for example. If we're talking about in the community, certain time there's people who have children and don't necessarily want to have children, but they have the child, but they don't necessarily want to be dealing with that, if you see what I'm saying, then one solution that we could put into place would be to say, if we get the people that are good with children, they can be the parents of the children. We can have a community, like the same way people have a foster home. We don't need to go to no white people for them to talk about foster care and all this. But at the same time, if we're talking about an extent where finance is an issue, I saw this from so much years ago. And I ain't saying like it's some big serious. It's not a secret. The fact is, there's, there's provisions there's provisions for foster carers financially, you know. So people like it's an option, and people talking about certain time where we feel that as black people, there's issues with employment. That's one thing we could do. Some of us are making that there's a problem. It could turn the problem into a solution because that would be one way of using finance. Because this is what we could do. Those of us that have children don't want the responsibility of children, and those of us that do want the responsibility of children and would be happy to look after the children, raise them, and treat them with care you know, and nurture them into being confident people because we need that. That's important. We need that. The children need that because I know what it's like to not necessarily have that and it's not nice, you know, just to mention that. But the fact is, if we can give the children the best start, you know, not to say inclusion, but we can give the children the best start in life, who knows what they might be able to achieve? Because that's the thing, like, from, from being a so-called child, teenager, whatever, and then now as an adult, Depending, different people have different opinions of age of 27, adult. It's like, really and truly, I can see that I know things, you know, but arguably there could be, there could be children, there could be children, like, there could be 14, there could be children way younger, there could be, like, youngers who might have way more solutions than I have, or that I perceive that I have, who knows? You understand me? There might be a child, if they were given the resources, they were given at least the information, they might solve everything. People talk about solving the problems of the world. There might be a child who could just do this, one child that would just solve everything. You never know. You know, so once once we know 
once we know who and what we are in terms of, you know, the context of God, being an image and likeness of God, being some of us are of God's family or so-called race, to, to use that word, you know, once we know this, then we know our responsibility and our duty to make things better because there's problems in the world, you know, not everybody can necessarily fix them. Not everybody knows how to fix them. Re reality. And some people might know, arguably the same people that are trying to make them be there, and they obviously ain't going to fix them. Do you know what I mean? If there's, someone, if there's people trying to make there be problems, realistically, they're probably not going to fix them. And even if they so-called fix them, it's always with an agenda. So we need to have a genuine, a sincere, so to speak, agenda to make the world a better place. Because this is what was there in the first place. And people talk about the family of God. That was, that was part of the whole point of them, isn't it? Because the gods keep things in order. At least in theory, at least sometimes the gods have issues too. So we can say this time around, those of us that identify or know that we're actually the gods, like the gods, the gods, then we can say this time, what do we do to try and prevent some of the things that went wrong last time? Those of us that perceive ourselves to be mortals, those of us that perceive ourselves, uh, sorry, perceive ourselves to be gods, what do we do this time to create order and to maintain it? What do we do this time? You know, these are, these are things to consider. Yeah, there's simple... Um, the simple solutions, the simple options, you know, the simple solutions and the simple options. Don't, don't mind the noise, it's just someone's just walking their dog and the dog kind of like, maybe the dog's like, what's this, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? Maybe the dog's like, it sounds interesting, I don't know. But then you're just like calling the dog back. But, um, because it's kind of noise, isn't it? But basically, um, if I forget what I was saying, yeah, solutions. So again, like I said, when people talk about finance, sometimes it's thinking outside the box, as people call it. It's different options, isn't it? I think it would be wise, you know, I think it would be wise. I thought of this years ago. I think it would be wise if, as a people, like we really, so to speak, whether those of us in Britain, those of us in America, if we really looked at things like foster care, because when it's actually a career, you know, sometimes people don't even need qualifications to do it. That's the funniest thing about it. Like, come on now. We know in the community there's there's family issues. We know that exists so-called community. It might be wise to put something into place. And obviously, we use astronomy. We use it. Don't just maybe. No, we use it so we identify for sure, for sure, those people who are adequate to do that. Because you don't want no creepy, crazy people, uh, you know what I mean, with the children. Cause you, you know what I mean? Because none of that craziness. We need to know that it's people that can be trusted. You know, that will treat the children right and look after them and give them the adequate care and, you know, nurturing and discipline too. You know what I mean? Because not people necessarily let children do whatever they want. That has to be balanced. There has to be someone who can say, you know, this is the right thing to do. And when they're doing the wrong thing, look, don't do that. But within reason, without, like, being crazy. You know what I mean? Because some people take discipline too far, like, shouting the children, like, psychologically destroying them. Like, not, none of that craziness. You know what I mean? And not people that, like, give children whatever they want to the point where they become spoiled. Not that balance. You know, and then we can say, look, this in itself is, this is, not, I guess if you want to call it that, it's an industry. If you want to call it that, you know, if you want to call it that, but to me, it's not like, that sounds a bit weird when you're talking about people in Georgia, that sounds that sounds weird to me. In this industry is like making computers and like writing books maybe and like, you know, knitting carpets and, you know what I mean, making clothes, that's industry. But when we're talking about careers, when we're talking about the ability to sustain ourselves in a money-driven society, we have options. You know, because the fact is, some some of us have done this, and to me, I ain't saying it's wrong. To me, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Like some people go and have like children, knowing that in the, in society there's provisions that's made to finance people who have children to support, you know, the family. It is what it is. Some people some people say allegedly it's wrong. I mean, it is what it is. If, if you're in a society where there's a provision like that, why not utilize it? You don't have to sit on it. You don't have to. Do, you know what I mean live off of it? You can still work to develop something. It's like if, some, if somebody. Whether you perceive their intents are good or evil, if somebody is making a provision and they're providing you with a safety net in your situation, then why not utilize that? If it's one, if it's a better option than nothing, why not utilize that? Some of us have done that as so-called black people. There's other people that we talk about. Yeah, those people, and they just sit on benefits. Because some of us talk this talk, you know what I mean? And, like, you know, maybe me, sometimes I participate in the things that other people say. You know what I mean? But then it's the thing. In real life, it's, e it's easy being a child and saying, yeah, you know, why do, why do people do that? Like, why, why would you live up in it? But it's like, I can say that at the end of the day, when you actually, I can say my experience, I've heard people talk about where it's like in the workplace, and then once I've actually been in the workplace and I see how things stay, like, you've been talking about equality and equal rights and plural, and then you see all, like, crazy racism, and then it's like, try and get, 
Like me being me, collect, collect all this evidence. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to expose all of this. You know what I mean? Right, right or not, standing in the workplace, doing my work, take up my notepad, stand there. Because me being me, like brazen with it, so-called bareface with it, me being me, stand there with the notepad I'm writing, and this happened at this time in this part of the workplace. And I can see there's cameras in the workplace, and all can't act like it's not possible for them to see it. Me being me, because it's like someone's trying to like provoke me, going with racism and all this, like whatever kind of negative stuff. Right? Like, you know what I mean? If they think I'm fearing that, then they they clearly trying to confuse me with somebody else. And like, that, that's just stupidness to me. It's just like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, I know, I know, like, end of the day, if it came, if it came down to laying hands, if you see what I'm saying, like, end of the day, it's not all about where you grew up, but the fact is, I did grow up in, you know, Tottenham N17. The fact is, is it ain't, ain't no prissy area. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no prissy area, but that's really besides the point, because I guess if I grew up anywhere, I would still be me. So that's not really, besi- that's not really the point. But the point is, I don't really fear people like that. People talk about certain postcodes. It's like, I go anywhere I want to go. People say it's night time, it's dangerous. I go anywhere I want to go, any time of the night or day. Like, what's the point of worrying about things like that? What's there to achieve? At like, the end of the day, this is the thing about it. Like, this, this is always been the thing for me. Like I said, that faith. I have faith in my heavenly father. I have faith in my career. Why would I be fearing people? Fear people for what? You know what I mean? What's, what's people going to do? If I have faith in my God, my God's the most high God, why would I be worrying about things like that? Just context. So, to me, it's like that, that should be applied. I'm not trying to necessarily judge or blame other people, but it's like even religious people. If you perceive that you're like religious and you have faith, then surely you wouldn't really be too affected by things like that. But then again, context. You know what I mean? I ain't necessarily trying to be funny or nothing, because different people are different. You know? But the point I'm making is because it's context. Once I've been there and I take notes, and then to the end of it, once I get to a point where I'm like, you know what? Man ain't trying to part with this, you know? You know what I mean? Like, I can go somewhere, I can work somewhere else, innit? Or at least address the concern. And when, it, when the so-called issue or concern is being addressed, it's like, don't know what you're talking about. It's just like, what do you mean? And I present all this evidence, don't know what you're talking about. I don't see no evidence of that. No, 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 no. And, like, you know, again, the circle's more subtle. There's certain people that did. Not to say necessarily that everybody's racist. Not every, it don't seem to be everybody. But this is the thing. When you got, like, it, invigilators or whatever you want to call them, people that's meant to be decision makers that look into complaints, and they're racist, then it's like, you ain't going to achieve... <laughs> This is the thing about it. You ain't going to achieve nothing complaining to them. And that's the thing about society. Realistically, for us as black people, this is another thing. This is a really good thing to address. All this. And funny enough, Dr. Yacht's talked about this as well. Because I know I've seen it in a certain, certain book, at least one book, and then people saying that, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're us petitioning and rallying, achieve anything. He's like, no. You know what I mean? It's like reality. Because the fact of the matter is, how are you going to be petitioning against people that are unjust for them to stop being unjust? Like, how's that going to work? That like, doesn't make any sense, really. The best thing to do, realistically, if something, if something don't suit you, change it. And the most practical and sensible way of changing it, because some people be talking crazy and drama, it's like, you know, time and a place and place and a time. You might, you might want to save the drama for the acting screen, for TV, for pantomime, for, you know, Dragon Ball. I ain't trying to advertise for DBZ, you know what I'm talking about, anime and stuff. You know what I mean? You might want to save the drama for that. Because the fact of the matter is, if there's something that don't suit you, how about you just make your own setting and make that suit you? Don't need to be on... Because, you know, some people some people instantly resort to agginess, as, we, as some of us would call it. Aggression. Just to mention, actually, we're talking about um, astronomy. A good thing to compare with astronomy is uh, etymology. Because you look at words like ag and you start looking at languages. You talk about Proto-Indo-European. Because in the context of the society, so to speak, there's a lot of information available on the internet about Indo-European, this, that, and the third. If people don't know, you talk about in, uh, European, there's a thing when you go to the roots of European, they call it Indo-European. And that kind of seems to drop a hint about it being Indian, like Indo, India, Indo-European. You know what I mean? Because so, some of us don't seem to know this, that like white people, Indian people are family. You know, some of us don't seem to know that. You know, that's the thing. You know, people talk about the devil. Dr. Yacht's addressed this, you know, there's an element of that. There's an element of that. When you're talking about the devil being a person and the Nephilim, you know, there's an element of that. Not to not to just generalize and say, oh, white people are somehow, somehow bad or something. Not necessarily. However, it might be the case that you find a lot of those so-called white people are actually uh, what you could classify as jinn in terms of their racial origin. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're all bad people as such, because in any type of life form, there is relatively good and relatively bad. It's just that you might identify there's a certain spiritual nature about them, and it depends on how they apply that. They might You might see that there's some people that naturally have a, a conflict-orientated kind of way of life. Just saying, because to put the information responsibly and sensibly, because then you get context. 
like even if you talk about Ninjigo for 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 context, you know, if you look at Dr. Yo's work, like it was in the Black Book about um, Ninjigo being the son of Inki and Rishkiga, and then you see like Inki being the son of Anu and Id, and Id's a draconian. Anu is obviously Aluhum of the God race. And then some people polarize things and say, you know, the you get your spirit. I think I think this is something Dr. Yo I think. So you get your spirit from your father and your body from your mother, like that kind of thing. And again, you get the principle like gender roles, men, spiritual orientation, women, physical orientation, material things, women, you know, spiritual things, men, as people call it, spiritual. And what's spiritual? You're talking about energy. So again, uh, there's different things we can look at. I think I might have mentioned it. Did I, did I mention this recording about the carrots? You know, some people saying carrots ain't natural. I ain't saying that carrots are not not natural, it's just that I can see that carrots can be useful as a source of vitamin A from my personal experience. Now, people are going to say, well, they don't need the natural. It's like, what is natural, like, really and truly? I've read something, talking about the ETCSL, uh, I read something about how Anu brought, I think it was, I think it was wheat and flax, I think it was wheat and flax. Because they talk about spelt, or maybe it's, I don't, I don't want to confuse it, because spelt, I, I just, just to mention, like, I drank some spelt one time, and it was so nice. That's the first time I've ever said, like, when I went to a shop and there was this spelt drink, and it was so good. Um, to mention is, the foods we eat can be very powerful spiritually. I'm, gra- I'm glad that came up, so I've kind of forgotten about it. But I remember this really amazingly good feeling that I had from drinking that. These are things to address. Some of us talk about culture and heredity and the things we should be eating, but there's also the astronomical element. We might find that some of us might have an alignment with an asteroid, it just happens to be named after a type of food or plant, and that might have a very positive influence in terms of our alignment. So we might want to incorporate things like that into our diet. This is a whole other degree of information. A lot of people are talking a lot of things, and not to say that other people's, the things other people are saying ain't valid, but this is a whole other dimension of information. So like, when I mention the thing to be God, I ain't, say, I ain't saying it to be like some funny guy talking about I'm God. It's just that that should probably explain, because people might wonder, like, where are you getting all this from? Uh, I've been the Most High has given me this. So you say if you talk about revelation, well, this is my revelation, so to speak, that was given to me by the Most High that I'm sharing. It's the the Most High's information. It's the truth. All, all the truth belongs to Him. This is all His creation. You know, He created it. If He tells, if He makes me aware of some science as to how He created things, it's still His creation. But I can say you could use the term "my" in so much that it's it might be me telling you. You know what I'm saying? It might be me telling you, but it's the most highest revelation because he's the one who revealed it to me. And I'm just, like, basically telling you. You know what I mean? But these are things that address. This is a whole other dimension of information. You know what I mean? So it seems to be the case. And people have been talking about deities the whole time there was a science to explain how it actually works. We just, people might not have known because they might not have had the equipment to look at asteroids and stuff in the sky and calculate all this stuff. But now this is available. However we feel about the politics of different groups of people and how they interacted and this, that, and third, the fact is there, there was evil and there's also a form of good that's also been involved. We could say that there's a good element or there's, we can make good out of it. Let's call it that, okay? Because I can see that's something that like, was kind of shown to me a long time ago. We're talking about like this whole thing of different groups of people being moved around, you know, but one of the good things that seems to come out of it, the same way we were one family and we parted ways for whatever reason, then because of something that was bad, but we were reunited. And I've noticed this. You look at I have seen it. It's like, it might be just a coincidence, but there's some of us looking at some of us that are here, like I can say around me in Britain, not only here, but looking at some of us, it's like we seem to resemble very strongly some of the ancestors, talk about the ancient, ancient ones, whatever you want to call it. You know, we resemble them very strongly. I mean, at the time, I kind of thought that was because of us mixing back together. That might just be astronomy anyway. You know what I mean? But just, yeah, you know I mean, the point is, you can look at things in a positive way or a negative way. Astronomy is important to address. Um, I think the subject I was mentioning about Ningijid, I think I'll finish that. Because uh, I feel like wrapping this up now. Um, but basically, this thing, yeah, with the through, through Inki, the Aluhum and Draconian element, and then through Rishkigal, um, the Aluhum, because again, Rishkigal being the, the daughter of Nana Sin, and. Um, Another deity, because I, I was reading this recently, looking at the whole episode, I've seen it before, I was kind of like looking at it again and like investigating it a bit more, because obviously it's relevant for me to know this in the context of who I am spiritually, whether you, you want to look at it, like maybe my parents are also like incarnate, without going into, without overcomplicating things or any, any of that, but um, I think there's two dimensions to things in that type of way though, because then you have people that incarnate 
a lot of the time the parents are usually selected. That does seem to be the case. Like obviously like with Mary and Jesus. But anyways, um with Rishki Ghana, her mother being according to the holy tablets, Nin Nashama El and then Nashama Nin Nashama being from a species of what's called the I think Dr. Tito said the rat Shasha or something like that in the Holy Tablets. But then looking up on Google now, like for what I saw on like there's a Wikipedia article. Like Wikipedia has points of reference. It can be useful. Not necessarily to believe everything it says, but it's a point of reference we don't know. You need to start looking at the citations. But this thing of them being a type of um I think it specified them as Hindu demons, you know. Or maybe Dr. Yacht referred to it that way, but whichever way, a certain type of supernatural being that's mentioned in Hinduism, but it seemed to be the case, like, they could be called demons in so much that they're like warrior-type, dangerous, destructive creatures, but I think some of them were of a more positive nature, I think. So then you get perspective. So then someone like Mina, you say, well, okay, spiritually being Ningijida, and then you see the function of Ningijida, the characteristics of Ningijida, and how he's described in the stories, and you can see, yeah, because there's a good, positive nature about him, and there's also a destructive nature, but then it's like it balances itself out. Because where there's the good inclination and the destructive characteristics, then you get a balanced creature, as opposed to someone that's good without necessarily the strength to do anything with the good. Not being funny, but it is what it is, because that's the great thing about it. And I say, looking at things like that, it's like, yeah, the Most High does know best. Because you see how things are like looking in the family of gods, there's different gods of life. Based on something that we know, and there is the research authority. I mean, I intend to, but like, we're talking about the Nertus, the champion who defeated Tarnush, like, on the planet. Because then there's the incident with Muraduk being sent to attack him, but then the in- incident of Tarnush um, stealing the tablets of destiny from Endor. If this sounds out, what, what are you talking about? It's just something to mention, you can investigate it to see the contents of the story. Uh, Tarnush stealing the tablets of destiny from Endor. And then, like, it was an issue for the gods, because it's like, it seems to be the case that the tablets of destiny are important to them. Let's just put it that way. And uh, Tarnush having them was kind of like, seemed to have given him access to certain power that he didn't have before and he shouldn't really have had. And this is the point, talking about information, the thing about being careful about who information is presented to. I think stuff like this, to me, it makes sense to talk about astronomy because at the end of the day, like some of us, some of us, I can say, like, based on some things that people say, some of us seem to perceive that, yeah, you know, them people, like, don't tell them stuff. So at the end of the day, it's like, if you're talking about things in that context, they clearly already know if they're putting that information. So it's like, what is it? You know what I mean? It's like, objectively speaking, when it comes to things like that, information is just out there, it's just out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, I'm just saying, not to be, like, I know, funny stuff, just depending on how people want to look at it. I say, like, when it comes to this information, let's investigate, but let's be wise uh, how we present it and stuff, because there are some people that might try and abuse it. You know what I mean? It's just, but it is what it is. Like, we need to know anyway. Um, realistically, or it's useful for us to know. Um, that can be debated, but anyways, um, folks, to finish the point, talking about Nino, and then, like, him having, like, seemingly, like, a mixed nature. Um, so I'm going to say, like, the thing is, because I met someone on Facebook who said that they're the incarnation of Nino, and I just say, like, I don't know them personally. Not even saying they're not, I just, I don't know them. It's one of them things. But, I mean, I know it is to be the incarnation of something. Like, fair enough. To me, it's kind of strange, but it is what it is, isn't it? Like, it's a bit... Like, I know, but it's kind of... Sometimes it's a bit, like... It's hard to describe, really. And then, like, obviously, with Dr. York and Muddha, so it's, like, it is what it is. And I think he was explaining some stuff to me about the contents of Nanur, but again, I think me mentioning that, I don't know the full story of it anyway, but like him being the son of uh, in-law and Ninti, but apparently it seems to be the case that Ninti is actually seemingly um, of a mixed heritage as well, but I don't know the full story about that. But I do know in the Sumerian li- uh, literature, she is identified as like having like a warrior type personality. And she seems very similar actually to how Oya is described in, like, Oya is one of the Orisha, I think, with the Yoruba tradition. So, again, things like this are good because it's like, if you can look at it and you can see the cultural, the cross-cultural comparison, the connection, then it's good because, like, for those of us that have different tradition, different heritage and stuff like that, if we can all see something that we can connect with, then it can, arguably, it could help for us to all relate to the information and use the information and recognize that it ain't like some alien information. It's still all, it's like it's all the same information, arguably. We're just maybe finding the origin of the stories that we have in different cultures. We're not we're not throwing anything away. We're putting it all back together. The same thing even when we talk about Christianity, because sometimes it seems to be one of the issues where sometimes it's like there seems to be a conflict between culture 
and religion. This even like where there's, a, there's this imaginary conflict between religion and science. There don't need to be a conflict because if you study the religion properly, you'll see that. I ain't saying that to talk down on it because <laughs> it's kind of sound that way, but yeah, they mean that way. But um, if you study the religion properly, you'll see that it does match up with science. And I say the best science, really, arguably, is this astronomy stuff. Because there's no arguing with this. This is all facts. Anyone can look at it and see it. Um, again, anybody want to look at astrology, useful points of reference, NASA's JPL Horizon System, um, the International Astro Astronomical Union, the IAU, and there's a program called Stellarium, S-T-E-L-L-A-R-I-U-M. I recommend version 0.13.1. And that's like a that's basically like a, a computer program that you can use and it simulates the sky. So you can use different locations to simulate the location, uh, what the sky would look like from that point on the planet. I mean, and you know you can put in different time, different dates, you know, and it can show you a certain amount of stuff because it's like you know gen they don't have all the asteroids in it, you know. And I noticed that you can, you can actually add asteroids into it, but it seems a bit it seems a bit uh a bit iffy, so to speak. So I just say that. So it's like you might, you might, for the sake of case study, you might want to combine using that for visual representation. So you want to look at things like the ascendant, the constellation rising on the eastern horizon. And I mean, I did do a blog post about this because I was telling someone, and then um, they were kind of like, yeah, this sounds a bit like fire. And it's like, I'm glad that I had that conversation because it's kind of like sometimes I think I tell people stuff and it's a bit like sometimes because I know it, I just kind of talk, but then it's like, yeah, if someone else don't know it, then it might not make sense to them. So it's, it's good when that happens. And it's just like, yeah, let me, let me try and present this in a way that's actually going to make sense to people. Um, but, yeah, like, to be honest, that's not, that may or may not be my strong point. Like, I'm good at doing what I do. I'll put it that way. Cause, like, you look at someone like Dr. York, he's good at doing that. Clearly, he's good at doing it. He can talk to different people that have different religious perceptions and sort of, like, present the information in a way that they can relate to. But then, of course, because he's the angel Michael, Muruduk, the messenger, some people might say the messenger of heaven and hell, depending on whose perspective you're talking about, but that's one of his functions. We talk about the angel Michael. He does stuff, you know, he goes, and knew, the heavenly father, I knew, would send him to, like, you know, go and talk to people, do certain things. Like, he's designed to do that, because the heavenly father obviously knows best. He designs people according to their purpose. This is the point of talking about astronomy. No one needs to feel like, oh, we shouldn't know astronomy because of the Bible. The Bible tells you that. God put the stars in the sky for the telling of times. It does say that in there. So we don't need to get all parallel or, or get weird about it. It's in the, the Bible tells you that's what it's there for. You know? Some people are going to say that allegedly, well, some other God said, don't do this and don't do that. Don't observe times. Then I say, well, you know, end of the day, common sense to me is if you say in the start of the book that the God who created everything said that that's what it's there for, then it makes more sense for me to go with that than some other God who seems to be conjured, because that might not be the same God. You know what I mean? So if somebody made a pact with a God that's telling them not to do things that the Creator told them they could do, then, you know, two and two is four, isn't it? Maybe that's a God that wants to, like, subdue and control people by reducing their access to their own information for them to think for themselves. And if that's the case, it would seem reasonable to me to say that peculiar God might not be of the best intentions. You know, not just not to slander, just talk reality. You know, depends on how you interpret things. Sometimes... It's also, when you look at the translation, that's also part of the thing, because sometimes things clearly are mistranslated. You know, so I say the strongest concordance, point of reference, blueletterbible.org, the strongest concordance is there. When you click the reference numbers, you'll see what comes up with it. You see the strongest definition. Not to say you should just believe everything the strongest definition says, because then another thing is to then interpret the letters, and Brother Platt talked about this with... Um, the, the the meanings of the different letters and I did some research, there's stuff online about it and it's something, again, this is why I talk about this stuff because ideally, if people if people say sincerely to me, like, you know, I, I want to learn this too, then let's make a group and learn this stuff together because if we have like 10 people doing this, we could do a lot of work in a short period of time, just 10 knowing how we are as a people like, not being funny enough, and we see that like, some of us manage to get up to all kinds of stuff when we have a group of people around us, some of those things are good, some of those things are not quite so good you know what I mean? So if, if we if we make groups to do stuff like this and study, then we could do a lot. You know, we could do a lot. I know for a fact, because I know, because experience, like, like I said, being in college and stuff, whatever. And just even being friends in a group, like, it's one of them things. There's a power in that. Those of us that talk about things like the Shekinah and these type of things, if we say if we say we believe in this religious doctrine, then we should know how important it is. Togetherness is really important because we have the power of God when we're together, the most high when we're together. That's really, that's really important. You know, so so let's use this. Let's put the stuff we say into action. 
as long as we know that our intentions are good, you know, those of us that, you know, as long as we know what our intentions are to do that which is right, you know, or that which we perceive to be right um, by what the Heavenly Father would expect of us for the sake of, like, justice and equity, and again, like, from my point of view, so to speak, not, not to be facetious, say, from my point of view, but, like, to do right by each other first and foremost, you know, first and foremost, to love each other, do right by each other first and foremost, and then we can think about how we want to interact with other racist people and all that, because the fact is, if we can put ourselves in order, whether we call ourselves gods, literally, or those in the image and likeness of God, even though the two are quite similar, slightly different but quite similar, if we can get ourselves in order and perfect ourselves and purify ourselves and make paradise heaven on earth for ourselves, it should be very easy to set that example for other races to follow. Because we already see that people love copying what we do. We talk about this all the time. Well, not all the time, but a lot of the time. It's like, yeah, people copy the way we dress. They do this, they do that. That's because we're God. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why they do that. If we didn't know, well, we know now. It's because we're God. They can't help it. That's the natural order. We're God. Of course people are going to copy us. We just didn't know. A lot of us just didn't know. And being the kind of people we are, I guess, make, call, call it the humility, the humble spirit that we get from the Heavenly Father himself. Because, you know, because Dr. Yo talks about this, like, sometimes when you look at the word Anu, it might be interpreted as humble or afflicted. I think it was the title Anu. And it's like that type of thing. Sometimes that's the thing I've noticed with some of our people. Like, you might mention some of this stuff, and they're like, oh, no, no, it's not that, no. No, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just. Like, some of us are that, like, we're that humble. Like, we really think, like, me? No, 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 no. Like, no, that's exactly who we are. You know? doesn't mean we need to be, like, ridiculously egotistical with one eye. You know, because the thing is, a different negative type of so-called God, they're like that. You know, don't need to name the person. You know, you know that, that, that creature, you know, so... If we say we want to combat the evil one, as people might call him, then we need to play our position, work together as a team, and we can easily do it. We can put a stop to evil. You know, if we want to be that philosophical about it, you know, it can be done. But the most, one of the most important things is information. <laughs> Excuse me. One of the most important things is information. And that was on the place. Excuse me. That was one of the points. Because it's funny, it was this strong breeze of wind and then like that, you know, removing the not so desirable substances from the body like people talk about. I don't need to name it, you know, like that stuff some that accumulates in the sinus. People that do have health and they talk about, you know, uh, it's the stagnation in the body that leads to disease and all this or unhealthy situation. Whatever you want to call it. That's besides the point. But that's something to address as well. You know, that is something to address. Because if we look at etymology and look at the word phlegm, uh, it seems to actually correspond to fire, I think, in Greek. So there's information, there's interpretations. But anyway, I think so. But anyways, that, be, that being slightly besides the point, one of the things that I was uh, wanted to mention, because I've mentioned quite a few things, isn't it? Like Nana, Nana, Sin, the law. Oh, yeah, let's talk about Ernamu briefly. This amazing great king called Ernamu. Look, like, you might want to look him up. He's accredited, I think he's accredited as writing the first laws ever in recorded history, in recorded history, some people say he's been around for millions of years, that ain't saying we haven't, just in recorded history, you know, he's a black man, come on now, some people argue, no, he's a black man, clearly, okay, so, people talk about positive black male role models, we do have positive black male role models, you know, we have them from thousands of years ago, and that's just as useful as one in the here and now, in the household, that's just as usable, that's just as useful, because some of us can listen to rap music. I know because I've done that when I was younger and I didn't know about a lot of this stuff back then. You know, we might listen to rap music, look at some of these rappers, and then, you know, whether we consciously do it or not, even subconsciously, they're a role model. We don't, need, we don't need to have that issue because we've got people we can talk about in history. We can read about the Sumerians and how they praised their great king and how he eliminated wickedness in the land with his strong laws and his strong kingship. You know, and this is a thing to address, actually. And then it talks about um, when he died, because he fell in battle with the so-called enemy, as this word. As they were translated, to use that word. And me personally, I say, don't. Me personally, it's like not to call people enemy, because that implies that they're equal. I say, well, no, it's adversaries. Because if I'm going to talk with my mouth, I empower myself. I'm a child of the Most High. You know, as long as I'm striving to be right with the Most High, you know, However we define that, some might say, well, right means this specific set of laws, you know, and from my point of view, right means being in accordance with your spiritual nature and your purpose, you know. 
similar enough might be slightly different in some situations, okay? Just to mention, I ain't telling people that it's okay to do bad things. Just to mention, in the Bible, you will see that there's this part in there where it talks about God uh, saying he'll send a lying spirit to deceive a particular king so that king would think that it's safe to go to war with some other whoever it was and get himself killed. That's in the Bible. Not to say that lying is good or nothing, but the fact is, if the Heavenly Father has given you a purpose or designated you to do something that seems evil, if that's what he's telling you to do, the Heavenly Father knows best. And this is one of the things, this is one of the dangers about religion when it's taken, when it's interpreted out of context. And I ain't saying that to make an excuse to do evil, it's just that there's a context to all of that. You know, sometimes to do good, sometimes to hug someone, let's say, might be evil if they're doing the wrong thing and you're encouraging them emotionally. To feed someone if they're doing the wrong thing, when you might want to withhold food from them, depending on, you know what I mean? This is this is reality. You know, the, in certain situations, I'm just saying, in certain situations, within con, within reason and within context, not not out of context. You know, just to make that point. But what was I talking about? Um, to get to the point of what I was going to say anyway, like whatever I was talking about, because <laughs> that happens. I want to wrap this up now because it's kind of like this is being really good. I want to wrap it up now. Um, this thing we were talking about tarnush. This this is in the story. Dr. Yot tells the story. You know, the story is also in the the cuneiform. I mean, realistically, it depends on people where people want to interpret that Dr. Yot made his own translations of the cuneiform, or he's just telling the the, the story from spiritual knowledge because it does exist. Some people don't seem to know this. There's a thing called Zen Buddhism. You see that there's monks in Tibet. Well, at least they were in Tibet at the time, whether they've moved now, whatever. And they talk about this like it's a thing that exists in their culture where they meditate. They People say prayer, but prayer and meditation. They meditate and they connect with the universal mind or universal consciousness and they obtain learning and wisdom through doing it. So, like, some people... Because this is the thing. Some people don't seem to, like, read or research. I've been researching before I, like, was really reading Dr. Hill's books like that. That's why some things didn't sound new to me because I was like... Some things, like, at the end of the day, I grew up in, in, in a household with reasoning. My mother taught reasoning. My sister taught reasoning. I taught reasoning. Like, I've grown up in that situation. And certain times, like, that's in the family. Like, I'm not saying everybody in Jamaica, but a lot of people in Jamaica seem to be like that. I'm not saying, like, really and truly, from my point of view, it's something that, as black people in general, it's something that we do. We reason. Even some of us that are materialistic reason to a certain extent. I've noticed that. You know what I mean? I've noticed that there's something about us. It's not necessarily everybody who does that. We do that. Just if we want to keep reiterating the point that we're children of the Most High, arguably that's why we're like that. That's the spirit of wisdom that we get from our Heavenly Father in us, even those of us that are so-called disagreeable. We have an element of it. It's important to be aware of that. It's very important. You know, just to mention something, I noticed something when you're talking about astronomy, like certain uh, asteroids. I noticed that there's one called Zenobia, and they say that, well, there's, mis there's some misinformation about astronomy, just to mention, but when I looked up, it seemed to be saying, actually, what it would mean is to say, Zenobia is saying the, the might or the Bia, which might be interpreted as might or force, and Zeno was to say of Zeus, like the force of Zeus. So then when we look at Zeus and see that, like, you can look in the, the Holy Tablets and see the depiction of Inlo, and you can look at the statue of Zeus, and if you look at the face closely, you can see the two faces look very similar. You know what I mean? So then we say, well, you know, maybe this is what he's talking about. Because he's talking about Inlo, because uh, I know certain times in the books, Dr. Yop might associate Zeus as in um, Anu. And I've noticed he's done this, because at some points he's associated Zeus with Tarnosh, and at some points he's associated Zeus with Anu. And then like, sometimes people say, Dr. Yop contradicts himself. The thing is, there's a context to the information. It, se it might seem contradictory, but if you, if you think about it rationally, then it might not be a contradictory, because it might simply be identifying there's a characteristic why that particular deity is associated with that and that deity is associated with that. Like, for example, you're talking about Jupiter and Zeus Pater. It might simply be the case that when you're talking about Enlil, he might be a person in terms of his astronomy, because the deity is obviously influenced by astronomy too. You know, the Dr. Yot does mention this in all the tablets. He doesn't necessarily say too much about it, and I think there's a reason why he didn't, you know, because there's, sometimes there's a thing called discretion, you know, time and the place. But certain deities, they have certain astronomical influences. It might simply be the case when you're talking about in Lil, as the second son of the Most High Anu, the the royal heir to the throne and everything, um, son of Antu. Like just because it's worth mentioning these things, people might might care to know this. You know what I mean? The Heavenly Father's sons, um, you might care to know this. And he has daughters too. Don't get it twisted. Um, like talking about Ninti, I'll get back to that because that's important, and I might finish on that point. 
um, to when if something else comes up. Because I, I do want to wrap this up, but I want to like make sure I finish this because this has been a really good recording. Um, basically, yeah, when you're talking about Enlil, it might be the case that you'll see if Enlil's astronomical alignments, you might see a prominent Jupiter, as in the planet, which is being referred to as Jupiter. So it tells you, but that's Keisha, and shows you the deity. Keisha, you know, the deity that that planet seems to be correspondent to, whether you want to say she is the planet, depending on how you want to interpret it, you know, how, however you want to interpret it, however it works. To be honest, can I explain precisely how it works? Um... Maybe it's the case that that deity created the planet. Maybe that's what it is. Who knows? Like, it's one of them things. Depends how you might want to try and interpret it. You know, all those things are intriguing. For now, let's deal with Keisha, the deity, the goddess. It's very uh, beautiful. Not me. Not me in no funny way, now because, you know, it's an- an- ancestors. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, like, it might be the case now. No, sorry. Yeah, it might be the case that you're talking about in law having a prominent Keisha, or saying Jupiter, Keisha alignment in his alignments astronomically, and it might also be the case that Tarnush has a prominent uh, Keisha or so-called Jupiter alignment in his astronomy. Hence, when you're talking about Zeus, you might see that one way or another, Zeus, like people might say Sky Father, whatever they say, or like Dios, when they're looking at Proto-Indo-European, they say talk about Dios and all this. Um, it might be the case that you're talking about a so-called, like Dr. Yot does say in the Holy Tablets about a spirit force. It might be the case you're talking about the spirit force and different personalities, so-called deities. I'm not saying they're not, but like different personalities associated with that spirit force. Hence, why one moment he might say Zeus, that person, because perhaps it's simply the case that Tarnosh is Zeus to some beings, and Enlil is Zeus to some other beings, and then perhaps Anu also is Zeus to beings, obviously the Zeus of everybody at that rate, if he's Zeus, he's everybody's Zeus, and then you might say well Enlil is the agreeable Zeus or the Zeus of the Aluhun and then Tarnush is the disagreeable Zeus or the Zeus of the Jinn, now that would make perfect sense that would make perfect sense, so people just run around saying Dr. Teo contradicts himself, it's like you just don't, maybe you just don't know what he's talking about, you just don't know what you're talking about don't try and slander him because you just don't, you're not smart enough to yeah, you know I mean, not me funny enough, but don't slander him just because you're not smart enough or intelligent enough to make sense out of what he's saying. Because it's not necessarily wrong, you just don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, because some, some people do this. Respect, value and appreciation. Value and appreciate all the work the doctor has put in, all these books that he's wrote. Whether people say, well, you know, he talked and other people wrote the book, he still offered the book. He still put in work. You know what I mean? And personally, I think, I think that's a good way of doing things. Because, like, people, sometimes people have been saying to me, you should write a book. Like, I think that would be the easiest thing to do. You know? This is the thing, ideally, like, in terms of relationship, I like, I like to have a relationship with a woman that's good at writing. You know what I mean? Because to me, it's common sense. When I have a relationship, I have a relationship with someone I can work with. When I have a relationship, like, it's common sense. I'm really funny, you know, but when I have a relationship with a woman, and then I got to work in someone else's company, she got to work in someone else's company, and then we're at home a little bit together. Like, let's just be together and make our own business, and then we can be together all the time. Because I, I like that idea. Not everybody's like that. Some, some people seem to like the idea of a relationship where they only see their spouse sometimes, to me that's strange but everybody's different isn't it so it's one of them things <laughs> astronomy, it, seems to be, it might be a moon aligned with Pisces thing, this closeness you know, because I have moon aligned with Pisces and I met some other people who do just, you know what I mean there's, just to mention, I'm sorry just to mention, there's, you know, two pack moon aligned with Pisces and then like, the kind of stuff he would say the kind of community way of thinking that he seems to subscribe to, and then, you know what I mean, it's just funny seeing things like that, because that's how it seems to explain something, you know, and him being someone who also has the Sun, Mercury, Venus situation, um, in, the, in the line with Taurus, and I've, noticed, I've met someone else like that as well, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Taurus, and I have Sun, Mercury, Venus, Leo, but there seems to be certain similarities, although it's not quite the same, it's similar, but different, this is one of the important things about astronomy, because astronomy can explain so much, you can explain so much, it's something for us to really investigate, and we should know, respect and value, you know, we can address that, for those of us that are, have religious perspectives, you know what I mean, that, that's, that's their entitlement, there's nothing wrong with having a religious perspective, it's not necessarily wrong, as long as you're applying it in the right way, that doesn't make it wrong, some people, religion is better for them, like it helps them, some people need that, you know, some people, it's better for them to, like, study in a school. Some people, it's better for them to research in their own time. I feel like I've gained so much more from research in my own time than realistically I could be. The, the fact of the matter is, there is no course that I could have studied that would teach me the things that I've learned. 
You know what I mean? Different people, different things to different people. And then once we can quantify the type of people that learn in type of ways, then we're in a position to create solutions for our people together. Not, it doesn't have to be some so-called black leader telling everybody up. Don't need to be like that. Because Jesus said it himself. And I, like I said, I ain't denying the existence of Jesus. Don't get it twisted. I'm just saying, I don't tell myself as a Christian. I ain't denying he exists. Like I said, it's family member. I mean, talking about Tamil's nephew. But, you know what I mean? It just is what it is, isn't it? Um, not to say, like, it makes a difference who's uncle or nephew. Not necessarily about that. But, um... Because, again, just to mention that as well, because sometimes people be doing that, like age and all this. It's not necessarily about that. And the point I was going to make about Nana is going to address that. Um, but, again, before I forget what I'm saying, um, yeah, those of us that are, yeah, sorry, that's it. Yeah, Jesus addressed this. Because, like I said, I've been talking a long time, getting a little bit tired. Um, Jesus addressed this that, what was I saying? Yeah, whosoever would be cheap. Well, he's talking to the Israelites, at least. Because this is what people say, Jesus was for everyone. No, he wasn't. He said he was sent for his own people. He talked to his own people. He dealt with his own people. It's, it's, it's an established fact in the Bible. Can we just deal with that and move on? You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with being concerned of our own people. That's what Jesus himself was, and he was concerned of his own people. Doesn't mean he hated everybody else. Not necessarily. Doesn't mean he didn't hate other people. People that would like to assume Jesus was some no hate in anyone. No. According to Dr. Tito, they ain't trying to, they ain't trying to like, do not put a phone on and no bus and all that. But according to Dr. Tito, Jesus hated the Romans. You know, and that doesn't match up with what we can see in the Bible because, of course, the Romans were doing something bad. They were conquerors, and Jesus said it. The Romans are conquerors. And he said it like a bad thing, not a good thing. But then this was the thing, that some of the Israelites went to fight them. And he's like, look, the Romans are conquerors, and if you use their methods, then you're like them. That seems, that's what they say anyway in the translation. They say, well, I may or may not have the same opinion. But the fact of the matter is that some people talking this. If you see people that use violence to get their own way, and you say that you see it to be wrong, then why would you be looking to, to use their same methods? I'm not saying it's, it's never the right thing to do. I'm just saying, why would you be looking at using their same methods? There might be an even better way, even more powerful way than resorting to that low way of doing things. You know, because it is arguably a low way of doing things. If you can defeat evil with the power of good and love. I ain't trying to sound like no, no hippie stuff, but it's real. If you can defeat evil with the power of good and love and peace and unity, then why not do that? I guess if you try, it might work. You know what I'm saying? Like, the thing. But, I mean, just to address that, but let's keep it real, though. Just, you know what I mean? Just, just to, so there's no misunderstandings. When we're talking about the most high, yeah, it's a tested, you know, I'm pretty sure it's in the Sumerian text. I remember reading it somewhere. It talks about um, Anu being on the planet and defending his people. You know, it talks about him being here physically and fighting to protect his people. We need to be aware of this. Because when we're talking about God knows high, clearly there's people that must, there's some type of creatures, whatever you want to call them, people, creatures, whatever they are, that are uh, trying to set themselves in opposition to the most high. They just naturally are somehow adverse to him. They, just, they don't like him. Yeah, because why was he fighting with them? You see what I'm saying? And he, even if they didn't necessarily want to fight with him, but he had to fight. Well, the situation was he fought with beings to protect his people. This is really important. People think that, because I don't want to seem contradictory with what I just said, but there's two sides to something. If the Most High himself was physically fighting to protect his people, this is an important thing to be aware of. God Most High himself physically fighting to protect his people. Not to say that fighting is always the first answer. Not to say that, but it's, logic would say that if there are people that are aggressors, then it's sensible to be prepared to defend yourself if you have to. Try and be peaceful, try and be reasonable, but be prepared to defend yourself and be prepared to uh, defend yourself and obviously win and survive and protect your people. Because, you know, some people be thinking about, like, fighting to lose, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, none of that, you know what I mean? It's simple. It's just logic. Be prepared to defend yourself and protect your people just in case someone wants to do something wrong because there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're not the aggressor, then you're in the right. You know, because people say that. You look in the Quran, just because there's some people calling themselves Muslims doing crazy things, they're clearly not Muslims based on what they're doing. Yeah, you know I mean, the, the, dev, the devil tries to infiltrate so many different things and religions and all sorts and poison people with his crazy nonsense doctrine, you know, trying to tell people to go and blow themselves up and all this craziness. You know what I mean? Like, why, why, why would Allah want anyone to blow themselves up? For, for, for what purpose? Like, why? That's just that's craziness. You know, I, I ain't saying it could never make sense, but the fact is, in the context of that people are doing it, it don't make no sense because they're talking about blowing up innocent people um, to get back at people who are 
not innocent. But it's like if that's how you feel, if you disagree with people invading your country, wouldn't you target the people invading your country, not innocent people? That's the thing. That, that's how you know it don't make sense. That's how you know the devil when you see it. Because it's like, why would anybody do that? Because then you're 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 doing the same thing they're doing. You know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. We should be. We should question things. Is the point? We should question things because stuff like that don't make no sense. If somebody's gonna say that person's wrong because they're hurting innocent people, and you go hurting innocent people, then you're doing the same thing they're doing. Wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Does it need to be reiterated? Wouldn't you defend yourselves against the aggressors? And if you want to attack someone, go and attack the aggressor since they're already been an aggressor. Because that's like from when I was younger, I learned that. You know what I mean? From 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 my experience as a child, that like someone tried to bully me, and then I bullied them back. You know what I mean? I learned how to do it. So naturally, if there's a bully, certain time I might see other people getting bullied and then, you know what I mean, intervene. Because I don't like it. That's what you do. If someone's being a bully, then you tell, you know what I mean? You confront the bully and back them down. That's all you have to do. You don't. Why would you go and target anyone else? It's craziness. But anyways, on that subject, I think this is a really good point to talk about Nana. So now, when you're talking about Nana, he's the hero who defeated Tarnush in the story in single combat. Is is terrifying as Tarnush was perceived to be and a lot of the other gods didn't want to face him you know it talks about in the story this is something to notice it talks about Anu the most high um, and it talks about this other deity Dagon who's also mentioned like I mentioned I think I mentioned this earlier in this regard, I think so with Samson actually maybe I didn't um, but with Samson this thing with the Samson and the Philistines something to mention briefly about with black women black women should be concerned or consider the, the importance of their traces. I ain't trying to necessarily play no blame game, but notice that's what happened with Samson, because he was beefing with these Philistines who may or may not have been black. I think they weren't, you know, but what, for what difference that makes. He was beefing with them, and this is the thing, he was so powerful, and they couldn't defeat him, and he was like, well, according to the story, he was slaughtering them. For whatever reason, they were actually fighting. Maybe they were just about, I don't even, to be honest, I don't really know the whole story, to be perfectly honest. But according to the Bible, Samson was the one in the right because he's one of the judges. So I ain't saying he was, I ain't saying he wasn't. But the point being, the Philistines wanted to kill him, you know, and they it was Delilah who they used to get at him. You know, Samson's a black man, Delilah's a black woman. I'm saying all black women are to blame for every time something bad happens to a black man. I ain't saying that, but the fact is sometimes they are, you know, and this needs to be addressed. We have a duty of care and responsibility to each other, men and women. Okay, if you're going to be talking about because Judas, Judas was a man. Don't get twisted. But you're talking about people who sell people out for money. You know, this is something that we need to be aware of these things. If we say we believe these stories, we need to be aware of these things, and we need to consider these things and realistically put something into place to destroy that. Excuse me. If we don't destroy the capacity for us to betray each other, then we might destroy each other by betraying each other. You know what I mean? And the thing is, I ain't saying this way is clear cut because I can I can recognise that some things happen in some situations why people uh, might take a different attitude towards each other because some of us do things that are irresponsible and then it might escalate and then the irresponsible thing might be confronted with something that seems irresponsible in a different way. So solutions would help to fix and pre- uh, prevent those problems. That's why I say talking about like the foster caring thing for children it would be better to avoid the situation where there's children who might find themselves in a bad situation with their family or in an unhappy situation or unfair or traumatizing situation with their family because it seems to be happening to quite a lot of people, you know. It would be better to avoid the situation where they're trapped in that situation. There should be somewhere they can go. And ideally, there should be people who want to care for them amongst our own people and who can care for them, for them properly to look after them. It's not difficult to do. There's, there's, a lot of the time, the main excuse people tend to make is money. There's money available to people who are foster carers. So what's the problem? There's those of us that would be willing to do it. You know, I mean, arguably me, I would, pro- I would probably try foster care. I mean, realistically, me, I'd be more like a teacher innit, than necessarily just the carer per se. I'd be more of a teacher because, like, obviously, I can, I can, if I know something, I can share what I know of other people. It's not, it's not difficult to me, you know what I mean. But different people work different ways. Not everybody's necessarily uh, inclined to teach. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things. This is what astronomy is for. Then we can identify stuff, and then we can assign and create duties for each person using astronomy. That's what it's here for. It's, it's freely accessible. Money don't cost a penny. You know, doesn't cost a penny. There's a lot of information that's freely accessible. This is one of the convenient things sometimes about. You know, there's positives that come out of negatives. You know what I mean? So, so someone like times that I wanted to do things 
in life and stuff, and not necessarily having money available, then it's like improvisation. Being the kind of person I am, then it's like we'll find free stuff to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything happens for a reason, don't it? Um, on that note, talking about Nanoa, again, this is another key thing of astronomy. And Nanoa was the one, I was just about to say actually, this thing of Anu. Between Anu and Dagon, actually, to mention that quickly, when it talks about Anu and Dagon, we know Anu is king of the gods, we know this. But the fact that it mentions Anu and Dagon almost is like they're representing two factions, like Anu is the head of one faction and Dagon is the head of another faction. This is something to mention. Because I know Dr. has mentioned this about the disagreeables. Um, their god is a Hindu, which may or may not be referring to Dagon. It may or may not be. I'm just saying to mention that these are things we might want to investigate because this is important. Because, again, when we're talking about astronomy, we can see when we compare these things, we can identify why some people seem more inclined to listen to one person and not another person. And this can be used for solutions. We don't need to always make things into an argument all the time. Because sometimes we make arguments unnecessarily. Myself included. Don't get twisted. I've done that. You know what I mean? I, I mean, it is what it is. Some, some people are combative. I, I can be quite combative sometimes. You know, some, maybe a lot of the time. But it is what it is. Not knowing now, you know, not just for the sake of me saying it, but it's the, it's the truth, in it? It's the word speaking. And to mention that in astronomy, there's an asteroid called Logos. So people say in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And in Greek, it's Logos. There might be an asteroid called Deos, maybe. You know, but there's an asteroid definitely called Logos, and I know it's Logos. In, if I'm not mistaken, aspects my Venus alignment, I think. Possibly even Venus and Mercury. Poss well, yeah, it's possible, actually. Because if it was 154, because my Mercury is 164 Leo, Venus 144 Leo, or thereabouts, so if it was 154, then yeah, it could back with Apollo. Because Apollo, I think, is 155. But so just mention, because, it, again, this might sound strange, but when you look at it, it's really simple. The astronomy stuff is really simple. You know what I mean? Ideally, um, I, 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 I would like to make it as accessible as, you know, I'd like to make it very accessible to people. You know, I'm working on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on it. But I know there's people out there. There's people, we've got people who can do all kinds of things. We've got people who can program. You know what I mean? We've got people who can program, like, pro, like can really program, program. I know how to do programming, coding on the computer. There's people that are really, like, into it heavy. You know, so we could probably find, that like, five people to say, you know what, let's just make one amazing astronomy program. And it's like, boom, just like that. You know what I mean? This is the point of talking about these things. Because as, as people, in terms of so-called human resource, we've got the best human resource on the planet as so-called black people. We know this because we keep talking about how we're the ones that we invented this and that, and we work and we do this and that for people's companies. So let's just use that together for ourselves. You know, let's just do that. We can do it. Okay, um, now, mentioning that thing about Anu and Dagon, it seems relevant that Anu and Dagon are mentioned together, not just Anu. That seems relevant. It's just something to, to mention. And this thing, I know Dr. has mentioned at times about um, Dagon being the deities of the Nomos as reptilians. Um, but anyways, this thing about Anu saying to first to Teshub, you know, to defeat Tarnush and to make our or you know, as the Aluhum, make our name great in the foreign lands. And it's the thing about reading things in context. It's dealing with the holy tablets. And to me, if people can accept the Bible as holy, I don't see why it should be a problem to accept the holy tablets as holy. Seeing that Doctor is a real person in the here and now, who's explained all this information and he teaches about Jesus. When you're dealing with Christianity, he teaches about Moses and them, you know, Abraham and them, rather. No, I'm not saying that. You know, Moses, Abraham, all of them, you know, with Judaism. He teaches about uh, Muhammad and them, and Gabriel, arguably more importantly, with Islam. He teaches all of that, and he teaches that it's true. You know what I mean? He teaches that it's true and presents it in a scientific way. Some people are saying it ain't true. He taught that it was true, okay? I just mentioned, I've read it in the Holy Tablets. He talked about this thing about, uh, to paraphrase, having the capacity to tell the truth and to tell a light soul to speak. We talk about this poisonous wind, like what Satan breathes, you know, and him having the capacity to breathe or speak that as a test. So just because we might say, oh, he said that, that the people in the Bible didn't exist, doesn't mean when he said it that was true, because he said that he can say certain things as a test. You know, just saying, because astronomy proves that these people do exist, because you can see that there's Ruth as an asteroid, Mary as an asteroid. <laughs> so you're going to say they don't exist, because I've seen it. It's people that look like Mary, the way that Mary is depicted in the Holy Tablets. That those are things to address, um, but now there was something else I was just thinking on the tangent. Actually, I might finish up with the thing about the nerve because like I'm I'm kind of feeling tired. But like these are things we have mentioned as well. Um, what else? Yeah. Anyways, um, this thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Sorry. 
Because notice how this is happening. It's not happening early, isn't it? But um, probably to do with the alignments, just to mention different times of the day, there's different alignments in terms of the horizon. Stellarium is realistically a lot more practical to look at that than, like, NASA's JPL Horizons. Is. You might be able to do it somehow. But Stellarium, me personally, I use Stellarium to, to figure things out like that. So you might see at different times of the day there's different feelings. If you look at it, you might find that's when different constellations are on the eastern point of the horizon. They call it the ascendant. Well, between the ecliptic, which is the constellations that the sun lines with, and the eastern horizon, these are things. It's things to learn. Let's just say it's things to learn. It's not difficult to learn. It's easy. Okay, it's easy. These are things for us to learn and put into practice because we're talking about a culture. This has long time been a culture. We can see this in the Bible too. People uh, people watch the motion of... Well, people talk about the Sabbath for one thing. They watch the motion of the moon. You know? It's been our culture, so let's learn it. Let's use it. We have access to it now. It's been a long time for some of us since we've had so much easy access to this information. So let's use it. Let's, let's be grateful for what we have. Because sometimes we do have reasons to complain about things we do. But let's be grateful for what we do have and let's use it. Because sometimes, sometimes, I've done it too, okay? Sometimes we might focus too much on the things that we don't have or the things that are negative and not see the blessing in the skies because it's an opportunity for us to w look at what we do have and we didn't even realize we have it. People are talking about problems in employment. If people are trying to drive us out of the jobs working in their companies, maybe we should take the hint because this might in its own way might even be a hint from the Most High himself. He might be inspiring to be them to behave that way. I'm not saying that to make an excuse, but you never know. He might be inspiring them to behave that way to compel us to know it's time for us to do for self kind, as Dr. York would say. And he's like, oh, Elijah Muhammad would teach as well, or the Prophet Elijah Muhammad would teach. You know? I say that to be respectful, you know. Or well, whether people say the honourable Elijah Muhammad, however they word it. But someone, the definition of a prophet is someone who talks the truth. Especially when someone's talking the truth from the Most High. Inspired by the Most High. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Now, because um, prophecy, if you're talking truth, it's prophesied. That's the definition. Now, not necessarily that you prophet, prophesy the future. Now, again, I'm going to address this point and then I'm going to like wrap it up. <laughs> um, no, no. You know, Anu says to Teshub, you know, make our name great in the foreign lands. Key point. If Anu is God, Anu is the God of the gods, king of the gods. And he says, make our name great in the foreign lands. This implies that the foreign lands don't subscribe to Anu. You know, this is something for us to be aware of. It's not necessarily the case that the most high God is everybody's God or that everybody subscribes to him. You might not like that, but it might simply be the case. Okay? We might want to be aware of this. Because if we said... Teshub, go defeat Tarnush and make our name great in the foreign lands. That clearly implies that the foreign lands uh, subscribe to Tarnush. This is in the Holy Tablets. We want the exact quote. Uh, I guess I can look for it, you know, and put it on the blog, but it's something to mention. I ain't saying believe it just because I said it, but some of us are happy to do it. Some of us go to church and some of our people do that. You know, I ain't making it. I ain't lying. You know what I mean? I've read it in the Holy Tablets. Um, but again, if anybody wants to call, I can, I, can, I can work on that. You know what I mean? Um key point. Oh, but actually, if you want to read it for yourself, better yet, there's there's a there's a part in the whole tab, it's called the Tablet of Answers. What chapter is it? It might be, I think it's, I think it's chapter 16. Chapter 15 is the Christians, it's called. And you want to know the Christ story, chapter 15, it's in there, you know? If you like the Bible, then why not look at the Holy Tablets from somebody who says they're the incarnation of the angel Michael, and if you're sceptical about that claim, then look at the truth that they're revealing, and then you assess that and come to your own conclusion. Because you might realize that when somebody can present information like that, they must be inspired by the Most High, because you can see the information makes sense. You know, that's, that's my point of view. Um, but I think it's chapter 16, the Tablet of Anzu, that tells that story about the whole thing with um, Teshub and Nunu and then Tarnush. You know, Teshub, Teshub was called upon, Teshub being a prominent warrior in the family, he was called upon to defeat Tarnush. And the way Dr. tells it, um, basically, or the way the story tells it, basically, he wasn't able to defeat Tarnush. See, it seems like he was willing to attempt it, but he just wasn't able to do it with his lightning. You know, because one of his key weapons seemed, seemed in his lightning. And he wasn't able to defeat him with that. These are things worth noting. Because you can read the story in Greek mythology talking about Zeus versus Typhon. This may or may not be the same thing. It may be something different, but it's similarities. You know, and it tells this story. There's different versions of the story. One version of the story says Zeus was fighting um, Typhon, 
And, you know, it was kind of like a back and forth. One version of the story, just to mention Greek mythology, their version of that particular story, between those two, whether they were the same people or not. And it talks about how um, Pan intervened and helped Zeus defeat Typhon. One version of the story says that these are things worth noting, especially when you're talking about astronomy, and there's an asteroid named Zeus, an asteroid named Pan, an asteroid named Typhon. And you can see when you look at the characteristics, when these things, when you look at how these things align at the times that different people are born, you see the behavioral patterns in people. Then when we can, when we can identify things that we define to be evil and that we disagree with, obvious things like bad things that certain people will be doing in our communities, or to speak, or the places where we live, then we should have a perspective on what those characteristics, personalities, influences are that we disagree with, and who is most well equipped and predisposed to be able to combat that and defeat that you know this is how you use astronomy simple it's logical no nah. then the next thing was Nino, um was selected and even that like, to mention in the story the way it tells the story like Nana of all people being the great champion you know um, some would say he's the mightiest of the gods and I ain't saying he ain't I ain't saying he ain't I'm just saying that like, some would say as much as that the mightiest of the gods even him of all people like at first when it was suggested that yeah he should go and fight I think it I think it was his mother, Ninti, who put him forward to do it. And they're talking about how he's how he slashed down. I'm thinking that wow. Because I can relate with that. Like someone says, Yeah, this needs to be done, it's feeling like that sounds long and then that kind of slouch feeling. And I'm like, Wow, I mean even even he felt that way. And again, this is the thing to comprehend, like we are gods. You know, whether we're gods, the gods, the gods, or we're made in the image and lines of God. Just because someone's a god, it don't mean everything's hung easy, easy, easy for them. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that sometimes even gods, not to say every god, but it doesn't mean even gods might not get, like, scared sometimes. Because if you if you read the doctrine, they'll tell you about certain points, especially when you're talking about Nanoa. If you look in, like, the Sumerian literature, like that one website, ETCSL, because I've looked at some of the stuff up there, and it will talk about Nanoa and these, like, these super powerful, mon- like, monsters, that or monsters, as people call it. We say monsters in this country. It can be funny, but um, how he's, like, was fighting these super monsters that was like threats to the family of gods. And at certain times, the gods were like ducking out when, you know what I mean? They were like, I guess not necessarily all of them, but certain of them were afraid. And you think like the gods were afraid? Yeah, because not, not all of the gods that are like super powerful, just because they're called gods, that's not how gods work. You know what I mean? Like some of us, because of the perceptions we have, we would assume gods are like, yeah, they're fearless. That's not how it works. You know what I mean? That's just not how it works. They're people. They're supernatural compared to, like, regular normal people, but they're still people. They still have emotions. You know what I mean? Gods can get angry. Gods can get jealous. As we know, when we read the Bible, there's these emotions mentioned. You know, the beef between Inki and Inlo and, you know, Father Inki. Because spiritually, he's my father. Don't Not to say I, disagree, I agree with everything. Not to say I agree with everything he's done. You know, it's arguably a lot of things I don't agree with that he's done, but, you know, he is what he is. And just saying to mention that, because you'll see in terms of the Sumerian doctrine, they also refer to him specifically as Father Inki. That seems to be relevant when they do this. Just like they say, when they talk about Nana as the father of the black-headed people, which is the name the Sumerians used to refer to themselves, these things these things must be logically relevant. We can see in West Africa, like Ghana, I think it's Ghana specifically, you'll see people of the name Nana. That just goes to show this is our culture. You know what I mean? Where did where the name come from? Just a coincidence, coincidence. Prove something. You know, Nana. You see, Inanna. Um, referring to Ish, one of the other names of Ishtar. Ishtar. You know, Inanna. Sin. Male. As Dr. Hill put it, the male sin, Nana. The female sin, Ishtar. You know, when you see Ishtar as a warrior deity, warrior goddess. And then arguably, one might interpret when you look at Queen Nani. You, one might even go as far as to interpret her as an incarnation of Ishtar. And maybe that's exactly who she was. You know, you say Ishtar, Isis, Aset. And then to an extent, Dottir even relates Ishtar to Mary. And then this is the thing, because sometimes the story seems to be that Ishtar is of a disagreeable nature. doesn't mean she's completely bad, because that's the thing. Like Dottir said himself, if you're looking to see the good in someone, the most I can show that to you. If you're looking to see the bad in someone, the most I can show that to you. It's important for us to consider these things. Because like I said, especially when talking about the dialogue between black men and black women, there's a lot to say about that. If you're looking for the bad in someone, you'll see it. If you're looking for the good in someone, you'll see it. Between black men and black women, there's certain black men who've done things irresponsible. There's certain black women who've done things irresponsible. Facts. 
okay? And there's certain black men who've done things responsible, and there's certain black women who've done things responsible. Facts. Now, in the here and now, what do we do in the here and now to make the best out of what's sometimes a bad situation and to make the best out of what's sometimes a good situation? What do we do now? Knowledge. If we learn from the good choices and the bad choices, then it's, it can be used ultimately for the betterment. You know, that's not just optimistic. I mean, I guess it's optimistic. It sounds nice, don't it? Just Sometimes I say if it just happens, you know. I ain't pretending that I'm consciously doing this. When I talk, this is it's always been like this. Like, I've been, from when I was younger, I know it happened. Like, sometimes I say, and say, you know, I, I don't own this. I'm just, you know what I mean, talking, truth talking through me. You know, because ultimately, every, the truth comes from the most high. And I ain't saying that to be so-called pious, whatever people call it. Like, it's just, tell it, it's just reality, you know. Some of us have gifts and stuff like this, you know. And this is a gift, because clearly not everybody can do this. You know what I mean? And I'm grateful that I have this gift, but I have I have to be I have to use it. I have to use it, and I have to make it useful to my people. Otherwise, what? Like, not say what point is it, but it's like it has to be used. You know? Um, I give thanks that I can say that. You know, finally, it's recording. It feels it's going really good. But um, again, uh, there's some points as well. Because to mention that thing about money, that's important. The thing about black men and black women, that's important. I just say one. I may not mention it in this recording. Just to say one thing again. Strategy, logic, you know, when people are talking about commerce, finance, you know, race, politics, without going too far on that subject, let's let's just, you know, do what makes sense, let's use what works, let's improvise. You know, when people say, you know, sometimes it's like there's an agenda to, you know, undermine black men and not employ them and then, and then to, you know, give jobs to black women to then make black men seem inefficient, is that there's a really simple way to combat those kind of things. If that conspiracy is going on, I ain't saying it ain't. Because it seems quite obvious that something like that is going on. It's, ob- it's an obvious tactic, isn't it, to make black men look bad or to make black women feel that black men are, n- are not capable somehow. It's an obvious tactic. It's obvious. But at the same time, there's a really easy way around that. If black women can get jobs, then black women get jobs. Black women employ black men. Between the black man and the black woman, create a business. It's problem solved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like, come on now. So, that's, that, that's a simple okie doke, isn't it? It's a simple, that's a simple attempt at a trick. It's simple to combat that. Come on, that, that's that's weak. That, that, that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna stop us. Come on, people think they can use that on us. That ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Simple, like simple solutions to simple problems, isn't it? Like I said, same thing. I like foster care. There's people that have, there's people that you know they say, I disagree with. I say, how can you say you just that you didn't mean to get pregnant? It just happened. Like I ain't trying to talk down because I guess different people think in different ways to me it don't it don't make sense to me but we don't need to make an argument out of it it is what it is you know some people do things and they don't really think about what they're doing everybody's different people have different emotions and stuff we don't need to like castigate each other maybe sometimes a bit of castigation like you say like we're rebuking someone telling them they're wrong but just to mention it's in the bible isn't it if someone's wrong rebuke them or if your brother is wrong because again context us as black people I'm not saying we can't apply things to other people. It's about us first and foremost, if we believe ourselves to be Israelites. And if not, a Christian, whatever you call it, we should apply it to ourselves first and foremost. Love each other. That's how, Jesus said, that's how uh, people know that you're mine, that you love one another. Can we please just love each other as black people? I think I've said this several times. But like, can we please love each other as black people? It would really help our situation. doesn't mean we need to be kissing, hugging each other. Not, not necessarily in that funny way. You know what I mean? But like, can we care about each other? Can we care each other, that genuinely care about each other as a people? This is something I learned to do. And I've noticed this, like, I've noticed this about culture. Like, certain, certain time when I've seen those of our people that have come over from Africa, like, more recently, they have a very different attitude. And I ain't trying to say that all Caribbean people are not good or not. And I ain't saying that, but I've noticed, like, don't, this is the difference. Because the thing is, I'm talking about my parents. They were born in the Caribbean. And I, I ain't trying to support none of this English, like, some people talk English fitness stuff. It's like, the fact is, when we're talking about astronomy, it it makes a difference where in the world you're born, straight. Certain countries have different spiritual natures that seem to, you could perceive, dominate the environment. This is a fact, and anyone can look at this with solarium. You can see in different countries, different things line up on different parts of the horizon. In one land, certain things are going to be on the horizon that ain't on a different part of the land. So that's one of the explanations, arguably, as to why people seem very different from different parts of the world. We should know this. If you didn't know, you know now. Something to address. But, um, yeah, when we're talking about, like, cultural attitude and stuff, certain type of people do that. Like, if somebody's sitting there, you've got, got a piece of fluff in their hair. you got a piece of fluff in your hair. You know what I mean? And then you can just take, don't don't laugh at someone, ah, ha, 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 look at, look at your hair. That attitude, that's that's not good. 
You know, that's not good. Like, not being funny, that's not good. What's the point of that attitude? Why are you going to laugh at your own? You know what I mean? If you want to act bad with other people, I ain't saying you should, but if that's on you, isn't it? Like, if that's what you want to do, that's on you. I ain't saying it's right. But in my opinion, it's less wrong than acting bad with your own. But for what difference it makes, other people say this. They say things like, we don't steal from our own. But they clearly steal from other people. We know they do. You know what I mean? We can see that. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to go there with it. But, um, again, those are good. Those are things to address as well. Can we please genuinely care for each other as a people? With common sense, you know what I mean, responsibly. Myself included. Sometimes those of us as men should be a bit more wise. <laughs> we have to learn. You know what I mean? Don't, don't be going thinking that all women are good. You know what I mean? Because they're not. Okay? We should be a bit more wise about the women that we go for and try to love. Okay? Facts. People make mistakes. No matter how right you think you are. Because I know because I've done it. No matter how right you think you are and how good your intentions are. If you're trying to love someone who's a bad person, that's on you, isn't it? Like, you, you're wrong. You know what I mean? I can say with me, I can say at least there's an opportunity to learn something. But realistically... Realistically, the the main something to learn is like, look, let's find let's find a woman who's actually good, you know. When there's when there's like those red flag type warning sign type things that something don't seem right here, let's not bother too much of that. Let's not be like, oh, but for the sake of not feeling so called lonely, you know, let's not do that. You know what I mean? Let's be patient and say, you know what? Let me, let me investigate this person. Let me strategically question this person and assess this person's psychology or their psych, their state of mind before I entertain the idea of having any type of emotional, any type of emotional interaction or whatever with them, that's responsible. You know, that's being wise. If you want to say mature adult, whatever they want to call it, okay, um, then again, those of us, you know, well, those of us, <laughs> those of us, uh, for women, we know us, let's say us men, us women, we're family. We're all children of the most high together, male and female. Genesis one twenty six twenty seven. male and female created he them, in the image and likeness of God made he them. Dominion over the whole earth is what he gave to them. Now, if we intend to sit on our throne as those who are with dominion over the whole earth, it would be beneficial to us to take our responsibility in our choices. And this ain't a matter of me personally talking down or telling everyone. No, this is a matter of the truth speaking. I just happen to be the person whose mouth it's speaking through. I ain't saying it's me alone can do that. And they say, well, you know, you might notice if you look at some Venus aligned with all futures, people. Because like I said, that's something I've noticed. That it may or may not be the case that the futures constellation corresponds to me. That's something to mention, actually. For those on the th- People talk about a 13th constellation between Scorpio and Sagittarius. It seems that it might correspond to me. It seems like it. So I've noticed a lot of correspondence between people that have all futures alignments and the things they do or think or say that seems very similar to myself. That's, some, that's something to be aware of. You know, because if I say, like, for me, let me say, I'm a god, I'm in Gizha Day and I'm just making this up, I'm just trying rubbish. You know, this is reality. You know, in terms of being a god, am I saying everybody bad at and worship me? Not necessarily. I mean, if you really want to, <laughs> if you really want to, I ain't saying you can't. You know what I mean? But at the same <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of joking, though, but seriously. Like, to me, like, that ain't really, it ain't really about that. Like, end of the day, it's more like, end of the day, if people can recognize, well, look, I am one of the gods, I'm the family of gods. Then it's like, when I suggest stuff, I ain't suggesting nothing bad. When I suggest, uh, guys, I think it would be a good idea to do this, just recognize that I'm actually a god saying that. I ain't just some guy saying it. You know? Like, at least accredit me, like, a certain amount of... You know what I mean? Not necessarily respect, but, like, just recognize that what I'm saying is, is actually valid. You know what I mean? It's actually valid. Like, I know what I'm talking about. I've been designed spiritually to be able to make sensible suggestions and to an extent to guide. That's something I've been designed to do. It's my purpose or part of my purpose. You know, that's the context of that. And it applies to other people in their context too. Those of us that have different purposes, they have their purpose. Like those of us that are warriors, militants, those of us that are like that, they're meant to be that way. Those of us that are in the gangs and stuff, they're meant to be that way. It's about channeling that energy responsibly because we need that. We need those of us who are military to protect those of us who are not. We need that. Rather than rather than we're sometimes in families, and it is what it is, not to play the blame game as such, because that don't necessarily help, but rather than sometimes those of us in families, some some of some of maybe, the, it seems to me to be a lot of the older ones than my generation, but some of the older ones getting, you know, browbeaten by the so-called white men or whatever, 
and then they want to feel like they have power over someone, so they go home, and then they want to have power over their children, and they treat their children in a negative way. Because I, I see it happen. I know it's happened. I ain't the only person who's encountered it. A lot of us in our age group have encountered it, if not most of us. Okay? Rather than playing the blame game, it don't need to be the blame game. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, and people get all defensive. It's not, it doesn't need to be that deep. The fact, it is what it is. Okay? It is what it is. Rather than those of us who feel like we want power, rather than trying to have power from each other, why don't we just say, you know what, let's have power over other people. And ideally, trying to have power in a positive way, ideally. People want to have effects on people. Why have a bad effect when you can have a good effect? If you can say something to someone and affect their emotional state, why not say something and make them happy rather than say something and make them feel bad? Because you can apply the same thing in a positive way as well as or in a negative way. Notwithstanding, I guess if someone has a particularly negative personality, then that's different. You know what I mean? But I think a significant amount of the time, it can be applied positive or negative. I know because I've, 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 I've done that myself, okay? It's times I've used certain of my characteristics negatively. I ain't going to pretend I didn't do it. You know what I mean? It happens. I ain't making excuses, but it is what it is. Excuse me. It is what it is, okay? Um, if we, me, me myself included, from I can say that, then clearly I can look and assess it. If we can see negatives, and then we can say, you know what, okay, let's try and use our abilities in a positive way, okay, in a constructive way, in a wise way, because sometimes the positive thing to do is somewhat negative contextually, if you see what I mean. Sometimes it's appropriate to shout at someone that we care about to compel them to fix up. Sometimes it's appropriate to say something positive to someone that we care about. You know, it's balance. Wisdom. You know? Like, you see, some people watch movies, and you see, like, that thing we... Because they put all these things in movies, don't they? They put a lot of strange things in movies. But still, I mean, maybe some of us see this in real life, but some of us see this thing in movies, like people that's on drugs, and then it's like they've got someone who cares about their spouse or whatever who's trying to make them go cold turkey and handcuff them to their bed in, in the room and then lock the door to make sure they can't take no drugs to get out of their system. Things like that. Sometimes it's necessary. Like people say, tough love. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes tough love is not the appropriate thing. You know what I mean? Because, you know, some people think think they're doing the right thing and they're not. It depends. Some people are very sensitive people, so the best thing for them is sensitive stuff. You know, some people are very hard or harsh people, and the best thing for them is harsh. Depends on the situation. Astronomy can explain this. If you see someone with moon aligned with Pisces, then that implies that Pisces stuff can be effective with them. You know, that can be effective. But if you contradict the Pisces, then you're probably going to make it a thing where they're never going to cooperate with you. Likewise, we talk about the so the evil one. When you see that he seems to have moon aligned with Sagittarius, then you'll be able to compre- comprehend what might be the most effective way of trying to... Ne- what do you want to call it? Negotiate? Trying to... If you're trying to combat that person, so to speak, then you'll be able to figure out what might be the best way to do it or what characteristic you want to use. And then conveniently, this ties back in with Nana because it seems to be the case that Nanurta corresponds to the Sagittarius constellation. When I was born, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, or Uranus, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune align with Sagittarius. And people say certain planets are generational. End of the day, Uranus corresponds to Anu. Saturn corresponds to Ansha, the father of Anu, like Kisha is the mother of Anu. And then Neptune corresponds to Father Inki. Say Father Inki, don't say Father Anu. Well, An- Anu, Anu, the heavenly one. For some reason, I don't know, for some reason, just saying Inki doesn't sound right. Anu, because Anu, heavenly one, Father Anu. It's, I don't, that's kind of strange. Like, why is it like that? I don't, I, it's one of the things. Because obviously, I don't mean no disrespect to not say Father Anu. It's just one of the things. Like, thinking, why does that happen? Who knows? Um, but yeah, then you see characteristics. When you read the stories, you look in the Holy Tablets, it'll talk about um, Father Inki slaying Afsu. And like this whole thing when there was this contention between Afsu, Tiamat, and Mumu against like uh, the younger gods, including Anu, the younger generations of gods. And there was a conflict. So like those of us that talk about some of the elders who have a certain stance that seems to be very adverse, it may be the case that sometimes there might be a point where we have to identify that there's going to have to be a conflict because it does seem that some of those older than us, I'm not saying everybody who's older than us, some of those older than us may simply be adverse to us and we might need to conflict with them, you know, whether it's going to be like Zeus and put them in some Tartarus or whatever, 
we might need to deal, you know what I mean? That might just be something that needs to be dealt with. But assessing the information, assessing the information, studying astronomy will make all that clear. You know, because this is the thing, like, well, guess, well, you know, someone's going to tell you the information and you know, you know where it is, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Is it, ain't nobody saying this is this abstract culture. This is all science. This is all science. This is all stuff that's got a point of reference. Somebody tell you, well, look, Sun, Mercury, Venus, aligned with Uranus, that's the face of Anu. You know what I mean? Like, that's the most high. That's God. You can see his face. He really exists. Zeus, see the face, really exists. Artemis, see the face, really exists. Apollo, see the face, really exists. Athena, or Athene, as the asteroid, you can see the face, really exists. This is all reality. This ain't no, this ain't no mumbo jumbo. This ain't no Mickey Mouse stuff. This is real. You know what I mean? This is, this is all the way real, legit. You can look uh, at your own alignments. You know what I mean? And you can see your own face explained by the alignment. See, wow look like this deity and that deity and you think like this deity and that deity and that's why you say the things you do. So that goes to show, generally speaking, there's a value, okay? You say there's a value in everyone because arguably, even when you're talking about the evil one, he had a purpose. The Most High created him for a purpose and you you can read this in the Holy Tablets. It's in the Holy Tablets that Anu himself said that, you know, the evil one was good at the job that Anu had assigned for him. You know, we might Look at it like he's a terrible, yeah, the evil one's a terrible, despicable, this, that, and the other. And arguably, that's exactly what he is. But the fact of the matter is, Anu, the Heavenly Father, knows best. That's why he's king of the gods. That's why Anu is god of the gods, because he knows what he's doing. He knows best. If he sees there's a purpose for creating someone like the evil one, then the Heavenly Father knows best. We might disagree with the evil one existing, but the Heavenly Father knows best. You know, it's for us to know what we need to do to protect ourselves from the evil of the evil one. It's simple. Because this is all in the Holy Tablets about how the evil one, when he was amongst the gods, and he was always making mischief and making arguments over nothing. Like, and we see people like that. Sometimes we, we might go to school or whatever, college or whatever, workplace, and there's people like that. There's, everybody's cool. It's one person that's negative for no reason. That, that's how you know that that personality does exist because you see it evident in people. And if you look at the astronomy, you might see the two, you might see the exact thing and not by numbers, so to speak, explained. And now, talking about Nana, the same thing. Nana, as mighty as he is, you know, but according to the story, at first he seemed to be apprehensive of the duty that was proposed to him. But the fact is, he stepped up and he got it done. So I say, pay respect where it's due. Pay respect to Muruduk because he was the champion of the gods when, you know, the issue was with Tiamat. And it seemed at the time he was the only one at that time able to deal with it. You know, he was the only one able to deal with that. He played his position. And in the nurse situation at that time, he was the only one able to deal with that. You know, so this is the thing about the dynamic. Maybe Muruduk could do, deal with Tiamat the way he did. Maybe Nana couldn't have done that. And maybe Nana could deal with uh, Tarnush or defeat Tarnush. You know what I mean? The way he did. And maybe Muruduk couldn't have done that. That just goes to show how important it is to recognize that the different parts of our collective family, so to speak, depending on what we're talking about, God's family, and the, the, the fact is different people are important. Because some situations, one person might be able to do something that other people simply can't do. But they might not be able to do everything People talk about, you know, the Anunnaki, those who Anu sent down to Earth in 50. Just what people say, some people argue that that's not what we mean. That means that's the point. You know, if we entertain the notion, why would Anu send people in a group? Because Anu knows best. So he would know that out of this group, you've got enough people, and realistically, you've got enough people that can do enough things that every that it should be completely self-sufficient in that group. Hence, when we look in real life, we've always had tribes everywhere you look. We've had a culture. We've always had tribes. It's just common sense. So any of us that realistically think that we can just live by, as individuals, if somebody can really do it and prove it, then, okay, that person might be able to do it. But in reality, in reality, groups, you know, when we're talking about society and, you know, situations, cause I know it's that situation because, you know what I mean, there's things going on. There's things been going on. There's things going on right now. But <laughs> it is what it is, isn't it? Because I said from time ago, it would make sense for us to own land. But there's different things that happen, and sometimes different experiences can teach different lessons. Like I say, you know, I'm learning. You know, some things, some things sometimes are motivation. But <laughs> at the end of the day, these are things that a lot of things we talk about. It's simple. When there's a large number of us as a people, and we say we want things, 
if, if, if enough of us can say we want the same thing and we can all pledge a little bit towards it, then nobody needs to spend too much. That's the thing. It's not one person trying to finance something. We all pledge a little bit towards it, and then it can happen. And this is the thing. Like, some of us talk about this. Like, certain of us, like, Caribbean people, and then see, maybe Jamaican people specifically, I don't know. In my family, it happens to be Jamaican. And this thing about, you know, when we came to Britain back in the 60s, and because of, like, the racism, a uh, certain time, or a lot of the time, it was a thing where people couldn't necessarily even rent houses because no one was trying to rent to us, even though we had the money to pay for the rent. So if we could solve the problem back then, we said, you know, work together, put money together, and each person in their point in time, they buy their house, and then we put the money together, and the next one buy their house, and then, you know, we make things work, we improvise. If it's bare people living together in the same house, it's bare people living together in the same house because we know what we're working towards. If we could do it then, we can do it now. You know, if we want to use the astronomy, we use the astronomy and say, you know, why was that generation able to do that? Even though, like, from what I hear of the story, you know, there's certain people that then reneged against the, what they call the pardon the system, and then they didn't honor it. Again, this is the whole point of having police. This is the point of having military. This is the point of having gangs. Because any disgusting person that does that, that's trying to jeopardize the security of our whole people by being a traitor and being selfish, we need to have enforcers to enforce the law. We need to make the law and enforce the law. When we know, surely, when we know that our ancestors, you know, whether we call ourselves gods or not, same difference, arguably. When we know that our ancestors in Sumer are, uni- well, as far as academics go, it's, it's conclusive. The academics agree. The official story agrees. The first law written in recorded history, that's in Sumo. The first language, that's in Sumo. The first civilization, that's in Sumo. The first arts, crafts, science, engineering, whatever you want to call it, the whole works. And Dr. It will tell you that that area, that culture, that is where the gods came and established that. So we're not just talking about people, we're talking about the very gods, the physical manifestation of the creators of the universe. You know, and this is compatible. All of this is parallel. We're talking about Bible, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, whatever. All of this is parallel. All of this, all of this fits together. Like you get a jigsaw puzzle and you see the picture. This all fits together perfectly. So now we know the truth. Let's use it, because all of this is empowerment. All of this is telling us we are great. Not just we were great. We are great right now. If we just saw, if we just look at ourselves and see the things that we have, we are great. We are capable. We have so much. You know, if we're going to look at things like in terms of money, because it's, that is clearly a trick, because money is one of them things, and it's easy to look at money. And those of us that maybe don't have so much money, we might think from we don't have money that we ain't achieved nothing. Don't let that, don't let that get to you, or reject that. Let's say reject that, because I know how that feels. I know how that feels. I know how that feels, but that's something to what they wouldn't call it a shoe in the Bible to st- to step away from, you know. To avoid that, step around that, sidestep that. You know what I mean? I see people doing rugby, like American football even. You know, and they be, they be flexing, so to speak, and they be like, you know, bobbing and weaving and spinning. You know what I mean? Just get around that. Because it's someone else's interest to make us think that we need their money and we need their this and we need their that and blah, da, 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 to be validated. And anybody that knows, because Dr. Yacht teaches as well, you'll see that the invention of money, you know, that was a concoction of Nimrod and, you know, the evil one. They worked together and came up with that. It was really Nimrod's idea, according to the story. Nimrod came up with the idea of using money, like gold coin, silver coin. That was his idea. The same Nimrod mentioned in the Bible. And people say, this is fictitious. He's called Sargon. Dr. Yacht said this. In history, he's known as Sargon. You see, Sargon of Akkad. I think, but if it's Sargon the first or Sargon the second, I think there's two of them. I think it's Sargon the first. I think. I think. You know, but he is attested in history. You know, because even talking about Sargon, there is, there is a, uh, there is a, I think it's like a bronze or something um, of his face, but that doesn't look like Nimrod, though, so it might be a different Sargon. I'm just saying that, <laughs> not to get off topic, because again, he's, there's a depiction of him in the Holy Tablets, and there's people that look like him. More than likely, there's a asteroid named of him. If I've seen it or not, probably called Sargon. Again, there's a lot of asteroids. There's a Samirimus, for sure, I know, because I've seen the asteroid. These are things to be addressed. All these these allegedly mythological people must obviously exist since there's asteroids named after them. We can look at the asteroids and see the face and see the characteristics. Not just the face, but also the characteristics, the things they think, they say, the things they do. You know, these are things to investigate. The significant amount of deities probably 
all of the more prominent deities, at least, in asteroids. So when we talk about the gods being among us, yes, they really are. But not necessarily just in the capacity that some of us think. Those of us that even perceive ourselves to be mortal still have God qualities in us. When you're talking about Greek mythology, it tells you, or at least their version of the story says how um, Zeus put the attributes of each of the gods in each person, each man. Well, I'm pretty sure it was male or female, they made no difference. He put the attributes in each person. So even mortals have the attributes of gods in them. Maybe they have it on a not as powerful a level, but it's still there. You know? I'm not saying you have to believe in Greek mythology, it's just that it seems to be the same story, just told by that culture. And just to mention, you know, that here seems to explain that, that the Greeks came out of, um, was it Javan? I think, for some reason, I'm thinking Javan and Esau. I don't know if Javan was the son of Esau. But not not to be ignorant of it, but he explains all of that in there, where different groups of people come from, in the family of Adam and Eve. Dr. Yacht teaches this is facts, not, not, not a made-up story, facts. And you show you the different people, and you see different types of people with different looks. So people can figure that out. Okay, and like Canaan and how Canaan uh, married in with these, uh, I think it's basically the Flugorids, I think. And the Flugorids, people talking about people that Yakub created, you know, all of this. So the same way the Nation of Islam talk about that, it's not to say that story ain't true, just that there's a bit more to the story. There's a bit more details to it. If we want to know these things, these things are there. It's in the Holy Tablets. Whether we are sceptical or not, ain't nothing wrong with being sceptical, because the fact is, if you read it, most of what's in there makes sense. And when you cross-reference it, it just so happens there's things that match up with it elsewhere. Some people seem to be so sceptical of Dr. Yuck. But again... Really, to wrap it up now, really, um, talking about Nana, it was that thing. He did what he did. He defeated Tarnush. He's a champion. He's defeated many, uh, you know, dreadful and powerful monsters who were like threats to the gods. So, not necessarily just in that context, but if we perceive that there's some big threat to us as a people, then it would imply that the Nana type people amongst us would be the people that would have the solution against that, whether that was literally to fight or not. Fighting doesn't necessarily always have to be a physical thing. Not necessarily. There's different ways of combating something that's wrong. Sometimes somebody who can simply say, you know what, when there's a fracturing between the male and the female, this is how we can solve the problem. Because if females look to other, if our, if those of our females look to other people for certain things, if we provide those things for them, you know, then they can see our worth because they can see it in their life, in our uh, yeah, in their life, and in our life. And that can enrich us as men. There's something I said a lot, like many years ago, you know, but then people say, well, you know, you say something. You did, I did. The thing is, some things are more complicated, isn't it? You know what I mean? I'm just saying, there's some things that are more complicated. Like this whole thing of like, and I think it's, this may well have been inspired by Brother Pilates when they're talking about um, giving people IQ tests. It may have been inspired, it may have been a coincidence. Then again, technically, it was, it was actually, there was also a conversation, there was that, and there was also a conversation um, with someone like a, Someone I knew, someone they knew in the conversation, and it was this thing about, you know, women and men, and it was like this idea of like, okay, so those of us as men who like feel that we're men of quality, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe all men think they are, but those of us as men who feel we're men of quality, how about, you know, we read CVs, you know what I mean? We list our skills, the things that we can do, the services we can offer as, you know, partners, and then, you know, apply to be partners to women. You know, it, it, is, it is a great idea. You know what I mean? I think, for far as I recall, most of the people I talked to you about it, they thought it was a good idea. The only thing that I found in real life is that, <laughs> the thing is in real life, um, it's a two-way thing, basically. You can't, it's not necessarily realistic to think you can go and be a spouse to any other. The, the same way it's not realistic to necessarily try and work any old job in any old company. It's not realistic to try and put yourself as a spouse to any old person. Well, and I think whether you're talking about a spouse, like a permanent spouse, or you're talking about temporary contract spouse, because I think that could work, you know, within within reason, you know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily have to be a sexual thing, not necessarily. But then for some people, some people don't necessarily want a, a long-term relationship in that way, and that's their prerogative. Just as people want to say, well, religion says this. Religion says a lot of things, and people don't always practice it. You know what I mean? So the fact is, if someone if someone has a problem, for whatever reason, with being married and uh, all of that stuff, then they might as well they might as well do something that works for them, you know. That's, that's just common sense, because that's the way things are going nowadays, anyway. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of people that have been married and they're getting divorced and all this, you know, drama that's going on. That's just how, that seems to be the direction the world's going in, anyway. 
You know, because one way or another, people are rejecting certain things that people used to subscribe to. It may be right, it may be wrong. It is what it is. You know what I mean? A different way of thinking might be useful for certain people. Everybody's got their own thing. Me, personally, I would prefer to have a committed relationship. You know, I would prefer to because that's me. Like, same way I've got friends. I want to have friends that I really like their friendship and then we have friendship, you know, perpetually. That's me. That That's how I am. Excuse me. Some people like, you know, having a friend for a little while and then getting new friends. Different people have different perspectives, innit? So if people can just keep it real of themselves about what they want, you know, the fact is, more time, if one person wants one thing, there's someone else who wants the comparable thing and then that can work. You know, so talking about astronomy, relationships, astronomy can resolve relationships. The reason, I'm, part of the reason why I'm saying this, because the thing is, this is a thing to address. Let's make this a thing where, as a people, we make it a thing that's our thing. You know, let's make this a thing which is our thing. Because sometimes we talk about this, we have ideas, and other people use ideas, and they monetize it, and they make all this money, and we don't make money. How about we make this a thing which is our thing? Because the same way Dr. Yoke talked about, let's corner the Egyptian market, and it's like, it seems to be the case that it didn't quite, you know, the people he's talking to didn't quite do it or put it into practice. I'm like, let's do this now because astronomy will show us, there's no excuse now, astronomy will show us those of us who are good at different things, we can easily make an industry, we can make a bunch of industries out of it. Let's do this. You know, I would I would like to think and to hope so to speak that, um, you know, those of our people listening to this, so to speak, you will feel inspired by this. Because, I mean, if if, if 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 this happened, you know, I'm standing out here, it's kind of kind of cold. I'm not complaining, but it's kind of cold. I'm standing out here talking all this, <laughs> all this all this three hours and how much, you know what I mean, three hours and 40 minutes. And if you were just going to be like, you know what, whatever. You know what I mean? It will be like, really? Re- honest? Like, seriously? But, um, no, like, it is what it is, isn't it? I think I made the point, talking about consolation. Sagittarius corresponds to Nana. Seems to be the case, corresponds to Nana. Um, again, I think it's in the Teacher's Guide to the Nuwabian Language. I think it's in there, where Dr. Yacht shows the names of the constellations, like uh, Pabil, Pabil Sag, for Sagittarius. And that's, like I said, that seems to correspond to the Nur. You're talking about Virgo. That clearly corresponds to Ishtar. You're talking about Aquarius. That seems to correspond to Father Inki. Yeah, Aries. People seem to associate Aries with Dumuzi. You know, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Taurus. I think people seem to associate Taurus with somebody. You know, I'm personally I'm not sure. You know, personally I'm not sure. You know, hypothetically, possibly I mean, like I said, not to assume, possibly Nana. But then again, no. No, actually no, correction, scratch that. No, because his face no, his face is completely different. Sorry, I don't I don't want to be misrepresentative. The reason why I say that is because when you look at the different constellations you can see the face. The depiction of Nana shows the way he looks. And you can see 'cause I can I can see that on my face. So the whole thing with the asteroid Nana and I see that Nana aspect in my Mars alignment, and then my face shapes kind of like Nana's face. Kind of, somewhat. And you can see from the shape of his face. So, sorry, I don't, don't want to be misrepresentative. You know, not to any disrespect. Because there's this thing as well when you're looking at symbolism and that. He seems to be something associated with Nana, showing this lion biting the bull's neck. So, arguably, it might be more realistic to associate him with the lion than with the bull. And you might be in the opposition to the bull. Like, like I said, not trying to be funny, man. Um, but yeah, because you see different types of faces, basically. I think some people claim that Torah is associated with Indo. I'm not saying it ain't. You know, I'm not saying it ain't. But, you know, that's what some people say. Um, again, when you look at the faces of the deities, according to the depictions presented by Dr. Malagazi Jo, and or, you know, because people say a specific person is the one who did those pictures. I've, I've read into this. I've tried to contact that person. Like, without going into all of that, because, um, I mean, it's one of them things, because apparently that person who did the pictures is claiming that the pictures aren't, are completely made up. And it's saying that, to me, it's kind of strange. If they're completely made up, why is this trying to be true? But <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Um, but, yeah, you look at the faces. So if you're going to look at, like, the, 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 the Mer- let's say the Mercury Taurus, like, it seems to be the case that the Taurus face is kind of like, like the same way a bull's face is. You've got the kind of flat bridge of the nose and the forehead and all of that. These are things to look at and to investigate, basically. This is what I'm saying. These are things to investigate. Okay, because not to be re- misrepresentative, because that, that thing I mentioned about Nana, no, no, like, it's best to avoid speculation. You know, it's the things that address. Um, um, Gemini is another one. I think Gemini possibly 
corresponds to Murduk and his twin sister Balat. Because I've noticed that of Gemini, Gemini, um, Gemini influences astronomically seem quite similar to Dr. York's pattern of character. But that may just be because he has prominent Gemini alignments. It might be a coincidence, but I think it might be that they actually correspond because Dr. York being the incarnation of Murduk, that's how things work. If you look at it, then you'll see it. Simple. And Scorpio possibly, cor- seemingly, corresponds to the evil one, as people will call him. You know, if you want to use them other names. I ain't trying to mention them names right now. Like, it's one of them things, not to give it power, whatever. Um, again, we're talking about astronomy. And I say seems to, I say seems to for a reason. Okay, seems to. Because if it isn't, you know, if it isn't, then it seems to, you can investigate it for yourself and see. Okay, you want to know, like, astronomy, Dr. York's birthday, uh, I don't think there's a problem saying it, because he's presenting his birth certificate in his book. Uh, that's 1945, June 26, midnight. And I think I think that was under man, Sudan. So you want to look on Stellarium, then you can look on Stellarium, the correct information. And you need to adjust the time zone accordingly. And you're going to talk about the evil one. Then you'll be talking about 1966, uh, June 6, you know, midnight, uh, New York City, New York. And then you need to adjust the time zone appropriately. And I guess if you if, do, 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 do I want to put my my stuff out there? I think a lot of the time when it comes to astronomy, I tend to use myself as an example. But um, I think right now I don't. <laughs> right now I don't. I don't work to for some reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think yeah. Not not to seem like hypocritical. So that why 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 you mention those dates? But the thing is, there's books with those dates of births out there, and like, I don't necessarily want to draw too much attention to, to, to me like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, my birthday is 1990, um, September 7th, though. I mean, like, if anyone really want to know. You know what I mean? If you want to know the exact time, well, realistically, I'm, I'm still figuring out anyway, so it's one of them things. Um, yeah, I was born in London. So, I mean, if you really wanted to check it out, then, you know, you can look. I mean, I ain't hiding nothing, but <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I think I've said a lot in it. So at that point, I think that kind of covers pretty much everything. I think maybe at two hours it covered a lot of the more key things, and uh, yeah, I just want to wrap up. I mean, we're talking four hours solid, but this is nice because it's like I ain't wearing gloves on it. My hands, my hands don't feel cold, but they feel kind of stiff. So <laughs> yeah, um, this point, yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up. All right, this was lovely. All right. Um, I want to say, why do? Why do God? Listen.